Today was a great chance to make a lot of money, and none of them wanted to miss it. A few minutes later, the manager received a call from the host of the party, and he was informed to get to the cruise ship which was docked at the number 7 wharf. They had to be aboard before 8 p.m. After hanging up the call, the manager immediately sent Li Zhongwei a message before leaving for the cruise ship with the prostitutes. The prostitutes kept chatting and bragging along the way. They were all busy comparing themselves with one another, and nobody paid attention to Gu Ning. Gu Ning didn't care at all because she didn't want to talk to them either. She disliked prostitutes and kept her distance from them. Li Zhongwei and his teammates went to number 7 wharf without hesitation. When it was 7.40 p.m., they arrived at number 7 wharf. There were many luxurious cars parked in a parking lot nearby. About 15 people were invited to attend tonight's party, and they were all partners in business. However, they didn't know that there would be drugs in the party, so they weren't aware of the real aim behind tonight's activity. Li Zhongwei learned the real purpose of tonight's party with the help of an undercover agent in the organization that held the party. Their target was on the cruise right now, but they couldn't use violence to try to catch them in case he ran away. They had to send another undercover agent to control their target before they took action. Gu Ning followed the other prostitutes and got off the small bus at an appointed passage. The cruise ship was relatively small with a width of 7 or 8 meters and a length of 30 meters. It had three floors. The first floor was the lobby, rooms were on the second floor, and there were all kinds of recreation facilities on the third floor. The people who organized the party didn't know that they already caught the attention of the police, so they did the security check carelessly. However, all the guests and the prostitutes' phones and bags were left at the front desk. Gu Ning put everything she needed in the telepathic eye space. They got inside without much effort. The manager didn't go inside, because he didn't know that this was a drug party until Li Zhongwei told him. He didn't go inside because he was unwilling to be involved in this trouble. Gu Ning used her jade eyes to glance around when she walked inside, and she found that the bodyguards who stood outside the door didn't carry guns. There was a large and luxurious hall in the cruise ship. Ten rich men were already present, but some were still absent. Several people sent by the host were welcoming their guests, but the most important figure hadn't shown up yet. The rest of the people in the hall were all waiters. This party was also a buffet, but there would be no drugs in the food until the crews left the shore. Once the prostitutes joined the party, several of them went to their familiar clients. These rich men were all lecherous, and they definitely wouldn't reject beautiful women. Other prostitutes, on the other hand, were active in seducing their new clients. Gu Ning wouldn't do the same thing as them, because she felt disgusted having those old men touched her body. However, she came here as a prostitute and all a prostitute needed to do was to please those rich men. If she didn't do that, she would soon be exposed. Therefore, Gu Ning made an excuse and went to the washroom at once. When she was in the washroom, she looked around to see whether there were surveillance cameras. Luckily, there was no surveillance camera in the washroom. In that case, she could conduct her plan. She needed to locate her target first. Other than the grand hall, the first floor only contained a kitchen, so her target wasn't on the first floor, and Gu Ning moved her sight to the second floor without hesitation. Under the stairs to the second floor, there were two bodyguards with guns. On the landing of the second floor, there were another two armed bodyguards. Gu Ning soon saw a big room that had two bodyguards with guns standing at its door. She finally found her target in this room. Other than her target, there were another two middle-aged men and six armed bodyguards. All in all, the bodyguards weren't many in Gu Ning's eyes. It was 10 minutes away from 8 p.m., and Gu Ning thought that she could directly catch the man within these 10 minutes to save some time. Therefore, she looked around to see whether she could get into the second floor without attracting the attention of the bodyguards on the stairs. After looking around for a while, she found there were no bodyguards on the balcony of the third floor. The window of the room where her target was in was open, so Gu Ning could get into the room through the window to catch her target. She had to move as fast as she could and attract as little attention as possible from other people in the crews. Gu Ning then let the Jiao out and told it to move her up to the third floor. It was very dark that night, 
so nobody could see the Jiao even if its body was completely exposed. The Jiao easily moved Gu Ning up to the third floor with its body. Gu Ning then stepped on the balcony without making any noise. She then put the Jiao back into the telepathic eye space and fastened the miniature camera to her wrist with a rope, then turned it on. At this time, Li Zhongwei and his teammates were already waiting in the parking lot of Number 7 Wharf. Li Zhongwei didn't have much hope, but he was still surprised when the screen of the miniature camera started to work. The others in the car were also astonished. No way, she successfully brought the miniature camera in. Jesus, she's so amazing. I feel guilty now for what I said to her. Oh. Du Jingtong felt utterly embarrassed watching the video sent from the miniature camera on the screen. Gu Ning took out her phone and sent Li Zhongwei a message at once. Li Zhongwei gave Gu Ning his phone number before they came, but he didn't have Gu Ning's phone number. Therefore, Gu Ning told him her name when she sent the message. Gu Ning, I am Gu Ning. Can you see the video? Is everything working normally? I'm going to take action now. After that, Gu Ning turned the camera to her face. Li Zhongwei received Gu Ning's message the next second, and he was shocked that Gu Ning also brought her phone inside. Although he was curious to know how Gu Ning managed to do that, it wasn't the right time to talk about it right now. He sent a message back to Gu Ning without delay and told her everything was ready. Afterwards, he informed his teammates by walkie-talkie and told them to be prepared. Gu Ning put her phone back into the telepathic eye space, then got into the room through the window. When she jumped into the room, she attracted the attention of everyone in it. Her sudden appearance stunned them, and Gu Ning ran straight to her target. They soon took out their guns, but Gu Ning already caught the target person and pointed a gun against his head. It happened so fast that everyone rounded their eyes in shock. In fact, the suspect was good at fighting, but he had no time to fight back facing Gu Ning's attack. Those bodyguards pointed their guns at Gu Ning, but they didn't dare to shoot in case they injured their boss. Li Zhongwei and his teammates clearly saw that their target was in Gu Ning's hands right now. Without hesitation, Li Zhongwei gave an order and told his teammates to take action. It was 5 minutes to 8 p.m., so the cruise hadn't started yet, and they could directly dash inside. Who are you? the suspect asked. The person who needs to catch you, Gu Ning said. Who sent you here? The suspect asked again. He had too many enemies, and he didn't know who sent Gu Ning to catch him. However, no matter who did it, he was furious. As long as he could survive today, he was determined to pay the person back. Follow me out and you'll know it, Gu Ning said and pushed the suspect out the door. Because there was a gun pointed against his head, the suspect had no choice but to move forward. His bodyguards followed them the whole way. The two bodyguards were shocked and scared when their boss was pushed out by a woman. They also pulled out their guns to point at Gu Ning, but they didn't dare to shoot. My people are all around here. Aren't you afraid you'll be killed? The suspect threatened Gu Ning. I don't think they can do it faster than me, Gu Ning sneered. She wasn't afraid of these bodyguards at all. The suspect was struck dumb for a second. Since Gu Ning was able to catch him like lightning when everyone was still in shock, it proved that she could kill him whenever she wanted. All of you walk ahead of us, Gu Ning said to the bodyguards. She didn't want to be surrounded by them. Those bodyguards hesitated for a while, so the suspect gave an order at once. Do what she said. He was unwilling to risk his own life. Since he said that, his bodyguards had to obey his order. All the bodyguards walked backwards together to the hall on the first floor, and Gu Ning moved slowly with the suspect in her hands. The relaxed atmosphere in the hall was instantly interrupted by the bunch of bodyguards. When they saw the guns held in their hands, they were all frightened and hid in the corners. Jesus, isn't she A.I. Lee? What's she doing? Didn't you tell me that I'd know who sent you once we're out? The suspect asked. He ached to find out who sent Gu Ning to catch him. Don't worry, you'll see him soon, Gu Ning said. About ten seconds later, a group of armed SWATs broke inside, which scared everyone in the room. Once the suspect saw the SWATs, he realized what was going here. He thought that it must be his enemy who schemed against him behind his back, so he could settle it with money. 
However, if his enemy was the police, he was doomed to be arrested. Put the guns down! Li Zhongwei shouted at them. There were nearly 20 armed SWATs, while the suspect only had about 10 bodyguards so it was impossible for them to win. Besides, their leader was still in Gu Ning's hands. Those bodyguards didn't listen to Li Zhongwei, but turned to look at the suspect. Put the guns down, the suspect said, because he was left no choice. If he dared to struggle, he could be killed. Since their leader gave the order, those bodyguards put their guns down at once. Without delay, around 10 SWATs dashed forward and took their guns away before they handcuffed them. Li Zhongwei then walked to Gu Ning and handcuffed the suspect. Another SWAT stepped over and took the suspect away. Here it's yours now. Gu Ning took off the miniature camera and gave it to Li Zhongwei. Li Zhongwei took it and he thought that the gun in Gu Ning's hands belonged to the suspect, so he said, Miss Gu, this gun. Oh, this is mine, Gu Ning said. What? Li Zhongwei was shocked. Gu Ning is a common citizen. How could she have a gun? How did she bring it inside? Gu Ning explained it at once. I have a firearms license and I can show it to you later. Actually, the firearms license was in her telepathic eye space, but she couldn't take it out right now in front of everyone. After all, it was already difficult for them to understand how she took a phone, a miniature camera, and a gun inside. Guning walked straight outside. Although she was involved in today's action, she wasn't a member of the SWAT team, so she should leave it to Li Zhongwei. Since Guning said that she had a firearms license, Li Zhongwei didn't ask further. An ordinary person normally couldn't have a gun, but Li Zhongwei thought that Gu Ning was probably picked by a special department of the government so she had the privilege. Li Zhongwei thought that it was highly possible. Du Jingtong didn't hear Gu Ning's conversation with Li Zhongwei, so she stopped Gu Ning when Gu Ning walked out with the gun. May I help? Gu Ning coldly looked at her. You can't take this gun away, Du Jingtong said. She also thought that the gun belonged to the suspect. It was illegal for a common citizen to carry a gun. Gu Ning understood that it was a misunderstanding, so she wasn't annoyed and smiled. This is mine and I have a firearms license. I can show you later. After that, she ignored Du Jingtong and left. Du Jingtong, on the other hand, was stunned. She couldn't believe that Gu Ning was allowed to carry a gun as a common citizen. It seemed Gu Ning was a girl who was full of surprises. Since Gu Ning could carry a gun with her, she couldn't be a common citizen. No matter what, Du Jingtong couldn't stop Gu Ning now. Not only was Du Jingtong shocked, but several other SWATs who also heard it were very surprised too. The suspect and his bodyguards were brought back to the police station. As for the rest of the people at the party, they needed to go give an oral statement so Li Zhongwei told five SWATs to stay to guard them. Afterwards, he went back with the other teammates. Gu Ning didn't go to the parking lot once she left the cruise ship. She went to the river when nobody was paying attention to her and let the Jiao out. She would pick it up tomorrow night. Li Zhongwei drove Gu Ning back to the sweat unit, while Du Jingtong and the others shared a small bus. Miss Gu, I'm curious to know how you brought a phone, a miniature camera, and a gun with you inside? Li Zhongwei asked. I'm sorry I can't tell you more details, Gu Ning said. Since Gu Ning was unwilling to tell him, Li Zhongwei stopped asking. Miss Gu, thank you so much for what you've done for us today. I'll report it to my leader. You deserve a reward, Li Zhongwei said. Thanks, but I don't need it, Gu Ning said. I agreed to help you because this action is meaningful. She didn't lack any rewards. Why? You've done us a great favor. Li Zhongwei said. He understood that Gu Ning wasn't greedy at all, and she agreed to help them because she was very kind. Gu Ning was indeed a girl who had a strong sense of justice. However, he felt a little guilty if Gu Ning didn't get any rewards. It's no big deal, Gu Ning said. Fine. Since Gu Ning said that, Li Zhongwei didn't insist. When they were back in the sweat unit, Gu Ning showed Li Zhongwei her firearms license. Although Li Zhongwei already believed Gu Ning's explanation, it was safer to make sure and have a look. There were fake firearms licenses, but Li Zhongwei didn't think that Gu Ning would do that because it wouldn't do her any good. Gu Ning was a celebrity now, and she was also a famous and successful woman after all. 
Li Zhongwei checked the firearm's license before he gave it back to Gu Ning. Gu Ning turned to ask Du Jingtong, Do you want to have a look? Du Jingtong remained silent and turned her head away. It was obvious that she believed it and didn't bother to have a look. Since Li Zhongwei already checked it, it couldn't be fake. Du Jingtong was less jealous of Gu Ning now, because Gu Ning's skills were far better than hers. When a person's ability was far beyond your imagination, you wouldn't be jealous of them anymore. Du Jingtong was still annoyed at Gu Ning because Gu Ning had stolen her job, but she was a smart girl, and she knew that this task was very important. Miss Gu, please accept our apologies. We shouldn't have doubted you before. Several Swats apologized to Gu Ning. Although they knew what they had done wasn't wrong, they had to admit that Gu Ning wasn't an ordinary girl. Gu Ning proved her ability with her action, so they should stop doubting her. You don't need to say that. I don't think you've done anything wrong, because it is indeed very hard for ordinary people to bring any stuff inside, Gu Ning said. She didn't mind it at all. If she didn't have the telepathic eye space, she wouldn't have been able to do it. Since Gu Ning didn't mind, the others were relieved. All right, it's not early now and I should go home, Gu Ning said. She waved goodbye to Li Zhongwei and left. It was a long day for Gu Ning, and she felt a little tired now. Li Zhongwei didn't stop Gu Ning and watched her leave. Once Gu Ning was gone, several Swats began to talk about her curiously. I'm so surprised by Gu Ning, and I'm curious to know more about her. I think her family must be very powerful. Yeah, I'm also amazed by what she just did. If she was a criminal, none of us would be able to catch her. You're right. Oh, hey boss, did you ask Gu Ning how she managed to bring a miniature camera, a phone, and a gun into the cruise ship? A sweat asked. Yeah, but she didn't tell me, and I didn't ask further about it, Li Zhongwei said. Since Gu Ning was unwilling to tell them, they couldn't force her to do it. Gu Ning went back to her house later. When she was about to take a shower, Ling Shouting called her. Ning Ning, what are you doing right now? Ling Shouting asked. I just came back home, Gu Ning said. How about you? I was also busy and called you once I was free, Ling Shouting said. Ning Ning, I miss you. He hadn't seen her for several days. Gu Ning smiled with happiness. I miss you too. They were already used to saying sweet nothings to each other, so neither of them felt embarrassed. Are you in City B or City F? Ling Shouting asked. I'm still in City B. I'll go back to City F the day after tomorrow, Gu Ning said. Great, my grandfather said we'll visit your family for our engagement once you finish the National College entrance examination, Ling Shouting said with excitement. Master Lung always wanted to visit the Tang family in City B, but Lung Shouting wasn't free and Gu Ning needed to prepare for the National College entrance examination, so it was delayed. It was for the formal engagement, so Lung Shouting and Gu Ning had to be there. No problem, Gu Ning said. They chatted for a while longer, and Gu Ning suddenly said, Shouting, I need to tell you something serious. Hearing that, Lung Shouting became serious too. I met a mutant today. Gu Ning said. She wouldn't keep it a secret from Lung Shouting. Any more ever since Lung Shouting learned her secret. What? A mutant. Lung Shouting was surprised. Are you all right? Lung Shouting read many books about ghosts and monsters after he found out that they really existed. Although he hadn't seen a mutant with his own eyes yet, he believed Gu Ning. A mutant was even harder than a ghost to be dealt with. Lung Shouting understood that Gu Ning had the help of the Jiao, but he was still worried about her safety. She was his girlfriend after all. I'm fine and I already destroyed the mutant, Gu Ning said. Great. Lung Shouting was relieved. However, it wasn't good that a mutant appeared. I think we must thoroughly investigate it. If it has something to do with the government, but it isn't produced by our country, we must completely eradicate it. If it is produced by another country, it will become a great threat to our country. Although it was an age of peace, there were still wars happening in some regions. Mutants could be the best weapon for a war. Lung Shouting served in the military after all, and he thought that it was his responsibility to find out the truth. I agree. If you need my help, feel free to let me know, Gu Ning said in a very serious tone. 
She was worried that Lung Shouting might be hurt if he ran into a mutant. He was an ordinary human being while she had the Jiao to help them. If Gu Ning didn't have the Jiao, it wouldn't be easy for her to deal with a mutant either. Oh, I have only figured out one way to completely destroy a mutant till now. That's to remove all the blood from his body. As long as there is no blood left in his body, it'll be impossible for him to recover, but it takes a long time and a lot of energy. Even the Jiao spent half an hour on it. I think it will probably take hours for a human to do it. Anesthetics are also effective, but only for a short time, Gu Ning added. All right, I understand. I'll be careful if I see them, Ling Shouting said. They chatted for a while longer. Then Gu Ning went to take a bath and sleep. That night, Gu Ning had many dreams about ghosts, monsters, cultivators, and mutants that she had met before in real life. However, a vampire also showed up in her dream, which she had never met before. The vampire wanted to suck Gu Ning's blood, but she was tied up and couldn't move at all, which scared Gu Ning so she woke up at once. Although it was just a dream, Gu Ning was sure that the vampire really existed. It must be a hint of something that would happen to her in the future. A vampire was a dead body that climbed out of a grave and sucked human blood to stay alive, and it had supernatural powers. As soon as Gu Ning woke up from the frightening dream, she noticed a figure on the balcony outside her bedroom. Gu Ning was surprised and used her jade eyes to look at it without delay. She saw a 30-year-old man in a black cloak and mask. There was also a short knife in his waist, and he dressed like a person from ancient times. Ancient times? Gu Ning thought that the man probably came from the cultivation world. She wasn't sure how people in the cultivation world dressed, but ordinary people wouldn't dress in this way. Anyway, it was just her guess. The window of the balcony was open so the man easily got through it. He moved very lightly, and Gu Ning could barely hear his movements. It was obvious that the man wasn't an ordinary person. Gu Ning closed her eyes and pretended that she was still asleep. She wanted to know what the man was going to do. If he just wanted money, Gu Ning would punish him lightly. However, if he wanted to kill her, she would pay him back without doubt. Even though Gu Ning closed her eyes, she could still see what was happening with the help of her jade eyes. Given Gu Ning's ability, it was easy for her to pretend to be asleep. The man soon came into Gu Ning's bedroom, and he didn't find out Gu Ning was pretending to be asleep. He thought that Gu Ning was still sleeping deeply. Afterwards, he pulled out the short knife from his waist and walked to the bed. It turned out that he came to kill Gu Ning, who sent him. Gu Ning knew that she had many enemies, and a lot of them wanted her dead, so it wasn't strange that someone came to murder her. Right when the man was about to stab Gu Ning, Gu Ning opened her eyes and caught his wrist. The man was shocked by Gu Ning's agility. The next second he began to struggle violently. Gu Ning didn't give him much time and broke his wrist with a clear sound. She wouldn't hesitate to beat him up because he came to kill her. The man wasn't weak at all, and he fought against Gu Ning with only one hand. Although he was shocked by Gu Ning's fighting skills and strength, he had to kill her tonight, or his life would be in danger. Therefore, he used her full strength to attack Gu Ning. The noises of their fight alarmed Gao Yi and Xiao Ya. They quickly put on their clothes and went to Gu Ning's room as fast as they could. Lady Ning, are you all right? I'm fine, I can deal with him alone. Gu Ning told that. You can go to the yard to check whether he has partners. Although Gu Ning wasn't sure about it, they had to check. Sure. Gao Yi and Xiao Ya went to the yard at once. Gu Ning then continued to fight against the man. All of a sudden, she found that there might be a problem with her sight, because she sometimes couldn't see the man, as if he was invisible. However, Gu Ning was sure that her eyes were healthy and fine so the man must have known how to make himself invisible. However, it seemed like he wasn't very skilled at it, so he alternated between appearing and disappearing. If he really knew how to become invisible, he had to be from a secret organization. Gu Ning thought that he might really be a person from the cultivation world. She didn't know whether a cultivator could hide himself from a person's view, but she knew cultivators were different from ordinary people. The man was astonished that Gu Ning could still see him after he used his skill of invisibility. 
Even though he wasn't very skilled at it and couldn't make himself completely invisible, ordinary people would panic after seeing that and he could have a chance to escape. Unfortunately, it seemed useless before Gu Ning. Gu Ning soon calmed herself down and focused on attacking the man. As time went by, Gu Ning gradually got control of the fight, and the man was forced into a corner. At the end, Gu Ning successfully caught the man and he couldn't move at all. Gu Ning coldly questioned him afterwards. Tell me, who sent you here? The man remained silent. If you don't tell me, I'll punish you severely. Gu Ning said and dislocated the man's arm. The man was in a lot of pain but refused to shout. Tell me, Gu Ning said again. The man still remained silent. Since he wouldn't say a word, Gu Ning had to search his body to find clues. She used her jade eyes and soon found a phone on him. Gu Ning took the phone out without hesitation. The man struggled but it was meaningless. She needed a password to use his phone, and Gu Ning knew the man wouldn't tell her, but she found a useful clue when the screen lit up. There were missed calls and messages on the screen and they were written in language R. It meant that this man was a person from country R. Knowing that, Gu Ning was angrier. However, she didn't understand why this man from country R suddenly attacked her at midnight. She only had two meetings with people from country R till now. The first time, she had competed against a man for a piece of jade, and the man failed. Although it was a conflict, it wasn't serious. The second time, she had an argument with several people in City Tung, but she did that because of Zibaying, and they shouldn't blame her for it. After thinking for a while, Gu Ning thought that this man could be a professional killer from country or who was hired by another person who was her enemy. In that case, Gu Ning understood why the man suddenly showed up in her bedroom. Luckily, Gu Ning could read simple language R, and she wrote down the phone number on the screen at once. A short line of the message also showed on the screen. Yoshida is in City B now. Once the task is finished, Gu Ning couldn't read the full message because the words shown on the screen were limited. Once Gu Ning found out this man came from Country R, she thought he might be a ninja given his features. A ninja was a covert agent or mercenary in feudal Japan. The functions of a ninja included espionage, deception, and surprise attacks. If the ninja was at a high level, he could be invisible in the dark, but they couldn't do that in a bright place. In other words, ninjas usually assassinated people at night. A ninja could only be invisible for a few seconds, but it was enough to defeat ordinary people. Because Gu Ning had a pair of jade eyes, this man's skills were useless in Gu Ning's view. In addition, Gu Ning moved fast so it was impossible for the man to hide himself. Oh, you came from country R, Gu Ning sneered. The man stiffened a little and looked surprised. He didn't know what was on the screen of his phone. He already muted his phone before he came here, so he wasn't aware that there were missed calls and messages. Even though Gu Ning found out his identity, the man still refused to say a word. Gu Ning understood that the man understood her language as well from his reaction. She continued, You have a new message and it says that Yoshida is in City B now. Once the task is finished, Gu Ning read the message and focused on the man's eyes at the same time. When the man heard Yoshida, he looked surprised and upset. It was obvious that this man disliked Yoshida's coming, so he had to leave once the task was finished. Great. I already wrote down the phone number on the screen of your phone. Although I don't know who he is, I believe it won't be difficult for me to find out. Do you want to tell me yourself? Gu Ning asked. The man panicked a little, but still said nothing. Gu Ning thought that this man might not be able to talk. However, even if he was dumb, Gu Ning had no sympathy for him, because he came here to kill her. However, Gu Ning was unwilling to kill him because it was illegal so she decided to disable him. Right when she was about to do that, an idea dawned on her. She stopped at once and asked the man again, Did you come here to kill me because of the mutant? She just helped Chi Tian Lin not too long ago so it must have been exposed to the controller of the mutant. Someone had indeed followed her afterwards, but the person turned out to be Li Zhongwei. She then forgot about it and didn't relate this man to the mutant at the very beginning. Gu Ning was right. The second the man heard that, he looked shocked. He indeed came here because of the mutant. 
However, the man couldn't figure out how Gu Ning managed to know that. Seeing the man's reaction, Gu Ning was sure that his sudden appearance had something to do with the mutant. It seemed Country R was researching and developing mutants. Gu Ning was furious and released her cold magical power to attack the man. The man's body froze at once. He was stunned and couldn't believe it. What did you do to me? He finally said something. This time Gu Ning remained silent. She was unwilling to answer his question. You! The man was mad at Gu Ning's attitude, but he found it was difficult for him to speak right now. He was terrified but still didn't give in. Before long, he felt like his body was paralyzed, but he was relieved knowing that he was about to die. Gu Ning understood the man's behavior. To show his loyalty to his leader, he would rather die than give in. If Gu Ning didn't control him, he might kill himself and Gu Ning absolutely wouldn't allow him to die like that. When he was almost out of breath, Gu Ning withdrew her magical power and the man sank to the ground at once. The man was unable to move now, so Gu Ning went to change her clothing in the bathroom. She put on a casual suit, which was convenient for her to move in. After that, Gu Ning took out her phone which was under the name Tang Aining. She used it to take a photo of the man before she sent it to the phone number she found on the screen of the man's phone. In a presidential suite of a five-star hotel, a man was still awake at 3 a.m. He was reading in front of a desk. The words on the papers were written in language R. He was about 30 with a plain face but looked cold. It was obvious that the content in the papers affected his mood. His phone was placed near his hand on the table, and he picked it up once he heard the message tone. It was a new message from a strange number, but he still read it. The moment he opened it, he saw the picture of the ninja he sent to kill Gu Ning. He abruptly stood up with astonishment. The ninja failed to fulfill the mission. The person who sent this message to him must be the girl he wanted to murder. He was greatly surprised that the girl was able to control the ninja. The ninja was at the middle level in the killer's world but he still failed. The man wondered whether the girl caught the ninja on her own or if there were strong people by her sides. It was hard for him to believe that a young girl could beat a ninja alone. He didn't care how Gu Ning got his phone number because he trusted his people. The ninja would rather kill himself than betray his leader. All in all, he took Gu Ning too lightly. Since the mission wasn't fulfilled, the ninja couldn't survive, so the man decided to do nothing. Gu Ning sent the man a message in order to warn him that she wasn't weak at all. If the man wasn't dumb, he would stop trying to murder her. Even if the man wouldn't give up, Gu Ning wasn't afraid to fight against him. As for tonight's drama, Gu Ning had no intention to let other people know about it. She didn't know whether more mutants would appear in the future, so she had to be careful. It was difficult to destroy a single mutant. If there were more mutants to come, she honestly didn't know how to handle them. Anyway, it was necessary for her to investigate the man's relationship with the mutants. Although Gu Ning wasn't sure whether the man was the controller of mutants, it was obvious that he had a special relationship with the mutants. As long as she could find him, she would get more clues about mutants. Since she already had his phone number, Kay could help her find him. The man used this phone number to call and text, so it wouldn't be hard to get some useful information about him. Once they found out the man's identity, they could learn more about mutants. Mutants were supposed to be completely destroyed because they were a great threat to a country's safety. The man wouldn't attack Gu Ning without good preparation, and he should stay alert in case Gu Ning got revenge on him. He already lost a mutant and a ninja, so he didn't dare to annoy Gu Ning again. Besides, the man didn't know that Gu Ning already found out about the existence of mutants so he wasn't worried that she might spread the news. He sent a ninja to kill Gu Ning just because she had seen the mutant. Shortly after Gu Ning sent a message to the man, she sent another message to Kay and told him to find out more information about the man from Country R. It wasn't an emergency, so she didn't call Kay at midnight. Gu Ning then called Qi Tian Lin because she needed Qi Tian Lin's help right now. Because of Qi Tian Lin's role in the gang, he became a light sleeper to protect himself because he had too many enemies who might attack him when he was in sleep. 
Therefore, once his phone rang, he opened his eyes. Chi Tian Lin wasn't mad when he saw the caller's name on the screen. Hi, what's wrong? Chi Tian Lin got nervous when Gu Ning called him at midnight. A killer from country are just tried to murder me, and he has something to do with the mutant. I already caught him, but I don't know how to deal with him. Can you help me? Gu Ning asked. She told Chi Tian Lin that it was a killer, instead of a ninja, because she didn't want to waste time on an explanation. If Chi Tian Lin could help her handle it, it would be much easier, because he was the head of a powerful gang after all. Chi Tian Lin wasn't surprised when he heard that someone tried to murder Gu Ning, because Gu Ning was already involved in the trouble of the mutant. He also knew that Gu Ning was able to protect herself. Are you all right? Don't worry, I'm fine, Gu Ning said. Glad to know that, Chi Tian Lin said. I'll send someone to pick him up. Since Gu Ning turned to him for help, he wouldn't turn her down. I think it's better if I let someone send him over to you. Gu Ning said. She was worried that it would cause more trouble if someone found out. Gu Ning could directly put the man into her car, and the surveillance cameras wouldn't catch him. Sure. Chi Tian Lin agreed. I'm in the Earth Nightclub right now, and Xin Feng will be waiting for you at the parking lot. The Earth Nightclub was Chi Tian Lin's place, so they would be safe once they entered this club. After hanging up the call with Chi Tian Lin, Gu Ning walked out of her bedroom. At this time Gao Yi and Xiao Ya walked towards her. Lady Ning, we found nobody in the yard, Xiao Ya said. Great, he probably came alone, Gu Ning said. Gao Yi and Xiao Ya then followed Gu Ning to her bedroom. When they saw the man who was lying on the floor, they were slightly surprised. Lady Ning, how should we deal with this man? Gao Yi asked. Move him into the trunk, then drive him to the Earth nightclub. A man called Chu Xianfeng will be waiting for you in the underground parking lot, and you can leave this man to him, Gu Ning said. Sure, Gao Yi and Xiao Ya said. Without delay, Gao Yi went to carry the man up over his shoulder and walked out, and Xiao Ya followed him. Because of the violent fight, Gu Ning didn't want to sleep in her bedroom anymore, so she moved to another room. She couldn't fall asleep after the drama, so she called Lung shouting. Since she found out that the mutant had something to do with people from Country R, she had to tell Lung Shouting at once. Lung Shouting picked up her call within seconds. He got nervous when he saw Gu Ning's name on the screen, because he thought Gu Ning might have encountered some trouble. Ning Ning, what's wrong? Lung Shouting said. Shouting, I just found out where the mutant comes from. He comes from Country R. Gu Ning sighed. I also find out that the mutant has a close relationship with ninjas. She didn't tell Lung Shouting what she just had been through in case he was worried. How do you know that? What happened? Lung Shouting asked. He sensed that Gu Ning was hiding something from him. He wasn't dumb, and he knew Gu Ning must have been through something dangerous after he left her. Gu Ning understood that it was impossible for her to keep it a secret from Lung Shouting, so she had to be honest. Well, I was just attacked by a ninja because of the mutant. Gu Ning then told Lung Shouting everything. Lung Shouting frowned after knowing what had happened to Gu Ning. Country R's relationship with our country is always sensitive. We only know that it has help from Country M, but it turns out that it also has mutants and ninjas. Lung Shouting said. He felt very bad now. Although ninjas weren't as threatening as mutants, they were much stronger than ordinary people. Gu Ning didn't realize that mutants were indeed a great threat to their country, until Lung Shouting said it. Most importantly, they didn't know how many mutants country are had right now. After all, it was hard for ordinary humans to destroy mutants. She could do it, but she alone couldn't make a big difference. All of a sudden, Gu Ning thought of cultivators. As long as cultivators were willing to help them, they could compete against mutants. Since it was about their country's safety, Gu Ning thought that the cultivators wouldn't stand aside and do nothing about it. In that case, she had to reach out to cultivators in the cultivation world first. If there is really going to be a war, we need cultivators' help, Gu Ning said. Will they help us? Ling Shouting asked. Although they live in a different world from us, they are the same people as us, so I believe they'll do something, Gu Ning said. If they're unwilling to help, I can make a deal with them. 
They want my magical pills anyway. Gu Ning was confident that she could persuade cultivators to help them. Lung Shouting agreed. Well, I think we must learn more useful information about mutants first before we take action, Lung Shouting said. They chatted for a while longer, then hung the call up. Lung Shouting couldn't sleep now after knowing the shocking news. As a senior officer in the military, he thought it was his responsibility to guard their country. Therefore, Lung Shouting got up and searched for information about mutants on the internet. He had only seen mutants in science fiction movies and read about them in novels before, so he referred to those things now. An excerpt of a novel gave Lung Shouting a piece of important information. It said that there was a lab built by Country R under a remote mountain in their country, and Country R kept illegally buying people to do their mutant research. Although it was a fictional story, Lung Shouting thought that it was quite possible for it to be the truth. In that case, they could start their investigation from missing people and patrol those desolate and uninhabited mountains to see whether they could find any suspects. The next day, K read Gu Ning's message after he got up, and he called Gu Ning back at once. Gu Ning told him that it wasn't an emergency so he could do it slowly. Even though it wasn't an emergency, K still did the job for Gu Ning right away. After a few minutes, K got the result. However, it wasn't what Gu Ning wanted because that phone number wasn't connected to an ID card. It seemed the man was well prepared. The man threw the phone card away once he knew Gu Ning found out his phone number in case she tracked him down. Gu Ning didn't know what else she could do with his phone number, so she only told K to keep an eye on it. Gu Ning was free that morning, and she planned to dine with her family in the Tang family's house that afternoon before she left for City F the next morning. She had stayed in City B for several days, and suddenly remembered that she hadn't seen Chao Wenxin for a long time. Thinking of that, Gu Ning called Chao Wenxin. Hi Ning Ning, where are you now? Chao Wenxin picked up the call and said with excitement, I'm in my apartment in the Huafu Hills right now. Where are you? Gu Ning asked. I'm outside now and I'm going bungee jumping later with my friends. Why don't you join us? Chao Wenxin said. Gu Ning got interested and said, Sure. Where is it? I'm coming. She had bungee jumped before in her previous incarnation, and she thought that it was very exciting. After her rebirth, she had a lot of things to deal with and gradually forgot about it. However, she was free today so she would definitely go have fun with her friends. Great see you then, Chao Wenxin said, then sent Gu Ning the address. Gu Ning then changed her clothing and left her house with Gao Yi and Xiao Ya. The place they were going to go bungee jumping was far from the city center. Because Chao Wenxin and her friends set off earlier than Gu Ning, Gu Ning arrived there 20 minutes later than them. However, before Gu Ning showed up, they went to play in the other recreational facilities in the amusement park and they ended up getting into trouble. They didn't cause any trouble themselves, instead other people caused them trouble. As soon as Chao Wenxin and her friends came to a shooting place, she ran into some of her acquaintances and one of them challenged her. Hey Chao Wenxin, do you dare to have a round with me? It was a girl who was the same age as Chao Wenxin. She was tall and beautiful, but Chao Wenxin was still prettier than her. With her were two men and a woman, and they were all her friends. Chao Wenxin and her friends were displeased to see them. She didn't want to talk to the girl, but the girl wouldn't let her go. What? Are you afraid that you'll lose? the girl said with obvious disdain. Her name was Zhang Dina, and her father was also an important figure in a military region. She grew up with Chao Wenxin and Gao Chengyun, but her father ranked higher than Chao Ruihua and Gao Chengyun's father, so she always thought that she was better than Chao Wenxin and Gao Chengyun. What was worse, Zhang Dina also hung around with many brown nosers in the military region, and they always bullied the kids they disliked. Chao Wenxin and Gao Chengyun refused to listen to Zhang Dina, so there were two groups of kids in the military region and they often fought against each other. Now, even though they already grew up, they still hated one another as usual. In fact, Chao Wenxin never bothered to pay much attention to Zhang Dina, but Zhang Dina started trouble every time because she was jealous of Chao Wenxin. Chao Wenxin wasn't as good as Zhang Dina at shooting and martial arts, and she lost to Zhang Dina every time. However, Chao Wenxin was much prettier than Zhang Dina, and her performance in school was also more outstanding than Zhang Dina. 
As a result, Chao Wenxin was very popular among the boys, and their parents had a good impression of her too. I know you're better than me at shooting, but I don't think you're as charming as me because you have a bad temper, Chao Wenxin said. Zhang Dina was actually good-looking as well, and she had many admirers, but her bad temper scared many men away from her. Chao Wenxin's words annoyed Zhang Dina and she shouted, Chao Wenxin, how dare you say that to my face? Chao Wenxin ignored Zhang Dina's anger and continued, Zhang Dina, you'll know how happy a woman with good temper can be once you have a boyfriend one day. She purposely said that to irritate Zhang Dina, because she had a loving boyfriend now. The happier Chao Wenxin was, the angrier Zhang Dina was. Zhang Dina was impulsive and raised her fist to punch Chao Wenxin without hesitation. Chao Wenxin was used to Zhang Dina's bad temper, so she could normally protect herself well. However, she was distracted when she thought of Exxon Bay, so she failed to avoid Zhang Dina's fist. Gao Chengyun who stood by Chao Wenxin's side went ahead to protect Chao Wenxin at once, but he was stopped by one of Zhang Dina's male friends. The man was Qin Zifeng, and his father was a senior colonel in the military. They all grew up together in the same military region, so they all had learned many fighting skills. Because of Qin Zifeng, Gao Chengyun wasn't able to protect Chao Wenxin. Zhang Zhezheng and Ran and Zhu Yuanjin hadn't practiced Kung Fu before, so they were all stunned and stood still. The next second, Zhang Dina directly punched Chao Wenxin in the face. Chao Wenxin felt great pain and there was blood flowing out from her nose. Wenxin! Chao Wenxin's friends were shocked, and Zhang Zhezheng ran forward without delay because he was a man. Unfortunately, Zhang Dina easily threw him over her shoulder and he fell to the ground. Even though Zhang Zhezheng was a man, he was no match for Zhang Dina. Chao Wenxin was ablaze with fury and attacked Zhang Dina at once. Zhezheng! Zhu Yuanjin felt like crying and ran to help Zhang Zhezheng get back to his feet. Zhu Yuanjin and Zhang Zhezheng were like a couple now, but they weren't really together yet. They still needed more time. Zhang Zhezheng defended Chao Wenxin, not because he still liked her, but because he was her good friend. Zhu Yuanjin understood that so she wasn't jealous, but she felt heartbroken when Zhang Zhezheng was injured. I'm fine, Zhang Zhezheng said to comfort Zhu Yuanjin. Zhu Yuanjin didn't believe Zhang Zhezheng could be fine after being kicked so heavily, but she said nothing. The noises of their fight attracted attention from tourists and workers in the amusement park, but nobody dared to stop them, because they were obviously kung fu lovers and quite aggressive. Some staff members of the amusement park shouted at them to tell them to stop right now, and some reported it to their leader without delay. However, they refused to listen and kept on fighting. Chao Wenxin wasn't a match for Zhang Dina, but it still took time for Zhang Dina to beat Chao Wenxin. At this time, Gu Ning, Gao Yi, and Xiao Ya arrived, and Gu Ning called Chao Wenxin once she walked into the amusement park. Unfortunately, nobody answered her call. Gu Ning thought that they probably left to play in the other facilities. Therefore, she directly used her jade eyes to find Chao Wenxin. The moment she glanced around the amusement park, she saw a group of people were fighting against each other behind a house 10 meters away. In the middle of the crowd, she found Chao Wenxin and Gao Chengyun. Chao Wenxin was fighting against a woman, while Gao Chengyun was fighting against a man. Beside them, an Ran and Zhu Yuanjin were supporting the injured Zhang Zhezheng. It was obvious that Chao Wenxin was weaker than the woman, and there was blood on her left cheek. Without hesitation, Gu Ning ran forward. Gao Yi and Xiao Yi didn't know what was happening, but they chased after Gu Ning at once. Once Gu Ning reached the house, she dashed straight towards Zhang Dina and threw Zhang Dina away after catching her hand. Zhang Dina couldn't struggle and was thrown a meter away. This scene shocked everyone, including Chao Wenxin, Gao Chengyin, and Qin Zifeng. Before they could react, Gu Ning kicked Zhang Dina with great strength. Zhang Dina was kicked three meters away and hit against a hard wall before she fell down to the ground with a thud. It seemed like one of her bones was broken. It happened too fast, and nobody realized what had happened until Zhang Dina fell to the ground. Jesus, the woman was kicked three meters away by the girl. I can't believe my eyes. She must be a kung fu master. Ooh. They were all impressed by Gu Ning. They didn't think that it was wrong that Gu Ning kicked Zhang Dina away, 
Because Zhang Dina was bullying Chao Wenxin and her friends, Gu Ning was Chao Wenxin's good friend and close relative after all. Ning Ning. Chao Wenxin's eyes lit up when she saw Gu Ning. Gu Ning took out two power crystals and gave each of them to Chao Wenxin and Zhang Zizhang to help them recover. E. Mi Guam. Gao Chengyun walked to Gu Ning as well and stopped fighting. Dina. Qin Zifeng ran to Zhang Dina and left Gu Ning aside. Zhang Dina was seriously hurt and one of her ribs was broken. She couldn't move at all now but moaned in pain while lying on the ground. It would take at least two months for her to fully recover. Gu Ning admitted that she had used great strength to hurt Zhang Dina. But she was really angry seeing Chao Wenxin being bullied by Zhang Dina. You deserve it. Chao Wenxin felt very pleased, shouting at Zhang Dina. Chao Wenxin's friends had the same idea. How dare you do that to Dina? The Jiang family will get you back. He knew that Gu Ning wasn't a weak girl, so he didn't dare to fight against her right now. Let's see what the Jiang family will do to me, Gu Ning said. She wasn't afraid of the Jiang family at all. Jiang Dina is a bully and she asked for it herself, Chao Wenxin said with disdain, then turned to Gu Ning. Ning Ning, don't worry. Although Jiang Dina's father ranks higher in the military, the Zhang family isn't comparable to the Chao family and the Tang family. You! Qin Zifeng was mad. He had glanced at Gu Ning, then said to Kan Wenxin, I know the Zhang family isn't as powerful as the Chao family or the Tang family, but will the Kan family or the Tang family behave against the Zhang family for an outsider? Qin Zifeng didn't know Gu Ning's identity, and he thought that Gu Ning only dared to hurt them because of Chao Wenxin's support. Are you kidding me? Gao Wenxin Loget? She thought that Qin Zifeng was really stupid. Don't you know that Ning Ning is an important member of the Tang family? Chao Wenxin's wound on her face soon healed after she took Gu Ning's magical pill, so she was able to talk normally now. What? Qin Zifeng and his friends were shocked. Chao Wenxin, don't try to scare us. We all know that Master Tang only has two grandsons. Qin Zifeng argued. I'm not scaring you. You can go home and ask your parents for the answer, Chao Wenxin said. Qin Zifeng's and Zhang Dina's parents had been invited to attend Tang Yunfan and Gu Man's wedding that day, so their parents had to be aware of the fact that Gu Ning was Tang Yunfan's biological daughter. Although Qin Zifeng, Zhang Dina, and Chao Wenxin never got along with each other, it didn't affect their family's relationship with one another. Since Chao Wenxin said that, it was highly likely to be true, but Qin Zifeng couldn't understand why Master Tang suddenly had a granddaughter who was the same age as them. He thought that Gu Ning might be Tang Yunfan's illegitimate girl. Either way, Qin Zifeng didn't dare to fight against Gu Ning now. Zifeng, let's call an ambulance now, Qin Zifeng's friend said. Do it right now. Qin Zifeng vented his anger at his friend. The fight lasted for five minutes, and the manager of this amusement park came soon after. What is wrong with you teenagers? Why are you fighting so violently here? The manager snapped at them. The next second, his sight fell on Zhang Dina. He got nervous when he saw her injury. They attacked us first, Chao Wenxin said. I don't care who attacked whom first. We need to call the police, the manager said. We already made the call, and the police will be right here, a staff member said. A couple of minutes later, the police came. Chao Wenxin glanced at the policeman then asked Qin Zifeng, Do you want to go to court? Or to settle it now? Out of court, Qin Zifeng said without hesitation. In fact, it wouldn't make a difference even if they went to court, because they simply needed to pay the medical fee for the injured ones. Zhang Dina understood that as well, so she agreed too. Since they were willing to settle it out of court themselves, the police left soon. Zhang Dina, Bear in mind that you should stay away from me. If you dare to cause me trouble again, think about the lesson you've learned today, Chao Wenxin coldly said to Zhang Dina. I don't lack money at all, so I don't mind paying for your medical fees if you want to lie in a hospital bed for a few months. Because of the rules in the Chao family, Chao Wenxin didn't have much allowance in the past, but now she had 500 million yuan after going to the Earth nightclub with Gu Ning. With this large amount of money in her pocket, Chao Wenxin could afford anything she wanted to. 
She was pleased and satisfied when Jiang Dina learned a lesson today, and she was more than willing to pay the medical fee for her. It didn't cost much anyway. Jiang Dina was out of strength now, so she could only glare at Chao Wenxin. She blamed Chao Wenxin for everything and didn't think that she had done anything wrong. Now that one of her ribs was broken, she hated Chao Wenxin more than ever. Jiang Dina also got to know Gu Ning today. She was afraid of Gu Ning, who was Master Tang's granddaughter and also Chao Wenxin's good friend. Anyway, she was determined to pay Chao Wenxin or Gu Ning back. All right, let's go enjoy ourselves now, Chao Wenxin said and walked away with her friends. When they walked far away, Chao Wenxin was still excited. Ning Ning, you showed up at the best time, Chao Wenxin said. I felt so good when Jiang Dina was injured. I don't think she will dare to cause trouble for me in the future. Does she do this often? Gu Ning asked. Yeah, she's been a bully ever since we were kids, but I refuse to give in so we often fight, Chao Wenxin said. If Qin Zifeng isn't with her, or my older brother is with me, I am usually fine. In that case, Jiang Dina indeed needed a lesson. Ning Ning, given my understanding of Jiang Dina, it's impossible that she'll give up after this. I know you're smart and strong, but you still need to be careful, Chao Wenxin said. I will, Gu Ning said. Wow, Miss Gu, your special medicine is really unbelievable, Jiang Zizhing said. Ah, I know. Gu Ning smiled. Is there anything you can't do? Jiang Zizhing said. Well, Ning Ning is good at everything in my eyes. Chao Wenxin joined their conversation. I feel so blessed and lucky to have Ning Ning as my family member. Not only you, I also feel so lucky to be Miss Gu's friend, Zhang Zizhing said. They laughed together with joy. Once Gu Ning and her friends were gone, Qin Zifeng called his mother. Mom, does Master Tang have a biological granddaughter? Qin Zifeng asked. A biological daughter? Qin Zifeng's mother was struck dumb for a second, then said, Oh right, her name's Gu Ning. Tang Yunfan just had a wedding not a long time ago, and the bride was his girlfriend from about 19 years ago. Tang Yunfan had disappeared for a year back then, and fell in love with the woman at that time. They had a daughter and the girl is a member of the Tang family right now. They've been apart for 19 years? Is the girl really his biological daughter? Qin Zifeng asked again. He refused to believe that Gu Ning was Tang Yunfan's biological daughter, because he hated her. Although he wasn't injured, Jiang Dina was heavily injured, and he wanted to get revenge for Jiang Dina. Actually, he loved Jiang Dina deeply. Even if Jiang Dina had a bad temper, he was willing to tolerate her. However, he knew that Jiang Dina had no affection towards him, and Jiang Dina only took him as her good friend. In order to stay by Jiang Dina's side, Qin Zifeng gave up the idea of becoming her boyfriend. They closely resemble each other, so they must be father and daughter, Qin Zifeng's mother said. Why do you ask? Nothing, I'm just curious, Qin Zifeng said. Don't lie to me. Did you cause trouble again? Qin Zifeng's mother said. No, I didn't. Qin Zifeng denied it at once. I met Chao Wenxin today and heard her talking about the Tang family's biological granddaughter and I just got curious about it. Qin Zifeng's mother warned him then. No matter what you think of the girl, you better not annoy her. Gu Ning is a really outstanding young girl, and she has companies with assets of over a billion yuan at this point. The Tang family likes her very much. Knowing that, Qin Zifeng was shocked. He couldn't believe that Gu Ning was able to be so successful at such a young age. In addition, she was loved and cared for in the Tang family. In that case, he had to be careful if he planned to pay her back. Gu Ning and her friends soon reached the place where they were about to bungee jump and heard people screaming once they walked near. Wow, it's so exciting, Gao Qingyun said. Gao Qingyun had bungee jumped several times before, so he wasn't scared of it. However, he was still nervous because it was indeed frightening when you jumped down from a great height. Oh my, I have goosebumps now, and Ran said looking scared. Me too. Zhu Yuanjin agreed. And Ran and Zhu Yuanjin wouldn't jump this time, because they had acrophobia. Although I have already done it once, I'm still nervous this time, Chao Wenxin said. Ning Ning, have you done it before? 
Are you nervous? Yeah, but I'm fine now, Gu Ning said. You're really mentally strong, Chao Wenxin said. Actually, Chao Wenxin almost cried the first time. However, she still wanted to do it again. All of you have done it at least once before, but I've never tried it, Zhang Zizhing said. He almost wanted to escape right now. Nevertheless, he was afraid that his friends might laugh at him, so he had to summon up his courage to do it. Because in Ran and Zhu Yu engine wouldn't jump, they stayed under the launching pad. Will you jump? Gu Ning asked Gao Yi and Xiao Ya. Gao Yi and Xiao Ya exchanged a glance of interest with each other, and Gu Ning noticed it, so she said, Great, you two can join us. They used to be professional killers, so they were very interested in extreme sports. I'll pay the bill today, and no one should compete against me for it. Chao Wenxin said, Nobody will. Gao Chengyun laughed. Are you laughing at me? Chao Wenxin pretended to be mad. I'm not. I'm just joking, Gao Chengyun said. Chao Wenxin snorted and closed her mouth. There were the fewest people waiting to bungee jump at this amusement park. Bungee jumping was one of the extreme sports, but it was safe. However, it was also very dangerous in the aspect of medical issues because of the strong stimulation or shock caused by the sudden weightlessness of the body during bungee jumping, the human body was suddenly in a state of high stress, and a large amount of adrenaline and other substances were secreted instantaneously, which would adversely affect the heart and other organs, making the heart beat faster and blood pressure increase. Therefore, people with a bad heart or high blood pressure were absolutely forbidden from bungee jumping. In addition, some people with poor physical fitness, such as joint pain, lumbar vertebral disc protrusion, or fractured bones, couldn't participate in bungee jumping either. People with eye diseases, such as glaucoma and deep myopia, shouldn't do bungee jumping either, because it would increase the intraocular pressure and could seriously cause retinal detachment when the head was down for a long time. There were also restrictions on age. People under 15 and over 45 years of age shouldn't participate in bungee jumping because the nervous system of minors who were under 15 years old hadn't yet fully matured, and the sudden shock might affect their normal growth and development in the future. As for the middle-aged people over 45 years old, their internal organs were already aging and they could have hidden heart disease or cerebrovascular disease. Under the effect of gravity, it was easy to induce the above diseases, resulting in accidents. Moreover, people with poor psychological qualities should not be forced to test their will. Accidents could happen at any time. Therefore, people had to fill out a chart about their physical condition, weight, blood pressure, etc. when they bought tickets. After that, bungee jumpers had to measure their blood pressure before they did anything further. Chao Wenxin and her friends finished filling in the chart and walked inside to prepare. The bungee jumping platform was 56 meters high with the world's highest hydraulic sightseeing elevator aside, which was 39 meters tall. From the elevator, people could watch others bungee jumping. There were only three people standing in front of Chao Wenxin, and they were soon about to jump. The whole process from the jump to the end of the bounce was only about two to three minutes so they wouldn't wait for long. Halfway through the elevator, they saw a boy jumping. His cry was loud and scary which made Chao Wenxin and Zhang Zizhing feel even more nervous. Are you nervous? Chao Wenxin turned to ask Gao Yi and Xiao Ya. Not at all, they said. Instead, they were looking forward to it. Chao Wenxin shut her mouth at once and remained silent. In fact, she didn't know that Gao Yi and Xiao Ya used to be professional killers and they lived with danger. Although bungee jumping looked very scary, it was safe. In addition, they had strong hearts. Gao Chengyun was full of anticipation too, but he was slightly nervous. When they finally reached the launching pad, the second person in front of them was about to jump, so they sat behind them to wait for their turns. The lounge near the launching pad wasn't large, and it could accommodate ten people at the most. No, 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 I'm terrified now. I'm not going to jump from here. The girl who was about to jump was around twenty, but she was too scared to move a step forward. Feline, you can't step back at this moment. If you do, you'll lose the game you have with Zhang Ze. Zhang Ze already jumped, and now it's your turn. Another girl about 20 secretly pushed the girl forward. Gu Ning somehow sensed that something must be wrong. She gave the girl a glance and indeed found something strange. No, I'm too scared and I have acrophobia. 
Zhao Fulin said and almost cried. The second Gu Ning's sight fell on Zhao Fulin. A picture emerged in her sight, and she saw that Zhao Fulin went into shock after jumping from the launching pad. Hey, wait a second. Gu Ning abruptly stood up, trying to stop Zhao Fulin. Chao Wenxin and other people were surprised and turned to look at Gu Ning. A staff member and the two girls standing at the edge of the launching pad also turned around. The girl who persuaded Zhao Fulin to jump was annoyed when she saw Gu Ning. Since she's reluctant to jump, you shouldn't force her to do it, Gu Ning said. Since she already knew that the girl would be in danger, she thought that she should stand out and save a life. Who are you? It's none of your business. The girl snapped at Gu Ning and she looked very unkind. She said she's scared. What if anything terrible happens to her if she jumps? Who can take responsibility? Gu Ning walked up to the girl. She now realized that this girl aimed to push Xiao Fulin. It's not a big deal. People who come here all say that they are sacred, but it's fine once they jump. Actually, it's safe even if I push her down right now, the staff member said, and suddenly pushed Zhao Fulin, which shocked Gu Ning. Hey, stop! Gu Ning ran ahead, but Zhao Fulin was already pushed down. Zhao Fulin screamed at once, and Gu Ning was furious. However, it wasn't the time to argue with them right now, so Gu Ning told Chao Wenxin to wait here and she needed to help Zhao Fulin. She got in the elevator and went down without delay. Luckily, it didn't take a long time for her to get to the ground. Gao Yi and Xiao Ya understood that the girl was in danger after seeing Gu Ning's reaction. Chao Wenxin and the others, however, were confused. They had bungee jumped before, and it wasn't uncommon that bungee jumpers would be pushed down although it was indeed a bit much. The girl who came here with Zhao Fulin put on a satisfied smile. She didn't care about Gu Ning's reaction now. Gu Ning focused on Zhao Fulin once she got into the elevator, and Zhao Fulin stopped screaming halfway, which wasn't strange because many people wouldn't scream too. However, Zhao Fulin was different. She was in shock now. A person might die within 2 to 15 minutes after going into shock, and Gu Ning could only hope that Zhao Fulin would survive. Within a minute, Gu Ning reached the first floor. She dashed outside without hesitation. Because she ran too fast, she surprised everyone in the hall. Jesus, she runs so fast. I can't believe my eyes. <coughs> Gu Ning went to the riverside under the bungee jumping platform as fast as she could, but she could only wait there for Zhao Fulin. After bungee jumping, the bungee jumper would be brought back to the shore by a boat. The moment Gu Ning reached the shore, Zhao Fulin finished the jump and she saw Zhao Fulin being moved onto the boat. At the same time, she also noticed a good-looking young man in his early twenties. He was looking at Zhao Fulin with obvious disdain. Gu Ning immediately remembered what the two girls had talked about at the launching pad, and she realized that this young man must be Zhang Ze. Besides, Zhao Fulin came here to bungee jump because of him. Although Gu Ning didn't know why they agreed to do this together, she knew that this young man wasn't a good man. Gu Ning had sympathy for Zhao Fulin and was mad at this young man. Right at this time and Ran and Ji Yuanjin ran over and asked, Miss Gu, what's wrong? I need to deal with something, Gu Ning said and didn't explain further. In the boat, a staff member saw that Zhao Fulin was unconscious, but he didn't think it was a big deal because it had happened before. However, when he found that her limbs were cold and her face turned pale as her temperature went down, he realized something must be wrong. Another staff member took out a blood pressure measuring instrument at once. After measuring her blood pressure, he found that Zhao Fulin's blood pressure was going down all the time, which was a bad sign. No, this girl is dying. Both of the two staff members panicked. The girl who stood on the launching pad paid complete attention to Zhao Fulin the entire time. When she saw Zhao Fulin was unconscious, she was satisfied. Chao Wenxin and Gao Chengyun had seen this scene before, so they didn't think it was very serious. Gao Yi and Xiao Ya, however, knew that it couldn't be simple since Gu Ning ran to Zhao Fulin in a hurry. Once the boat was back to the shore, a staff member carried Zhao Fulin on his back and he planned to send her to the hospital but Gu Ning stopped him. Move! The staff member was mad when Gu Ning stood in his way. Zhang Ze stood still even though Zhao Fulin passed out right in front of him. Put her down. I can save her, Gu Ning said with confidence. 
Nevertheless, the staff member wouldn't believe her. Can you? Do you know what has happened to her? She's in a state of shock now, the staff member said. He knew that Gu Ning wanted to help, so he remained kind. There were many people around them and they were all scared, including Zhang Ze. Zhao Feline could lose her life being in a state of shock. Send her to the hospital now, Zhang Ze said at once. He was unwilling to take responsibility for this terrible accident because it was he who brought Zhao Feline here. Actually, he only wanted to make fun of Zhao Feline, and he didn't want her to lose her life. Give her to me and I can save her life, Gu Ning said in a serious tone. Who do you think you are? Jiang Se criticized Gu Ning. Gu Ning was merely a young girl in his eyes, and he didn't believe her. Gu Ning had no time to waste. Since the staff member was unwilling to give Zhao Feline to her, she had to grab Zhao Feline away. You! The staff member was angry, but he was no match for Gu Ning, and Gu Ning directly put a power crystal into Zhao Feline's mouth and made her swallow it. At the same time, she secretly put her magical power into Zhao Feline's body to protect Zhao Feline's organs. Chao Wenxin and the others couldn't see Gu Ning now, so they didn't know what Gu Ning was doing. After Gu Ning made Zhao Feline swallow the pill, Jiang Ze ran forward. What did you make her swallow? Jiang Ze shouted. Gu Ning gave Jiang Ze a cold glance, and he was scared and didn't dare to move a step forward again. Gu Ning then said with a serious face, I told you that I can save her life. Since I'm willing to help her, I'll take responsibility if anything bad happens to her. You can take responsibility? Are you kidding me? Let her go, or I'll call the police right now. Jiang Se shouted in anger. Do it now, Gu Ning said. She's so rude. Does she think she's a skilled doctor? The girl is suffering from shock. <laughs> People began to criticize Gu Ning, but Gu Ning didn't care. And Ran and Zhu Yuanjin wanted to defend Gu Ning, but their voices were too low among the noisy crowd. However, right at this moment, Zhao Feline's face went back to normal. Look, her face is ruddy again. Because Zhao Feline's face was too pale just then, her face looked obviously different now. All of a sudden, the crowd fell into silence and people all turned to look at Zhao Feline's face with curiosity. They couldn't believe that Gu Ning could really save people's lives. Unfortunately, Zhao Feline didn't wake up yet. She isn't waking up. It's useless that her face is back to normal now, someone said. Actually, it was a good sign that the blood in Zhao Feline's body started to flow again. The next second, Zhao Feline slowly opened her eyes. The person who questioned Gu Ning's ability felt utterly embarrassed and didn't dare to say anything else. Other people who wanted to attack Gu Ning also closed their mouths. It only took Gu Ning a minute to help Zhao Feline go back to normal. It happened too fast, so the staff member didn't have time to report it to his leader. In fact, it was because Gu Ning directly put her magical power into Zhao Feline's body that Zhao Feline could wake up so soon. Feline, I'm glad you're fine, Zhang Ze said and felt relieved. Since Zhao Feline was fine, he wouldn't be blamed. Onlookers began to compliment Gu Ning afterwards. Jesus, she really woke up. It's so amazing. Wow, I can't believe it. <laughs> Their attitude towards Gu Ning completely changed, but none of them apologized to Gu Ning. Luckily, Gu Ning didn't mind. W what happened? Zhao Feline was confused although she already opened her eyes. You went into shock just then. And this girl just saved your life. Yeah, you should thank this girl. She's unbelievable. Hearing that, Zhao Feline realized that she suffered from shock because of bungee jumping. She trembled in fear. Ee, -e. You're fine now, so let's go have a rest, Gu Ning said to comfort her. Because Zhao Feline just woke up and she could barely walk, Gu Ning directly carried her on her back. Zhao Feline felt a little shy, but Gu Ning didn't give her a chance to reject. Seeing that, people kept complimenting Gu Ning again. She's really kind. Right. <laughs> Those staff members were also relieved after Zhao Feline woke up, and they went back to their work. Zhang Ze seemed unwilling to touch Zhao Feline from the beginning to the end. However, Zhao Feline came here with him, so he couldn't dump her and had to follow Gu Ning. And Ran and Zhu Yuanjin wanted to help, but Gu Ning stopped them. You can wait here. I'll handle it alone. 
Since she said that and Ran and Zhu Yuanjin stayed, there was a nearby tea house, so Gu Ning carried Zhao Felin into it, followed by Jiang Ze. Gu Ning said to him, You can sit at another table and pay for yourself. Hearing that, Jiang Ze was mad and embarrassed, because this was a tourist attraction. Everything was expensive and a simple cup of tea cost over a hundred yuan in this tea house. Jiang Ze was an ordinary college student, and he was unwilling to pay a hundred yuan for Zhao Felin although he could afford it. Therefore, he snorted and walked away. He didn't care what would happen to Zhao Felin at all. Zhao Felin didn't understand why Gu Ning did that, and she felt disappointed when Jiang Ze walked away. But she said nothing since Gu Ning just saved her life. Besides, she was out of strength now and she needed a rest. Gu Ning already cured Zhao Felin with her magical power. So her body was fine, but it would still take time for her to get her strength back. Gu Ning ordered a pot of tea for them after they sat down. May I know your relationship with the girl and the boy? Gu Ning asked Zhao Felin. The girl is my classmate, and the boy is a great senior to us, Zhao Felin said. Well, I'm probably going to tell you something you may not want to hear. The girl isn't really kind to you. At least I have that feeling. The boy isn't a good man either. I don't know why you came here with them to do such a dangerous activity, but I saw his face filled with obvious disdain after you went into shock, Gu Ning said. What? Zhao Felin was shocked. She couldn't believe that Zhang Ze didn't care about her at all. Gu Ning continued, Whether you believe it or not, I'm saying this for your own good, and that's all I can say. You should protect yourself well. Zhao Felin wasn't mad because of what Gu Ning said to her. Instead, she was lost in thought. She was simple-minded, but wasn't dumb and she was able to realize the truth as long as someone helped her point it out. Therefore, Zhao Felin began to notice many problems she couldn't notice before. She had confessed her affection to Jiang Ze before, and he told her that he only liked brave girls. He liked roller coasters, bungee jumping, and other extreme sports, and he hoped his girlfriend could do that with him. If she could do that, he might consider accepting her. Zhao Felin had acrophobia, so she gave up back then. Zhang Yani, her classmate, however, encouraged her to accept the challenge and even told her bungee jumping wasn't as scary as she thought. And since she liked Zhang Ze, she should fight for Zhang Ze's love. Under Zhang Yani's encouragement, Zhao Felin agreed. Although she had agreed to do it, she now realized that it was simply Zhang Yani's scheme. Other than that, Zhang Yani had done many things behind Zhao Felin's back to compete for Zhang Ze. There must be something wrong. Zhao Felin was mad thinking of what Zhang Yani had done to her. At this moment, Zhang Yani was about to bungee jump on the launching pad. She had done it several times before, so she wasn't scared of it anymore, and she thought that it was very exciting. Gu Ning knew that Zhao Felin found out the truth after seeing her expression, so she stood up and was ready to leave. You can have a good rest here, and I already paid the bill. Wait a second. Zhao Felin stopped Gu Ning. Thank you so much for your help. If it hadn't been for you, I would have been dead already. Zhao Felin was still very young, and she was unwilling to die. Oh, thank you for your kind suggestion as well, and I should return your favor and kindness. I feel embarrassed that you even paid the bill for me. Although the tea costs very little in Gu Ning's eyes, Zhao Felin thought that she shouldn't let Gu Ning pay the bill for her. It's fine, I don't mind, Gu Ning said and left. Zhao Felin wanted to say something again, but Gu Ning was already gone. Gu Ning walked outside and went straight to the bungee jumping facility. As soon as she walked into the elevator, she noticed Zhang Yani moving back to the shore after jumping down and Zhang Ze was waiting for her at the shore. When Zhang Yani stepped to the shore, Zhang Ze immediately reached out his arm to help her, and it was obvious that there was chemistry between them. Luckily, Zhao Fulin realized it now. Where is Zhao Fulin? Zhang Yani asked Zhang Ze at once. If Zhao Fulin just passed out, Zhang Ze would think that it was funny and even gloat over her failure, but he wasn't in the mood to do that right now. Zhao Fulin suffered shock, and a girl saved her life. She's having a rest in the tea house right now, Zhang Ze said. What? Really? Zhang Yani was scared too. Although she planned to make fun of Zhao Felin, she had no intention to kill Zhao Felin. If Zhao Felin died, she would be blamed. 
Zhang Yani schemed against Zhao Fulin because Zhao Fulin fell in love with the man she admired. It was true that Zhao Fulin liked Zhang Ze. But Zhang Yani also admired Zhang Ze, however, Zhang Yani wasn't aware of it. As a result, Zhao Fulin became Zhang Yani's competitor in love. Zhao Fulin was prettier and better than her at studying, so she was jealous of Zhao Fulin. When they saw Zhang Ze together, Zhang Ze always paid more attention to Zhao Fulin, which made her even more jealous of Zhao Fulin. Therefore, she played some tricks to attract Zhang Ze's attention and defamed Zhao Fulin. Zhang Yani was good at acting, so Zhang Ze gradually believed her and had a bad impression of Zhao Fulin. Zhang Yani wasn't as attractive as Zhao Fulin, but she was pretty too. After that, Zhang Ze invited Zhang Yani to share a meal and watch a film together. Zhang Yani understood that she successfully attracted Zhang Ze's attention, but she pretended to be shy and waited for Zhang Ze's confession. Zhang Ze invited her to have a drink once. He was drunk and finally confessed his love to Zhang Yani. Zhang Yani absolutely accepted his love. In addition, they went to book a room and slept with each other that night. However, they didn't tell Zhao Fulin that they were boyfriend and girlfriend now. Zhang Yani was a mean girl. So she planned to make fun of Zhao Fulin first before she ended her friendship with her. Therefore, she teamed up with Zhang Ze to make Zhao Fulin a joke. Is the girl very beautiful and wearing a loose white t-shirt with a high ponytail? Zhang Yani asked. She was describing Gu Ning. Hearing that, Zhang Ze was surprised. Yeah, how do you know that? With his affirmative answer, Zhang Yani suddenly felt like something wasn't right. When we were on the launching pad, Zhao Fulin was scared and didn't want to jump. I tried to persuade her to have a try, but the girl stood out and stopped me. Afterwards, a staff member directly pushed Zhao Fulin down, and the girl ran into the elevator without delay. I didn't think further back then, but now I feel it's a little strange. How come the girl knew that Zhao Fulin was going to be in danger? Zhang Ze realized that there must be something wrong too. Maybe because she saw that Zhao Fulin was so scared, and she was worried that an accident might happen. It's possible. Zhang Yani shrugged. Do we need to find Zhao Fulin now? Zhang Yani asked. They came here together after all, and it wasn't appropriate to dump her here alone. You can go if you want to find her. I'll wait for you outside, Zhang Ze said. He didn't say that he was annoyed by Gu Ning in the tea house. Zhang Yani agreed and left. Even though Zhao Fulin hated them now, she still went back with them. She walked out of the amusement park along with them, then took a taxi home herself. Zhao Fulin said nothing along the way. Zhang Yani and Zhang Ze didn't feel like anything was wrong, because they thought that she must be too scared. When Zhang Yani went to find Zhao Fulin, Gu Ning and her friends went back to the launching pad. Gao Chengyun was the first one to jump. Gao Chengyun had done it many times before, but he still felt a little scared this time. He also screamed when he fell from such a high height. It was actually a good way to release his unpleasant feelings. And Ran and Zhu Yuanjin stayed by the river. They didn't know when Chao Wenqin and the others would finish, so they chose to wait for them at the shore. When Gao Chengyun screamed, and Ran and Zhu Yuanjin recognized him. They got nervous but were somewhat amused by Gao Chengyun's reaction too. While Gao Chengyun jumped, other people could put on the equipment to save some time. Um, Zhejing, you can do it before me, Chao Wenxin said. She was too nervous to bungee jump right now. Why don't you do it first? Jiang Zhejing asked. I'm too nervous right now and I need some time, Chao Wenxin said. Since she said that, Jiang Zhejing had to stand up. Gu Ning noticed that both of them were very nervous, so she said, Gaoi can do it first if you're too nervous. No problem. Gaoi agreed. Great. Jiang Zhejing's face lit up at once and he sat back down. Although he would jump sooner or later, he still wanted to relax for a while longer. Gao Chengyun soon finished bungee jumping and a staff member began to fasten the large elastic cord to Gao Yi's body. As soon as Gao Chengyun went back to the shore, and Ran and Zhu Yuanjin went to support him. Although Gao Chengyun didn't feel much fear, his body was a little sore, so he couldn't move smoothly. Luckily it wasn't serious and he would be fine as time went by or he could take a warm bath or go to a spa. Gaoi was ready to jump, and this was the first time he had tried this. On a staff member's instructions, 
Gowie jumped down without hesitation and he didn't shout aloud. Normally, people screamed during the jumping either because they were scared or because they simply wanted to release their pressure. Gowie, however, didn't do that because he wasn't scared and was introverted. Jesus, Gowie didn't scream at all. Chao Wenxin was very surprised. It seems that he isn't afraid of it, Zhang Zijing said. In their eyes, if jumpers didn't scream aloud, it meant that they weren't scared of it. Chao Wenxin was the next one to jump. Gowie was physically strong, so he didn't feel uncomfortable after jumping. His face looked as fine as usual, which surprised the staff members who were waiting for him in the boat. Gowie felt like it was very exciting, but not exciting enough, so he wanted to do it again if they had enough time. When Gowie went back to the shore, Gao Chengyun looked at him with admiration. I screamed so loudly, and now I feel embarrassed. Actually, it wasn't embarrassing if people screamed during extreme sports, but Gowie stayed too calm, which was unusual. Chao Wenxin soon jumped down, and she screamed even louder than Gao Chengyun. After that, she sank to the ground. Zhang Zijing followed her to jump next. When he looked down from a great height, he couldn't help but move a few steps backwards. However, he didn't want to be a coward, so he summoned up his courage and jumped down. After the jump, he was in an even worse condition than Chao Wenxin, and he could barely get back to his feet. Gu Ning was the last one to go. After Zhang Zijing jumped down, Gu Ning said to those staff members at the launching pad, I think you probably should listen to Jumper's ideas in the future. If someone refuses to jump, you better not push him or her to jump down from here. Do you know what happened to the girl? She has acrophobia and went into shock when she jumped down. She almost died just then. Gu Ning wasn't criticizing them, but persuaded them to be careful in a very kind tone. Nobody wanted what had happened to Zhao Felin to happen again. Those staff members were shocked after knowing it. They didn't expect that Zhao Felin would suffer from shock. Luckily, she survived. Although those staff members were a little rude sometimes, they weren't bad people and felt guilty afterwards. We're sorry for the accident and will be cautious in the future. Seeing their good attitude, Gu Ning said nothing again, and she could only hope that they would stop pushing jumpers down forcefully. Although Zhao Felin survived this time, the tragedy could happen to another person next time. Once the large elastic cord was pulled back, Gu Ning was ready to jump. She indeed felt a little uncomfortable when she looked down from the edge of the launching pad, but she wasn't nervous. She had jumped down from a much greater height in her previous incarnation, which was really scary. As soon as Gu Ning was prepared, she jumped down without screaming at all. She's very brave too, a staff member said. You're right. Another staff member agreed. Gao Chengyun and the others were impressed by Gu Ning's performance. Gao Yi, on the other hand, thought nothing of it because he was so used to the fact that Gu Ning was excellent at everything. When Gu Ning was about two meters away from the water surface, she saw a giant swimming animal in the river. She smiled when it met her eyes. It was the Jiao. The Jiao was swimming around this place, and it sensed Gu Ning's magical power when Gu Ning rescued Zhao Felin. So it swam over to see Gu Ning. Gu Ning went back to the ground steadily, and she felt very good after the jump. The staff member who helped Gu Ning get onto the boat recognized her and admired her more than ever. Gu Ning was a kind and brave girl in his eyes. Ning Ning, how do you feel? Isn't it exciting? Chao Wenxin asked Gu Ning. Yeah, but I don't think it's exciting enough because the launching pad isn't very high, Gu Ning said. What? It isn't very high. Chao Wenxin was shocked. It's high enough for me, Gao Qingyu said. Well, I actually think it's not exciting enough as well, Gao Yi said. Chao Wenxin and the others felt a little upset. We can go somewhere which is more exciting in the future, Gu Ning said to Gao Yi. I'm in. Chao Ye was more than willing to join them. Great. Gao Yi was excited. Chao Wenxin and the others, however, didn't know what to say. I can't. I already had enough today, Chao Wenxin said. She jumped down from 40 meters high today, which was enough for her heart. She was afraid that she might be scared to death if the height became greater. I won't do it again, Zhang Zijing said. He was now very sure that he was afraid of bungee jumping after trying it once. It wasn't humiliating to admit that bungee jumping was scary, 
because different people had different endurance. Let's go pick our bags up, and I'll give each of you a pill to help you recover, Gu Ning said to Chao Wenxin and Zhang Zhezheng. They seemed a little uncomfortable now. All the power crystals were stored in the telepathic ice space. Not in her bag, but she couldn't let others know that, so she needed a bag to hide it. Great! Chao Wenxin and Zhang Zhezheng were happy to hear that, because they couldn't tolerate their sore bodies any longer. Chao Wenxin had bungee jumped before, and she knew that her body would be affected in the following week. Although it wasn't serious, it wasn't comfortable either. Therefore, they could feel much better with Gu Ning's pills. Afterwards, they walked to the hall together. Even though Chao Wenxin and Zhang Zijing had sore bodies, they could still walk. Just slowly Dadian ran and Zhu Yuanjin went to help them, so it wasn't a big problem. After getting their bags back, Gu Ning took out a bottle of power crystals and gave each of them a pill. Although an Ran and Zhu Yuanjin didn't bungee jump, they also took one because it was good for their health. Chao Wenxin and Zhang Zijing soon felt much better and were full of energy again. An Ran and Zhu Yuanjin also felt very comfortable. At that time it was time for lunch so they went to have lunch together. Ning Ning, we're going to climb a mountain later. Why don't you join us? We're also going to have fun in a bar tonight after dinner, Chao Wenxin said. She had no intention to go back home early today. In addition, they didn't gather together often, so they wanted to enjoy the whole day together. I'm afraid I can't, because I'm leaving for City F tomorrow. I need to go back to the Tang family house tonight. The National College entrance examination is around the corner after all, Gu Ning said. Fine, Chao Wenxin said. She understood that Gu Ning had more important things to do. Right, the National College entrance examination is around the corner. I almost forget that Miss Gu is still a high school student, Zhang Zijing said. Because Gu Ning stayed out of her school all the time, even she sometimes forgot the fact that she was still a student. They separated after lunch. Chao Wenxin and the others went to climb the mountain, while Gu Ning, Gaoyi, and Chao Ye left to deal with their own things. All of a sudden, Gu Ning remembered the abandoned land she had bought and left to in Guangyao. She was curious to know how the construction was going there. Since she was free now, she decided to have a look. After months of construction, several stories of the large building had already been built. This project progressed faster than the one at Zhengyang Street in City G. Gu Ning showed her exit entry permit issued by Shanghua Real Estate before she was allowed to enter and because it was a construction site, they had to wear a hard hat. No accidents or drama happened, and everyone was busy doing their own job. Once Gu Ning walked into the construction site, the chief engineer named Mu Hai saw her. Hi boss, welcome. He walked to Gu Ning at once. Hi, I'm free today so I wanted to have a look around, Gu Ning said. No problem, please allow me to lead the way for you, Mu Hai said. Thanks. Gu Ning followed Mu Hai. Mu Hai guided Gu Ning around the construction site and introduced the processes to her along the way. Afterwards, Gu Ning left. At this time, it was about 3 p.m., so she directly went to the Tang family's house with Gao Yi and Xiao Ya. When they arrived at the Tang family's house, Gu Ning saw Tang Haifeng in a formal suit and it seemed that he was leaving. Grandpa, are you leaving? Gu Ning asked. Yeah, today is the birthday of your aunt Li Hua's father so I'm going to attend his birthday party. Since you're home now, we can go together with your parents later, Tang Haifeng said. Sure, Gu Ning said. Because they would join in the party as a family, Gu Ning told Gao Yi and Xiao Ya to go back before her. Moreover, it was easier for her to go pick up the Jiao without them with her. Before long, Tang Jiakai got home. He was thrilled to see Gu Ning and went to talk with her at once. Tang Jiakai told her that Tang Xiaoyu had almost fully recovered, and he would be able to play basketball after resting for another day. Saying that, Tang Jiakai kept complimenting Gu Ning. He also talked about the Bulls, and how the members of the Bulls were out of strength now after the basketball game. They didn't even have the strength to train. Besides, their reputation was ruined as well. Hearing that, Tang Haifeng realized that Gu Ning had saved Tang Jiakai's friend, and even had defeated a professional basketball team by herself. He was impressed by his granddaughter's skills. Ning Ning, I must tell you that you're very popular in the sports field, 
and many coaches say that you've attracted a lot of attention from the women's national basketball team, Tang Jiakai said. As long as Ningning is unwilling to do it, they can do nothing about it. Tang Haifeng said that Ji Yuning definitely had no interest in basketball, and she needed to focus on her studies now. When it was almost 5 p.m., Tang Yunfan and Gu Man got home, followed by Tang Yunhang and Zhang Lihua. They came back home to put on formal clothes for the birthday party. The men were all in suits, while the women were in gowns. It was a party among people from high society, so everyone had to show up in formal clothing. Therefore, Gu Ning also went to put on a beautiful dress. She had a room in the Tang family house. Although she seldom stayed in the Tang family house, there were many female clothes prepared for her in the room. Even if Gu Ning married into another family in the future, her room would still be there in the Tang family's house. Gu Ning was a young beautiful girl with slim build, so she already looked very attractive in a simple white dress. Ning Ning, you're really pretty, and you look very attractive even in a random dress. Tang Haifeng complimented Gu Ning with a broad smile. Gu Ning didn't wear any makeup. Because of her magical power, her skin was flawless so there was no need for her to put on makeup. Haha, <laughs> that's because I have a beautiful family. Gu Ning smiled. You're right. Tang Haifeng not dead. Let me be honest with you, I'm the most good-looking man in my school, Tang Jiakai said. You're too self-satisfied. Jiang Lihua criticized Tang Jiakai. Although she had to admit that her son was indeed handsome. I mean it, and Ning Ning is the witness. She saw a large group of girls around me in my school, and they're all my admirers. Tang Jiakai at ge. Jiang Lihua laughed and dropped the topic. After they were all prepared, they left together. They sat in a MPV with a private car at the front and back. There were bodyguards in the two private cars to protect them. They were super rich people in this city after all. The birthday party was held in one of the Zhang family's high-end houses. Normally, a rich family wouldn't split, and all the members would live together in a large house. Zhang Guangming was the eldest son of Master Zhang, so he was welcoming their guests with his wife now. Once the Tang family's car stopped at the gate of the house, the couple walked to welcome them with a warm smile. Hi everyone, welcome. They were very familiar with each other. Nice to see you again, Zhang Lihua said. Glad to be here, Tang Jiakai said. Nice to see you all, Tang Yunhang said. Although the Zhang family wasn't as rich and influential as the Tang family, they got along with one another very well. Please come on in, Zhang Guangming said to them. When the Tang family arrived, all the invited guests were almost present. There weren't many people at the party. Overall, there were only 45 invited guests in all, and all of them were close to the Zhang family. The party was a buffet and everyone enjoyed it. Other guests all moved forward to greet the members of the Tang family because it was the most powerful family in the room tonight. Members of the Tang family were very kind and they wore a smile all the time. However, the Tang family's social status was much higher than other guests, so other guests still felt a little pressure. Jakai Misku, if you feel bored chatting with the older generation in the hall, you can go to the backyard to have fun with Jimin and Minhong, Mrs. Zhang said to Tang Jakai and Gu Ning. Although Gu Ning already joined the Tang family, she kept her name as Gu Ning so other people still called her Misku. Sure, Tang Jiakai said. Although he disliked Zhang Yutong, he got along with Zhang Minhong and Zhang Jimin. Gu Ning also agreed. After that, they went to the backyard. There was a tea pavilion in the backyard, and the younger generation were enjoying themselves at this time. Nevertheless, Zhang Yutong and Zhang Jimin argued with each other again. Zhang Yutong accidentally knocked Zhang Jimin's wine glass over, and the wine was splashed on Zhang Jimin. But Zhang Yutong refused to apologize and even blamed Zhang Jimin for it. Jiang Jimin was very angry and poured a glass of wine on Jiang Yutong. Then they began to argue with one another. When they were arguing loudly, Jiang Minhong sat still and told other people to keep on drinking and eating, because he knew that his older sister wasn't weak at all. However, if Jiang Jimin couldn't win, he would definitely stand up and help her. If Jiang Yutong was bullied by someone else outside, he would gloat when it wasn't serious and would only help her once it became too violent. 
Jiang Yutong was a member of his family after all that a tea this time, Gu Ning saw a familiar face, and the person was Zhao Fulin. It turned out that Zhao Fulin's family was a relative of the Jiang family. Gu Ning and Tang Jiakai walked up to them, and Jiang Minhong noticed them first. He stood up to welcome them at once. Hi, welcome. Come here and have a seat. Jiang Minhong knew Gu Ning from Tang Yun Fan and Gu Man's wedding. However, they weren't familiar with each other, so he called her Miss Gu. Hearing Jiang Minhong's voice, Jiang Jimin and Jiang Yutong stopped arguing, then turned to look at Gu Ning and Tang Jiakai. E, Jiakai, Miss Guam. Jiang Jimin's face went back to normal and greeted them politely. Jiang Yutong, on the contrary, snorted with disdain and went to change her clothes. Tang Jiakai and Gu Ning didn't care about Jiang Yutong's attitude at all. Other people recognized Tang Jiakai and stood up without delay. Nice to see you, Lord Tang. Nice to see you all, Tang Jiakai said. Nice to meet you all, Gu Ning said with a smile. Zhao Felin couldn't see Gu Ning's face among the crowd, but she thought that Gu Ning's voice sounded familiar. Nevertheless, she didn't think further because there were many people who had similar voices. If you don't mind, you can directly call me Jimin and I can directly call you Gu Ning. We don't need to be so polite to each other, Zhang Jimin said. It feels very strange. Jiang Jimin had a good impression of Gu Ning, so she wanted to make friends with her. Of course, Jimin, Gu Ning said. After that, Jiang Jimin invited Gu Ning to have a seat near her. Zhao Felin didn't see Gu Ning's face until now, and she was greatly surprised to see her here. In addition, Gu Ning came here along with Tang Jiakai. As Jiang Jimin's friend, she had definitely heard of Tang Jiakai, and she had met him a few times before, but they weren't familiar. Since Tang Jiakai was a member of the famous Tang family in City B, Gu Ning's family must be very powerful too. Hi, nice to see you again, Gu Ning said to Zhao Felin when Zhao Felin was still surprised. Do you know each other? Zhang Jimin was slightly surprised. Nice to see you, Miss Gu. What a coincidence. Zhao Felin smiled. Zhao Felin just found out Gu Ning's name. She was very excited to see Gu Ning again because Gu Ning was her savior. Afterwards, Zhao Felin answered Zhang Jimin's question in a low voice. It was Miss Gu who saved my life today. Zhao Felin already told Zhang Jimin about what had happened to her today. They were close friends so they shared many secrets. Even though Zhao Felin already gave Zhang Ze and Zhang Yani up, she still felt sad after being made a joke by people who were supposed to be her good friends. It would take time for her to forget this bad memory. Oh, I understand now, Zhang Jimin said. She was also mad at what Zhang Ze and Zhang Yani had done to Zhao Fulin. Luckily, Gu Ning had appeared on time and saved Zhao Fulin's life. Gu Ning, this is my close friend Zhao Fulin. Thank you so much for what you did today, Zhang Jimin said to Gu Ning. Wait a second. What happened today? Zhang Minhong asked curiously. It's a girl's affair, and it's none of your business, Zhang Jimin said. I simply care about you. Zhang Minhong said. However, Zhang Jimin refused to talk about it. Don't you need to change your clothing? Gu Ning looked at Zhang Jimin's stained dress. Oh right, I almost forgot. I'm sorry, I need to leave for a while. Zhang Jimin realized that her dress was stained. Then she left to change it. Miss Gu, you can directly call me Minhong since you're Jiakai's younger cousin, Zhang Minhong said to Gu Ning. They were relatives anyway. Hearing that, other people were shocked. They didn't know when Tang Jiakai got a new younger cousin. Sure, Gu Ning said with a smile. Please allow me to do the introduction, Tang Minhong said and stood up. He turned to the others first. This is Gu Ning. She's Lord Tang's biological daughter and Jiakai's younger cousin. However, she kept her mother's surname. So her family name is Gu. Because he didn't want other people to disdain Gu Ning, he explained why Gu Ning had a different family name from Tang Jiakai. It wasn't a secret in high society after all. If Zhang Minhong didn't point out that Gu Ning was Tang Yunfan's biological daughter, they wouldn't be so surprised. They all knew that Tang Yunfan never married before, and he just got married not long ago. Since Gu Ning was Tang Yunfan's biological daughter, Gu Ning's mother must be Tang Yunfan's wife now. 
They were curious to know why Tang Yunfan suddenly got married, but none of them asked this question. After that, Zhang Minhong introduced the other people to Gu Ning. Some of them were his cousins, while some were children of his parents' friends. A short while later, Zhang Yutong came back to her seat, but she only talked with her own younger cousin. Zhang Jimin also came back after a few minutes, and she ignored Zhang Yutong too. When she was chatting with Gu Ning, she was amazed by Gu Ning's flawless skin. Gu Ning, your skin looks so good. Do you wear any makeup? Zhang Jimin asked. No, I don't like wearing makeup, Gu Ning replied with a smile. Keep lying. It's impossible to have perfect skin without wearing any makeup, Zhang Yutong suddenly said. Gu Ning, just ignore her. She's simply jealous of you. I think you're not wearing any makeup because I can't see any. You can look at my face. I've put on some makeup and you can clearly see the foundation, Zhang Jimin said. She was unwilling to argue with Zhang Yutong because it was a waste of her time. Zhao Fuling got interested at once. Gu Ning, how do you take care of your skin in your daily life? It looks flawless. Women were all interested in skincare products. I only use Cozy, Gu Ning said. Cozy? What a coincidence. I'm using Cozy too, Zhang Jimin said with excitement. My skin was always dry before I used Cozy, but it got much better after I used Cozy. Cozy is my favorite skincare brand now. Ah, Guam Ning Lauga. She felt happy when other women liked her brand. Tang Jiakai also felt satisfied. He was proud of Gu Ning and felt happy for her. However, Gu Ning didn't want too many people to know that she was the founder of Cozy right now, so he couldn't tell them this secret. Jamin recommended Cozy to me, and I'm using it as well. It is indeed very effective, Zhao Fulin said. If only Cozy had a line of makeup. I want to replace all my makeup with Cozy. Women were willing to spend a lot of money on their appearances as long as the products were effective. Girls above 18 learned of all kinds of ways to take care of their skin. Both Zhao Fulin and Zhang Jimin were in their early 20s, so they paid more attention to their skin. Gu Ning, however, didn't care much about it, because her skin was already perfect without any makeup. In addition, she found it annoying to put on makeup every time she left her home. She was still a high school student anyway, so there was no need for her to wear makeup. Although Cozy only had skincare products without a line of makeup, she was going to produce makeup products in the future, especially lipsticks, because lipsticks were women's favorite. It wasn't uncommon for a woman to have over a dozen lipsticks, which was very important for makeup sales. Gu Ning told Ning Changkai to be in charge of it, so she didn't know many of the details, but she planned to talk with Ning Changkai later about the makeup line. Cozy is still a new brand, and it takes time to produce so many kinds of products, but I believe the makeup line is coming soon, Gu Ning said with confidence. She was the boss after all. Hearing that, Tang Jiakai smiled. Who do you think you are? Zhang Yutong argued against Gu Ning. It's not up to you. Zhang Yutong disliked Gu Ning because Gu Ning was prettier than her, and even became Zhang Jimin's friend. She hated Zhang Jimin and Zhang Jimin's friends. However, Cozy was a well-known brand, and she admitted that it was very effective so she didn't criticize it. Tang Jiakai was annoyed when Zhang Yutong said that to Gu Ning. To prevent Tang Jiakai from revealing the fact that she was the founder of Cozy, Gu Ning opened her mouth at once. Why don't we bet on it? I believe Cozy will have a makeup line within a month. If not, I'll buy a 100 sets of Cozy for you and vice versa. It wasn't difficult for both of them to do that, because neither of them lacked money. Ji Yu Ning had no intention to make Zhang Yutong buy Cozy for her, but she aimed to embarrass her. Why not? I don't believe Cozy will have the makeup line within a month, Zhang Yutong said. Tang Jiakai felt like laughing, but controlled himself. Zhang Yutong was doomed to fail. Gu Ning. Zhang Jimin, however, was a little worried. Although she knew Gu Ning was very rich, she thought that there was no need for Gu Ning to have such a bet with Zhang Yutong. It's fine, it's not a big deal for me, Gu Ning said airily. She still didn't want to tell them that she was the founder of Cozy. After a while, Zhang Jimin's mother called them to go to the hall. The party began at 6 p.m., and it ended at 7.30 p.m. 
the members of the Tang family left earliest, because other people didn't dare to leave if they were still here. When Gu Ning was about to walk out, Zhao Fulin seemed to have something to talk to Gu Ning about. Seeing that, Gu Ning directly asked her, Do you have anything you want to talk to me about? Um, can we be friends on WeChat? Zhao Fulin asked. Sure. Gu Ning smiled. Zhao Fulin beamed at once, and they added each other on WeChat. I'm in. You can't leave me behind. Jiang Jimin approached them and added Gu Ning on WeChat. Although they had only gotten along with one another for a short time, Gu Ning had a good impression of them and she was willing to be kind to them. It wasn't a bad thing to have more friends. A bunch of bored people, Zhang Yutong who stood not far from them said with disdain. Gu Ning heard it but she didn't care about it. Oh Fulin, why don't we take some photos with Gu Ning? Jiang Jimin suddenly said to Zhao Fulin with a mysterious smile. Zhao Fulin didn't understand it, but wouldn't refuse to do it either, because she liked Gu Ning. Can we? She asked Gu Ning. No problem. Gu Ning smiled. She definitely understood why Jiang Jimin said that, and she was amused. Afterwards, they took some photos together. When Gu Ning was gone, Jiang Jimin asked Zhao Fulin, Have you heard of Gu Ning's achievements? What achievements? Zhao Fulin was confused. Haha, I knew that you didn't know. Search her name on the internet, and I promise you'll be surprised, Zhang Jimin said. Zhao Fulin listened to her and searched Gu Ning's name on the internet. Then she was shocked by the news about Gu Ning. To her astonishment, Gu Ning had done so many unbelievable things before. In addition, Gu Ning was also the famous goddess Gu. Zhao Fulin became Gu Ning's fan now. You told me to take photos with her because of this, right? Zhao Fulin asked with excitement. Yeah. Jiang Jimin nodded. Why didn't you tell me earlier? Zhao Fulin complained. How could I tell you that in front of Gu Ning? She wants to keep a low profile, and you can find out her achievements yourself through the internet anyway, Zhang Jimin said. You're right. Zhao Fulin agreed. They were close friends so they knew each other's character very well. Without hesitation, Zhao Fulin posted those photos to her WeChat moments. Zhao Fulin, honored to see famous goddess Gu tonight. Thanks to my dear friend. What a happy ending of this beautiful day. Her dear friend was obviously Jiang Jimin. Once Zhao Fulin posted those photos, some of her friends who were also Gu Ning's fans got excited. They all hoped that they could see Gu Ning one day in real life. Some were also curious about who Goddess Gu was, so Zhao Fulin told them to do the research themselves. Within a short time, more people became Gu Ning's fans. Zhang Yani was also in Zhao Fulin's friend circle, because Zhao Fulin hadn't deleted her yet. When she saw the photos, she searched Gu Ning's name on the internet without delay. After reading many pieces of news about Gu Ning, she was amazed too. At the same time, Zhang Yani was more jealous of Zhao Fulin now. Zhao Fulin was prettier than her, and Zhao Fulin's family was also richer than her family. Even the boy she liked admired Zhao Fulin at first. Then when Zhao Fulin was in danger, Gu Ning showed up and saved her life. Wow, I'm surprised that Zhao Fulin has a group of so many successful friends, Zhang Zhe said. Hearing that, Zhang Yani panicked a little and said with disdain on purpose, She's lucky but not kind. As long as Gu Ning knows more about her, she will be abandoned. Zhang Yani wasn't confident about herself, so she did everything to keep Zhang Zhe by her side. However, she didn't know that Zhang Zhe was actually snobbish. One of the reasons why he chased Zhang Yani was that Zhang Yani was a local citizen in City B. Zhang Yani's family was involved in business, and her family bought a bachelor-style apartment for her. Zhang Zhe, on the other hand, was from a small city and his family wasn't rich, so he couldn't afford a bachelor-style apartment in City B. Therefore, even though Zhang Zhe couldn't afford a house in City B, he hoped that Zhang Yani could help him. Zhang Yani only had a bachelor-style apartment, but she was much richer than those young people who had no place to live at all. In addition, Zhang Yani was the only daughter in her family, and her family's wealth would be hers in the future. Jiang Zhe also understood that he wasn't outstanding among his peers in City B. So he didn't dare to chase a girl of much higher social position than him. It seems that they're at a luxurious party from the background of the photos. 
Normally, only either rich or powerful people could attend a party like this. What does Zhao Felin's family do for a living? Zhang Zhe asked all of a sudden. Hearing that, Zhang Yani got nervous. I don't know, but she was very jealous of me after knowing that I have my own apartment, Zhang Yani said. It meant that Zhao Felin's family couldn't afford an apartment. It definitely wasn't the truth, and Zhang Yani deliberately said it to stop Zhang Zhe from getting interested in Zhao Felin. In fact, Zhao Felin's family was much richer than Zhang Yani's family. Besides, Zhao Felin's parents already bought a large downtown house for her. She also had a winery which was worth millions of yuan along with an expensive car under her name. Therefore, Zhang Yani was super jealous of Zhao Fulin. However, Zhao Fulin didn't want to live alone, and the house was too big for her, so she always wanted a smaller apartment. She was still a college student, and her parents thought that a house was enough for her, so she decided to buy an apartment on her own in the future when she had a job. Although Zhang Yani said that, Zhang Zhe still felt it wasn't right. Really? The gown she's wearing in the pictures is a designer brand, and it costs at least 10,000 yuan. Zhang Yani was displeased. Who knows? It could be fake and cost just hundreds of yuan. Zhang Zhe closed his mouth and dropped the topic, but he still had doubts in his mind. He decided to find out the truth later. Even though Zhang Yani was Zhang Zhe's girlfriend now, Zhang Zhe didn't want to miss the chance to rise to a higher social position. He didn't care about Zhao Felin's behavior as long as he could benefit from their relationship. Gu Ning didn't go back with Tang Haifeng and instead took a taxi home. Her family members knew that she wasn't a weak girl, so they agreed to let her go back home alone. At the same time, they still reminded her to be careful. Gu Ning then went to the river and put the Jiao back into the telepathic eye space before she went home. It had been a long day. Zhang Zhe was also back in his dorm room and he called Zhao Felin without delay. At this moment, Zhao Felin was drying her hair after taking a bath. Seeing Zhang Zhe's call, Zhao Felin remembered that she hadn't blacklisted his number yet, and she did it right away. Although she still felt sad and disappointed because she really had liked Zhang Zhe, her dignity was more important in her eyes. Zhang Zhe was annoyed when Zhao Felin refused to answer his call. He kept calling her again and again, but he couldn't get through to her. Then he found out that Zhao Felin just blacklisted his number. Why would she do that? Zhang Zhe didn't understand it. Since Zhao Felin refused to answer his calls, he started to send her messages on WeChat. Zhang Zhe, why are you refusing to answer my calls? He was questioning her. However, the message failed to send to Zhao Felin because Zhao Felin had already deleted him from her friend list. Zhang Zhe was furious and almost smashed his phone on the ground. The next morning, several of Zhao Felin's classmates surrounded her once she showed up at the classroom. They had all seen the photos Zhao Felin posted on her WeChat moments, and they were envious of her. Zhang Yani was full of jealousy now that Zhao Felin was the focus of people's attention. Hi, Feline. I saw the photos you posted yesterday. Are you a friend of Gu Ning's? Zhang Yani couldn't help but ask Zhao Felin. Yeah, we met at a party yesterday, Zhao Felin said under the anticipation of their classmates. Are you good friends? Zhang Yani asked again. She absolutely didn't want to hear that Zhao Felin was Gu Ning's good friend. Zhao Felin was better than her in every aspect, but she refused to accept it. Yeah, are you good friends? Is Goddess Gu easy going? Ooh. Several classmates were curious too. They asked those questions because Gu Ning was a celebrity and she was too far removed from their lives. In ordinary people's eyes, famous people were mostly arrogant. She's very easy going. I didn't know that she's so popular on the internet when I just met her at the party. She's younger than me, but behaves like a mature woman. Oh, she's much prettier than her photos, Zhao Felin said. Really? I've always wanted to see her in real life. She looks violent when she's fighting against bad people, but I think she's kind and gentle in her daily life. <coughs> they kept complimenting Gu Ning. At this time, their teacher came and they went back to their own seats. Zhang Yani couldn't be more jealous of Zhao Felin now after knowing that she got along well with Gu Ning last night. If Zhao Felin had a celebrity as a friend, more and more classmates would support her. 
Zhang Yani clenched her fists. She wouldn't allow Zhao Fulin to be more noticeable than her. When it was 8 a.m., Gu Ning had already finished her breakfast. After resting for a while, she called Ning Chang Kai. Hi, Uncle Ning. Is it convenient for you now? Yeah, what's up? Ning Chang Kai had just left his house and was walking to the parking lot. When can Cozy produce makeup products? Gu Ning asked. We had the idea to do that a few days ago, but our skincare products are always short of supply, so we don't have another production line for makeup products yet, Ning Chang Kai said. Well, I just had a bet with someone and I bet that Cozy can have a makeup line within a month, so you need to deal with it right now, Gu Ning said. Deliver a batch of the makeup products to City B when it's done. What? Who had the bet with you? Ning Chang Kai was amused. Gu Ning was the boss of Cozy, and it was totally up to her whether they would have a makeup line. As long as Gu Ning wanted, they could have a makeup line within a week. Well, she isn't smart enough to know that I'm the boss of Cozy, Gu Ning said with a smile. Anyway, many people want Cozy makeup, so we can produce some first. Sure, no problem. Ning Chang Kai agreed. At 8.30 a.m. Gu Ning and her bodyguards left for the airport. In the past, Zhang Yani and Zhao Fulin would chat with each other during the breaks between their classes, but now they avoided seeing one another. Once it was 12 p.m., Zhao Fulin stood up and left. She didn't go to invite Zhang Yani to dine together as she had done before. Although Zhang Yani was unwilling to be friends with Zhao Fulin any longer, she felt embarrassed when Zhao Fulin left her behind. She thought that maybe Zhao Fulin had realized something. However, she couldn't figure it out. Hey, Fulin, wait a second. Why don't you wait for me? Zhang Yani caught up to Zhao Fulin. Do you think we still need to be friends? Zhao Fulin coldly asked Zhang Yani. Zhao Fulin was mad at Zhang Yani, but she didn't bother to argue with her. Zhang Yani was confused. Before she could ask anything further, Zhao Fulin said, Zhang Yani, we're no longer friends and I don't want to see you anymore. I know what you did behind my back to steal Jiang Ze. You should stay away from me from now on. After that, Zhao Fulin walked away without hesitation. Hearing that, Zhang Yani realized that Zhao Fulin had found out what she had done to steal Jiang Ze away. Zhang Yani was shocked and couldn't believe her ears. She didn't know how Zhao Fulin managed to find out. Anyway, since Zhao Fulin already found out, she could stop pretending. Jiang Ze was waiting for Zhao Fulin on her way to the canteen. He still tried to figure out why Zhao Fulin had blacklisted him for no reason. As soon as Zhao Fulin showed up, Jiang Ze walked to her and stopped her. Zhao Fulin, why did you blacklist my phone number in WeChat? Why? Don't you know the reason yourself? Zhao Fulin sneered. Jiang Ze, I don't know what I've done wrong for you to team up with Zhang Yani to make fun of me. If you dislike me, you can directly tell me. I won't annoy you even if you reject me. I almost gave up on you but you gave me hope then joked about my life. If I hadn't been lucky, I would have died already. You! Zhang Ze rounded his eyes in shock. He couldn't believe that Zhao Fulin already found out their dirty secret. At this moment, Zhang Yani came. When she saw Zhang Ze talking with Zhao Fulin, she was annoyed. However, before she could say anything, Jiang Ze questioned her. Did you tell her? He knew that he and Zhang Yani had indeed done something terrible to Zhao Fulin, but he had no thoughts to let Zhao Fulin know about it, especially after knowing that Zhao Fulin's family could be very rich. To his astonishment, Zhao Fulin was aware of everything now. What? Zhang Yani just arrived, so she didn't understand what Jiang Ze was asking her. Neither of you told me, I found out myself, Zhao Fulin said. I am probably slow on the uptake, but I'm not dumb. Actually, Zhao Fulin should thank Gu Ning. If it hadn't been for Gu Ning's kind advice, she wouldn't have found out the truth. Fulin, it's a misunderstanding. I had no intention to make fun of you. Jiang Ze was anxious. You clearly know what you did. Both of you should stay away from me from now on. Jiang Ze said and wanted to leave but was stopped by Jiang Ze. Jiang Ze. Zhang Yani was mad seeing that. Since Zhao Fulin already found out, there was no need for them to explain it, unless Jiang Ze was attracted to Zhao Fulin again. 
Thinking of that, Zhang Yani was furious, but she blamed Zhao Fulin for it. Even though Zhang Zhe was actually interested in Zhao Fulin's family, Zhang Yani still believed that it was Zhao Fulin's fault. Because Zhang Yani was so deeply in love with Zhang Zhe, she lost her reason. Let me go. Zhao Fulin was angry and shrugged Zhang Zhe's hand away. Fulin. Jiang Su panicked. Zhang Zhe, I'm not as shameless as you. You're the ones going to be embarrassed if it becomes a sensation, Zhao Fulin said in a cold tone and left. Jiang Zhe didn't dare to stop her this time, in case it became a sensation. However, he wouldn't give up, and he was determined to find out more details about Zhao Fulin's family background. If Zhao Fulin's family was better than Zhang Yani's, he would put the blame on Zhang Yani to gain Zhao Fulin's forgiveness. In other words, Zhang Zhe would get whatever he wanted by hook or by crook. Zhang Zhe, what do you mean? She already found out, so why do you still want to explain it? Do you regret it now? Zhang Yani questioned Zhang Zhe after Zhao Fulin was gone. No, don't misunderstand me. Didn't you tell me that she isn't a good girl and likes defaming other people? I'm afraid she'll say something terrible about us to damage our reputation. Jiang Su argued. Before he was sure that Zhao Fulin's family was better than Zhang Yani's, he had to maintain a good relationship with Zhang Yani. That way, if he found out that Zhao Fulin's family wasn't better than Zhang Yani's, he would still be together with Zhang Yani. Really? Zhang Yani asked Zhang Ze. Although she already believed his words. I mean it, Zhang Ze said. Since he said that, Zhang Yani closed her mouth, and they went to dine together. Gu Ning and her bodyguards arrived at City F when it was about 1 p.m., so they took a taxi to have lunch. It was Monday, and Gu Ning had decided to go to her classes tomorrow. Since Gu Ning was back in City F now, she decided to invite her friends to dine together and she mentioned at them in their WeChat group later. Gu Ning seldom showed up in the WeChat group, so her friends got excited seeing her message. Although the National College entrance examination was around the corner, they still needed time to relax. They told Gu Ning that they wanted to have seafood in a famous five-star hotel, and Gu Ning agreed. Anyway, she didn't lack money at all. Speaking of seafood, Gu Ning suddenly remembered that there was a giant yellow croaker in her telepathic eye space now. It was a very rare and expensive fish, so Gu Ning wouldn't take it out right now. She decided to take it out when Master Lung visited the Tang family, because it would be a big surprise for them. After lunch, Gu Ning and her bodyguards went back to Fenghua Luxury Mansion. Once they arrived, Gu Ning told Gao Yi to clean her car, because she needed it later. The Land Rover was parked in the garage for a long time, so there was a thick layer of dirt over it. Gu Ning felt sleepy when she walked into her home, so she decided to have a nap in her bedroom. Gao Yi, on the other hand, didn't go back to his apartment and left to clean Gu Ning's car. Half an hour later, Gu Ning got up and left her home. Her car was already cleaned up, so she drove it away. Because Gu Ning was going to meet her schoolmates, there was no need for her bodyguards to go with her. Gao Yi and Xiao Ya were a couple after all, and they needed some private time. In fact, Gu Ning was very generous and kind to them. They had a lot of free time to live their own life, and they didn't have to stay by her sides all the time. Gu Ning actually preferred to move around alone, and she wasn't a weak girl, so it wasn't necessary for her to bring her bodyguards with her all day long. If it wasn't convenient for her to deal with something, she would tell Gao Yi and Xiao Ye to handle it for her. Before Gu Ning came home, Gu Man told her to have a look at Kamei Beauty Salon in City F if she was free. Although Gu Man talked with Gu Qing on the phone every day, she was still worried about the business of Kamei Beauty Salon. For now, Gu Qing ran Kamei Beauty Salon in City F on her own, and Gu Man stayed in City B. Therefore, Gu Ning left for Kamei Beauty Salon now that she was free. Kamei Beauty Salon was also very popular in City F, because the skincare products it used were effective and safe. Gu Qing had enough money to open a branch now, but she thought that she still needed some time to get more familiar with the business. As the boss of Kamei Beauty Salon, Gu Qing actually didn't have too much work to do in the store. She normally checked the accounts and chatted with her clients to kill the time. Many rich ladies in City F had become Gu Qing's friends now. However, 
Mrs. Hao and Mrs. Liu were still Gu Qing's closest friends. Wang Sufen was Gu Qing's biggest assistant in the store, and she was responsible for the stock checks. When Kamei Beauty Salon was running out of skincare products, Wang Sufen would contact Colleen for more stock. It wasn't a difficult job, but it wasn't easy either. Luckily, Wang Sufen was diligent and reliable, so she was able to do her job well. As soon as Gu Ning walked into the hall, Gu Qing walked to her with a broad smile. E. Ni Ning. She knew that Gu Ning would come back these days, so she wasn't surprised to see her. Moreover, she missed Gu Ning very much after they had been apart for so long. E. Aung King. Gu Ning smiled. Is everything all right in this store? Have you encountered any trouble while I've been absent? Kamei Beauty Salon was too famous and successful now, so Gu Ning was worried that their competitors might cause them trouble. It had happened before after all. Everything is fine and nobody has caused us trouble, Gu Qing said. She was very satisfied with the business right now. Because of the skincare products Gu Ning made, more and more women became their loyal customers. Many people were indeed jealous of Kamei Beauty Salon's popularity, but none of them dared to cause them any trouble now. Two-thirds of the membership of Kamei Beauty Salon were rich ladies in City F, so no one was willing to annoy them. Some businessmen got Colleen's phone number from Gu Qing, so they went to open a store by themselves. Gu Qing was willing to give them the number of Colleen, because she wasn't afraid that they would become more successful than her. It was Gu Ning's company anyway, and they would benefit from it if more people were selling products produced by Colleen. In addition, Kamei Beauty Salon already had a large number of loyal VIP members, and most of them were unwilling to go another place to take care of their skin. As a result, Kamei Beauty Salon was still very profitable. Great! Gu Ning felt relieved when Gu Qing told her that everything was fine. If anyone dares to cause you any trouble, feel free to tell me, she said later. Sure I will, Gu Qing said and felt touched. Gu Ning had helped her and her family a lot and never had asked anything in return. Qing, who's this? A rich lady was attracted by Gu Ning at first glance. She looks very familiar, she said. Oh, this is my niece Gu Ning. Gu Qing said with pride. Gu Ning. Is she the founder of Jade Beauty Jewelry? The rich lady got excited. It was obvious that she was also a loyal customer of Jade Beauty Jewelry. Moreover, she must have heard a lot about Gu Ning. Yeah, she is, Gu Qing said. Since the rich lady recognized Gu Ning, there was no need for them to deny it. Nice to see you, madam. Gu Ning politely greeted the rich lady. Miss Gu, so nice to meet you. I've heard a lot about you. You're the pride of our city now. The rich lady was excited to see the famous and talented girl. Thank you so much for your compliment, Gu Ning said with a smile. Well, I wish my kids could be as outstanding as you, the rich lady said. Gu Ning chatted with her for a while, then left the store. Chu Pei Han and the others would leave their school at 5.30 p.m., but it was only 5 p.m. now, so Gu Ning went to wait for them outside. However, the moment she arrived at the gate of their school, she saw her head teacher, Zhang Chihua, walking out in a hurry. It seemed like something terrible had happened. Since Zhang Chihua was Gu Ning's head teacher and she had taken good care of Gu Ning before, Gu Ning couldn't stand aside and do nothing. Therefore, she walked to her head teacher at once. Professor Zhang, what happened? May I help you? Gu Ning asked. Zhang Chihua was struck dumb for a second when she saw Gu Ning. Gu Ning, when did you come back? I just came back yesterday and I'll come to school tomorrow, Gu Ning said. Because Zhang Chihua didn't answer her question, she asked again. Professor Zhang, you don't look good. Do you need my help? Zhang Chihua hesitated for a while then said, My daughter had a fight with her schoolmate and she was pushed to the ground. She's injured and was sent to the central hospital. I need to go see her right now. Zhang Chihua was very worried about her daughter's condition. Let me drive you there, Gu Ning said. Thank you so much, Zhang Chihua said because it was an emergency. After that, Zhang Chihua got in Gu Ning's car, and Gu Ning drove fast to the central hospital. Zhang Chihua would probably be scared of the speed normally, but now she was anxious and couldn't wait to see her daughter. 
It only took Gu Ning about 10 minutes to reach the central hospital. Once Zhang Chouhua got out of the car, she called her daughter's teacher. But her daughter hadn't arrived yet. They waited for five minutes before finally seeing Zhang Chouhua's daughter and her daughter's teacher. Zhang Chouhua's daughter was 14 this year, and she was in eighth grade. Because she wasn't seriously injured, her teacher didn't call an ambulance. She was just taken to the hospital in their school's car. Zhang Chihua's daughter covered her forehead when she left the car, and a young female teacher supported her. Jai! Zhang Chihua ran to her daughter at once, followed by Gu Ning. Mom! Tao Jai cried the second she saw her mother. Mom, I feel so aggrieved now. I didn't write a love letter to Wang Xiaotsong, but they didn't believe me. They slapped and pushed me. There were palm prints left on Tao Jai's cheeks. Seeing that, even Gu Ning was angry. Gu Ning noticed that Tao Jai wasn't seriously injured, so she didn't treat her right away. But she wouldn't allow those bullies to get away with it. We must have an exam of the injuries first, and we must seek justice. Zhang Chihua said in anger. She couldn't tolerate the unreasonable humiliation, and it might leave a deep mental scar in Tao Jai's heart if she couldn't deal with it properly. Tao Jai's teacher, however, didn't think it was a good idea. Professor Zhang, I know it isn't Tao Jai's fault, but I think you better give it up, because the girl's family is very powerful. It was obvious that this teacher was a snobbish person. How could you say that after my daughter was injured? You're a teacher and you are supposed to protect your students. Zhang Chihua was mad. The young teacher wasn't annoyed but sneered. Professor Zhang, I said that out of my kindness. Since you refused to listen to me, you need to bear the result yourself. Oh, really? We're determined to seek justice this time, Gu Ning said. She understood that Zhang Chihua didn't have a powerful support, so she was willing to help her. She never bullied others because of her family background, but she wouldn't mind teaching those young bullies a lesson. Professor Zhang, don't worry. I can help you. Gu Ning comforted Zhang Chihua. Zhang Chihua knew that Gu Ning had connections in high places, so she wasn't worried about it at all. Thanks, Zhang Chihua said and felt grateful. Tao Jai's teacher, on the other hand, didn't think that Gu Ning could change the situation. Fine, do whatever you want, the young teacher said. After that, they went to check Tao Jai's injuries. Although Tao Jai's teacher was a little snobbish, she still was a responsible teacher, and she didn't leave Tao Jai alone. On their way to register, Gu Ning ran into An Guangming. Hi, Miss Gu, been a while. An Guangming's eyes lit up at once. Miss Gu, what happened? An Guangming's sight fell on injured Tao Jai. Director and nice to see you. Gu Ning greeted An Guangming. Well, this girl is my head teacher's daughter, and she was injured by her schoolmates. We need to do an injury check right now. An Guangming nodded. When Gu Ning mentioned the injury check, he understood what she was going to do. However, Tao Jai's teacher was astonished when Gu Ning called an Guangming director in. She couldn't believe that Gu Ning was able to know the director of this hospital, and they seemed familiar with each other. It seemed that Gu Ning was from a powerful family too. Thinking of that, the teacher believed that it was highly possible, or Gu Ning wouldn't insist on punishing those bullies. Miss Gu, please follow me this way, and Guangming said which meant there was no need for them to register. Hearing that, Tao Jai's teacher was surprised again. Thank you so much, Director In, Gu Ning said. Afterwards, they followed In Guangming to the VIP section to check Tao Jai. A few minutes later, the report was out. Tao Jai had a slight concussion and her wounds needed to be dealt with as soon as possible. Will it affect her life and study? Zhang Chihua was nervous. Normally it's fine, but she needs to stay at home for at least a week. If she feels uncomfortable, she must come here for a further check, the doctor said. Actually, Gu Ning could help Tao Jai to have a full recovery, but she couldn't tell Zhang Chihua right now. After that, the doctor went to deal with Tao Jai's wounds. During this time, Gu Ning asked An Guangming, Director An is in Chen on duty today? Yes, An Guangming said. Great, we haven't seen each other for a long time, and she's about to get off work now. I thought we could share a meal together, Gu Ning said. Gu Ning hadn't thought of Enchen before she came here, 
but she wanted to invite her to have dinner together. If Enchan knew that she came here but didn't tell her, she would be mad. Oh, she's in a bad mood these days, but she's unwilling to tell me the reason. If it's possible, please help me comfort her. And Guangming said. He looked worried. And Qian didn't have many friends, and he knew that Gu Ning was a very kind girl. Gu Ning agreed, and she thought that maybe An Qian wasn't happy because of a romantic relationship. And Qian lived a good life at her age, and Gu Ning couldn't think of another reason why she would be unhappy all of a sudden. Sure, I'll ask her later, Gu Ning said. After Tao Jai's wounds were treated, Gu Ning told the doctor to write a bill. Then she gave it to Zhang Qiuhua. Professor Zhang, you can go to pay the bill right now, and we can go to ask for medical expenses and compensation for mental damage later, Gu Ning said to Zhang Chouhua. And Guangming understood that the bill was useful for Gu Ning, so he didn't pay it for her. Sure, Zhang Chouhua said and left. Gu Ning didn't go with her and stayed in the room. After knowing that Gu Ning was familiar with Ng Guangming, Tao Jai's teacher was very sure that Gu Ning was from a powerful family now. She also changed her attitude towards Gu Ning. Although the girl who bullied Tao Jai was from a powerful family as well, the girl's parents were not as influential as in Guangming. Therefore, Tao Jai's teacher thought that the girl was certainly going to be punished. When Zhang Chiuhua left to pay the bill, Gu Ning called in Qian and told her that she was in the central hospital now. Gu Ning also invited her to dine with her and her schoolmates. And Qian had been in a bad mood recently but she was delighted to see Gu Ning. Afterwards, Gu Ning sent a message to their WeChat group and said that they would meet them later. Since Gu Ning decided to help Zhang Chiuhua, she thought that she should drive them home too. Professor Zhang, if you're willing to trust me, I need to tell you my idea, Gu Ning said to Zhang Chiuhua when Zhang Chiuhua came back. Sure, Zhang Chiuhua said. I hope that the girl's parents, especially her father, can go to the school at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Gu Ning said. Tao Jai's teacher understood that Gu Ning took it very seriously. Gu Ning continued, Professor Zhang, you need to ask for leave for a day, and we'll meet them at the academic affairs office with the injury report. Sure, I can call the girl's teacher now, and the girl's teacher will contact her parents, Tao Jai's teacher said. Great, Gu Ning said, and Tao Jai's teacher went to make the call. When Tao Jai's teacher was absent, Gu Ning had some questions to ask Tao Jai. After knowing the name of the school that Tao Jai studied at and the place where she had been bullied, Gu Ning called Kei at once and asked him to help her get some useful surveillance videos. Ji Yu Ning didn't know the girl's family background, so it was better if she had evidence in her hands. About five minutes later, Kei sent the surveillance videos to Gu Ning. Tao Jai's teacher came back later, and she told Gu Ning that the girl's parents would be at the school at 9 a.m. tomorrow. Gu Ning nodded with satisfaction. Professor Zhang, let me drive you home now, she said to Zhang Chouhua when everything was done. Thanks, Zhang Chouhua said. Her husband was on a business trip now, and Tao Jai was injured, so she needed Gu Ning's help. It's not a big deal, Gu Ning smiled. After that, Gu Ning said goodbye to Ng Guangming and they left together. Zhang Chouhua also thanked Ng Guangming for his help. When they walked out, Gu Ning called in Qian again. Although in Qian wouldn't be off work until 10 minutes later, she decided to leave earlier today. Gu Ning let Zhang Chiuhua and her daughter sit in her car, then said, Professor Zhang, please wait a moment. A friend of mine is leaving with us. No problem, Zhang Chiuhua said at once. During this time, Gu Ning gave Zhang Chiuhua a power crystal. Professor Zhang, this is a very effective pill and it can help your daughter recover. It isn't bitter and your daughter can take it without water. Thank you Gu Ning, Zhang Chihua said. Even though it was hard for her to believe it, she chose to trust Gu Ning. Tao Jai then took the pill without hesitation. Within three minutes, she felt much better and was amazed. Mom, my head stopped aching. Really? Zhang Chihua was also surprised. At this time and Qian walked out because Gu Ning already told her the size and license plate number of her car, and Qian was able to find her within a short time. Hey Gu Ning, been a while. And Qian smiled at Gu Ning the moment she saw her. I needed to come back for the National College entrance examination, and I'll be busy again afterwards, Gu Ning said. 
You're the busiest high school senior I've ever seen, and Chien said and shook her head with a resigned look. Ah, Guamning Lauga. After that, and Chien got in Guning's car, and Guning introduced her to Zhang Chiuhua. And Qian was surprised when she found out that Zhang Chiuhua was Gu Ning's head teacher. When En Qian was studying in her school, she always stayed away from her head teacher. Gu Ning, however, had a close relationship with her head teacher. Gu Ning was indeed very different from her peers. Without delay, Gu Ning drove Zhang Chiuhua and her daughter back to their home. A while later, Chu Peihan and the others finished their classes. They saw Gu Ning's message in the WeChat group and understood why Gu Ning would be late. Gu Ning already booked a private room for them, so they left for it first. City F wasn't a very large city, so Gu Ning arrived at Zhang Chihua's home half an hour later. When Zhang Chihua was gone and Qian said, Gu Ning, I've never seen a student who could have such a close relationship with her head teacher before. You really surprised me. Most students were scared of their head teacher. It was an undeniable truth. I'm not afraid of my teachers at all because I know that I'm an excellent student in my class, Gu Ning said. In fact, Gu Ning had never been afraid of any important figures or officials. She was an excellent student in her school and a successful businesswoman in business. There was nothing and nobody she needed to be afraid of. Fine, you're right. And Qian agreed. She knew that Gu Ning had many unbelievable achievements. Oh, I just met your father at the hospital, and he told me that you're not in a good mood these days. Would you mind telling me what happened? Gu Ning asked all of a sudden. Gu Ning was straightforward with her friends that An Qian looked upset when Gu Ning asked her that question. Well, it's actually not something serious, but I just don't feel comfortable about it. An Qian sighed. Jing Yu's company needs a video ad done, and the editor of it is a young woman who admires Jing Yu. She keeps bothering Zheng Yu all day long with the excuse of talking about business. Zheng Yu can't turn her down, but I'm displeased. Besides, the woman even warned me to stay away from Zheng Yu after knowing that I'm Zheng Yu's girlfriend. How could she do that? And Qian said in annoyance. It was obvious that Lu Zheng Yu had become An Qian's boyfriend now. Gu Ning wasn't surprised by the reason why An Qian was in a bad mood, because she knew it must be because of a problem in their relationship. In fact, it was the young female editor's fault. Do you need me to threaten or beat her? Lu Jingyu is your man after all, Gu Ning joked. Good idea. And Qian took it seriously and her eyes lit up at once. I had the same idea long ago, but I was afraid that it would affect Zheng Yu's business, so I gave it up. Um, Gu Ning suddenly didn't know what to say. Since you know it might affect Zheng Yu's business, I think we'd better not do that, Gu Ning said. Fini. And Qian was upset again, which made Gu Ning feel a little guilty. I know Zheng Yu is loyal to me, but I'm worried that the young woman will use some dirty tricks to seduce him. And Qian said with worries. It had happened before, and Gu Ning had helped Lu Zheng Yu out last time, but An Qian was afraid that it might happen again. If it really happened, she would have to break up with Lu Zheng Yu because she couldn't accept it. Gu Ning nodded and thought that she should help An Qian this time. Tell me more about the woman, and I'll see what I can do, Gu Ning said. Since An Qian was her good friend, Gu Ning wouldn't hesitate to help her. Her name's Zhui Nin, and she's an ad editor in XX Entertainment, An Qian said. Great, I'll see whether I can find out any dirty secrets about her, Gu Ning said. Thanks. An Qian was cheered up. As long as Gu Ning was willing to help her, she thought that nothing would be a big problem. Gu Ning smiled when An Qian was cheered up. Because she was driving the car, she couldn't call Kay right away, so she did it after she arrived at the hotel and parked her car. When Gu Ning and An Qian walked into the private room, Chu Pei Han, Yu Mixi, Su Anya, Mu Ku, Hao Ran, Qin Zishu, and Zhang Tianping, and An Yi were already waiting for them. Hi, Ning Ning, give me a hug. Chu Pei Han ran to Gu Ning once Gu Ning showed up. I want a big hug too. Su Anya stood up as well. Yumixi was a little shy, so she sat still. Hi, Qian. An E called in Qian. And Qian smiled at him, then went to sit next to him. They were all familiar with each other, so there was no need to be too polite. Su Anya, let me go. I don't feel comfortable now, Chu Peihan said, 
because Su Anya pressed both Gu Ning and Chu Pei Han to her arms. Seriously. Su Anya let them go at once. I don't hug other people often, so you should feel happy about it. I don't believe it, Chu Pei Han said. Chu Pei Han, don't be so confident about yourself. Do I need to remind you that I only love men? Su Anya said. What? Chu Pei Han was annoyed. What did you say? The other girls in the room laughed out loud because they knew Su Anya was simply joking. How Ran and the other boys stayed calm because they were already used to it. You hugged me first and I didn't seduce you. Chu Pei Han asked. Ning Ning, help me. Su Anya turned to Gu Ning. Chu Pei Han snorted and sat down. Su Anya also stopped arguing with her. Have you ordered yet? Gu Ning asked them when they were all seated. Yeah, we've ordered many kinds of seafood, Chu Pei Han said. Great, Gu Ning smiled. Ning Ning, you're very generous and we know you don't lack money at all, so we must dine in a fancy hotel tonight, Chu Pei Han said. I agree, Hao Ran said. Ah, ah, Qin Zi Shun Lauga. Tu. Gu Ning rolled her eyes and said, Fine, it's up to you and you're the boss tonight. Before long, the dishes were placed on the table, and they began to enjoy their dinner. Where are we going for fun later tonight? Hao Ran asked all of a sudden. The National College entrance examination is around the corner now, so you should focus more on your studies, Gu Ning said. Hearing that, Hao Ran and the others were disappointed. Muke complained. We've asked for a day off. Gu Ning had been absent for a long time, and they hadn't had fun together for a long time. Now, since they finally gathered together tonight, they felt like they should enjoy themselves for a whole night. Gu Ning was struck dumb for a second, then understood them. They had already asked for a day off, so they could enjoy themselves tonight. Where do you want to go? Gu Ning asked. Let's go to sing tonight. Xuan ya proposed. No problem. Gu Ning agreed. While Gu Ning was enjoying seafood with her friends, Zhang Zhe found out many details about Zhao Fulin's family from a schoolmate. It turned out that Zhao Fulin was from a very rich family with over a hundred million yuan in assets. In other words, Zhao Fulin's family was much richer than Zhang Yani's family. Although Zhang Yani's family was already much better than Zhang Zhe's family, Zhang Zhe felt her family was nothing now compared with Zhao Fulin's family. Zhao Fulin kept a low profile and she didn't wear designer brands, so not many people knew her family background. Zhang Zhe was highly regretful now. He couldn't believe that he had rejected Zhao Fulin for Zhang Yani. Besides, their schoolmate also told Zhang Zhe that Zhao Fulin was a very kind girl with good manners. Zhang Zhe felt utterly terrible afterwards and believed that Zhang Yani must have deceived him. It was Zhang Yani who told him that Zhao Fulin was an evil and unkind girl who came from a poor family. However, the truth was the exact opposite. Zhang Zhe was angry that Zhang Yani cheated him as if he was an idiot. He wasn't dumb and soon figured out why Zhang Yani did it. Although he ached to argue with Zhang Yani right now, he still curbed his anger. He decided to get Zhao Fulin back before he went to question Zhang Yani. After all, he was unwilling to lose both of them at the same time. Zhang Zhe called Zhao Fulin again and hoped that she would pick up his call. Unfortunately, he couldn't get through to her. Zhang Zhe was left no choice, so he borrowed his schoolmate's phone. Zhao Fulin didn't know that it was Zhang Zhe, so she answered the call. Hi Fulin, this is Zhang Zhe. I have something really important to tell you. Can you meet for a while? I promise I won't waste much of your time. Zhang Zhe said and sounded sincere. Zhao Fulin, on the contrary, was unhappy to hear his voice. There is nothing I want to talk about with you. Stop calling me. After that, she hung up on him without hesitation. Actually, Zhao Fulin still felt very sad, because she had really liked Zhang Zhe before. Zhang Zhe was angry when Zhao Fulin hung up on him, but he had to calm himself down and called Zhao Fulin once more. Zhao Fulin refused to answer it knowing that it was Zhang Zhe. When Zhang Zhe called her again and again, Zhao Fulin directly turned her phone off. Zhang Zhe was furious and couldn't believe that Zhao Fulin dared to reject him. Since Zhao Fulin was unwilling to answer his calls, he had to wait for her outside her classroom later. 
As long as it was good for his future, Jiang Zhe wouldn't give up. Gu Ning received Kay's call when she almost finished dinner, and Kay sent an email to her with everything he found out about the woman. It turned out that the woman had an affair with her boss, and her boss was already married. Besides, Kay found many amorous pictures and videos of them in Zhu Yinin's computer. The photos were quite clear and Gu Ning could see their faces. Gu Ning was confused about the reason why Zhu Yinin kept bothering Lu Zhengyu since she already had an affair with her boss. Maybe her boss didn't mind, or otherwise there must be a shocking secret behind those photos. Gu Ning only glanced at the pictures and she didn't watch the videos. It would be quite embarrassing if she watched the sex tape in public. Gu Ning put her phone away and kept on eating. After dinner, they stood up and walked out together. Coincidentally, Gu Ning saw Gu Qinxiang just as they walked into the hall, and there were three men with Gu Qinxiang. The moment Gu Ning saw Gu Qinxiang, Gu Qinxiang also noticed her. He felt embarrassed at this moment and didn't know what to do. In Gu Ning's eyes, Gu Qinxiang was merely a stranger now but she somehow wanted to forgive him when she saw his awkward face right now. The three men turned to look at Gu Ning as well, after seeing Gu Qinxiang's absent look. One of them recognized Gu Ning and walked to her with a smile. Hi, Miss Gu, what a coincidence. The man greeted Gu Ning politely. You probably don't remember me, but we've met before at the Su family's party. The man was very polite to Gu Ning, because he was impressed by her ability at the Su family's party last time. I do remember you, your director Tai, Gu Ning said with a smile. Hearing that, director Tai felt honored. It's my honor that Miss Gu didn't forget me. Hi, Uncle Tai, Su Anya said to director Tai because they were distant relatives. Hi, Anya, nice to see you again. I'm sorry I didn't see you, director Tai said at once. It's fine. Su Anya smiled. Did you come here for dinner? Miss Gu, would you mind if I paid the bill for you? Director Tai said. He did that not to please Gu Ning, but because he hoped to leave a good impression on Gu Ning because he wanted to make friends with her. Gu Ning was a very outstanding young businesswoman, and he didn't want to miss the chance to build a good relationship with her. Please don't. Xuan ya interrupted. Ning Ning must pay the bill today, because she's promised to buy us a great meal. Hearing that, Director Tai was surprised. Gu Ning laughed and said, Thank you so much, Director Tai, but I already paid the bill. All right, I hope we can see each other again in the future, Director Tai said. Since Gu Ning and Su Anya had an agreement, Director Tai didn't insist. After that, Gu Ning turned to look at Gu Qinxiang and called him with a cold face. Hi, Uncle Qinxiang. Director Tai was shocked when Gu Ning called Gu Qinxiang her uncle. Even though Chu Peihan knew that Gu Qinxiang was Gu Ning's uncle, she was surprised that Gu Ning was willing to greet him again. She had heard a lot about Gu Ning's family affairs, so she was aware that Gu Ning didn't like her uncle. Gu Qinxiang was more astonished than anyone in the hall when Gu Ning greeted him of her own accord. Oh, hi, Ning Ning, been a while, he said and looked awkward. He had totally changed his attitude towards Gu Ning after being through so many things and he also realized what he had done to her before was really unkind. Therefore, he felt embarrassed to see Gu Ning now. Miss Gu, is Mr. Gu your uncle? Director Tai asked. In fact, he came here today because Gu Qinxiang invited him to have dinner together, and they were going to talk about a construction project. If Gu Qinxiang was really Gu Ning's uncle, he would give Gu Qinxiang a chance. Yeah, he's my mother's biological older brother, Gu Ning said. Oh, I understand. Director Tai nodded. Director Tai, Uncle Qinxiang, I'm afraid I need to go now. See you, Gu Ning said and left. See you, Director Tai and Gu Qinxiang said. After that, Gu Ning walked outside with her friends. Once Gu Ning was gone, Director Tai said to Gu Qinxiang, Mr. Gu, I think we can talk further about the construction project we're going to work on with each other. Gu Qinxiang understood that Director Tai was willing to do that because of Gu Ning. He was Gu Ning's close relative, and Director Tai wanted to establish a good relationship with Gu Ning through him. If no accidents happened, he was going to get this project. Gu Qinxiang was excited and felt grateful to Gu Ning. He somehow had a feeling that Gu Ning greeted him in order to let Director Tai know their relationship so that he could benefit from it. 
It was the truth. Gu Ning was tired of hating him. She had a happy family now, and all the people she cared about were living a good life now, so she thought that it wasn't a bad idea to forgive some of her enemies. Gu Qinxiang had already changed, so there was no need for her to continue to hate him. Besides, Gu Qinxiang's family had received severe punishment because of what they had done before. Sure. Gu Qinxiang agreed with a broad smile, and they went to an elevator together. When they walked ahead, Gu Qinxiang turned around and glanced at Gu Ning. He had mixed emotions at this moment. Gu Ning and her friends soon left. Only she and Hao Ran drove here so they had two cars but they could accommodate them. The girls all sat in Gu Ning's car, while the boys shared Hao Rants. After that, they headed to a KTV bar. On the way, Gu Ning asked in Qian, Is Zheng Yu busy today? Yeah, and Qian said. Because Lu Zhengyu was the general manager, he was always occupied by work, especially these days. Is he going to meet the people who are responsible for the promo video? Gu Ning asked. And Qian understood what Gu Ning meant, and she said, No, he isn't. That night they enjoyed themselves. However, because they needed to attend classes tomorrow, they didn't stay out very late and went home at 11 p.m. Gu Ning drove and Qian home with her car. When they were alone, Gu Ning said to An Qian, I already found out Zhui Nin's dirty secret. Hearing that, An Qian got excited and asked in a hurry, What have you found out? Gu Ning then told An Qian the rough situation, because she hadn't found out many details yet. An Qian felt disgusted after knowing that Zhui Nin had an affair with her own boss. Since she's already her boss's mistress, why can't she leave Zheng Yu alone? Why would her boss allow her to do that? And Qian asked with confusion. I think that her boss probably doesn't care about it, or they must be doing it for a certain purpose. I need to talk to Zheng Yu about it first, Gu Ning said. Gu Ning wasn't an impulsive person, and she wouldn't threaten Zhu Yinin once she got evidence, because she didn't know whether Lu Zheng Yu had realized that there was something wrong with Zhu Yinin. If Lu Zhengyu was aware of the reason why Zhu Yinin kept bothering him and still stayed in touch with her, he must have his own plan. She might ruin Lu Zhengyu's plan if she went to see Zhu Yinin without his permission. And Qian nodded and agreed. Should we meet Zheng Yu now? Yes, call him right now, Gu Ning said. Sure, and Qian said and took out her phone. When she was about to call Lu Zhengyu, Lu Zhengyu called her first and she picked it up at once. Hi, Zheng Yu, are you free now? Yes, I just walked my client out, Lu Zhengyu said. How about you? Are you home yet? Do you need me to pick you up? He knew that An Qian left with Gu Ning. I'm on my way home. Since you're free now, can we meet each other right now? Gu Ning has something to tell you, An Qian said. No problem, where are you now? Lu Zhengyu asked. We can meet outside the block where you live, Gu Ning said when An Qian turned to look at her for the answer. They had almost reached An Qian's home now. An Qian then said to Lu Zhengyu on the phone, We can meet outside my home. No problem, Lu Zhengyu said. Then told his secretary to drive him to the block where An Qian lived. Because Lu Zhengyu drank tonight, he couldn't drive himself. Five minutes later, Gu Ning and An Qian arrived at the appointed place, and Lu Zhengyu came about three minutes later. Gu Ning told An Qian to call Lu Zhengyu to tell him to get in her car. Lu Zhengyu soon found Gu Ning's car and got in it. Hi, Miss Gu, what's wrong? Lu Zhengyu asked Gu Ning the second he closed the car door. Well, and Qian just told me that there's a woman named Zhu Yinin who won't leave you alone. And I wanted to help An Qian deal with the woman. Then I found out about her affair with her boss through amorous photos. It's abnormal that her boss would allow her to chase another man when she's his mistress. So I thought there must be something wrong with it. You should be careful, Gu Ning said. Hearing that, Lu Zhengyu was shocked. He didn't expect that Zhu Yinin would have an affair with her own boss. He felt disgusted afterwards. I haven't found anything wrong with Zhu Yinin yet, but I do think it's abnormal that our company suddenly let me be in charge of this ad. It should be Manager Qian's work, but our director gave the job to me without giving me a persuasive reason, Lu Zhengyu said. I also have a suspicion that they're scheming something. After all, business was a battlefield. Lu Zhengyu was also a manager in their company, and he had many bitter conflicts with manager Qian. 
They had often argued with each other in the company before. Manager Chan was supposed to be responsible for this ad, but the director suddenly gave this job to Lu Jingyu, which made him feel quite strange. However, he failed to find out the truth so he had to focus on his work. I think this project could be very complicated, Gu Ning said with a serious face. What should we do now? What do they want to do? Will Jing Yu be in danger? And Qian asked with anxiety. Relax, I can protect myself well, and I'll find out the truth as soon as possible. You don't need to worry about me. Lu Jing Yu comforted her at once. How can I not be worried? We have no idea what they're planning to do right now. And Qian said, Jing Yu, how's your relationship with the director? And how's the manager Qian's relationship with him? Gu Ning asked. She thought manager Qian and the director might be scheming together against Lu Jing Yu. You know we're all good actors in business and nobody knows other people's real thoughts. We seem to get along well with each other at work, but I do have bitter conflicts with manager Qian. Lu Jing Yu replied. If so, we need to investigate it. Jing Yu, if you don't mind, you can tell me the basic information about manager Qian and the director. I'll call you once I find out anything about their real relationship. If it has something to do with Zhu Yinin or her boss, I'll give the evidence of their affair to you as well, Gu Ning said. Since Lu Zheng Yu said that he failed to find out the truth within a short time, it meant that it wasn't easy for him to find out. However, they must find out the truth as soon as possible in case Lu Zheng Yu's enemies trapped him. That'll be much better. Thank you, Miss Gu. Lu Zheng Yu was cheered up because he could only rely on Gu Ning to help him. Since Gu Ning was able to find out Zhu Yinin's dirty secret, it wouldn't be difficult for her to find out the director's real relationship with manager Qian. After that, Lu Jingyu told Gu Ning their basic information before Gu Ning left. It was an emergency so Gu Ning called Kei when she was driving home and told him to help her deal with this problem. In order to find out the truth as soon as possible, Gu Ning briefly told Kei what had happened. It was very late at night, and Gu Ning arrived at Fenghua Luxury Mansion after a dozen minutes. When she got home, she took a bath and dried her hair before she went to lie down on her bed, but she didn't sleep right away. She was waiting for the result from Kay's investigation. Normally, Kay could finish the job she gave him within an hour if she wanted him to help her find out some information, and it would take him less time if the work wasn't difficult. After a few minutes, Gu Ning received Kay's call and Kay sent her an email. Gu Ning checked her emails at once and got what she wanted. The director indeed. Kay found an important document in the director's email box, and it said that the company made a decision to transfer the director to another affiliated company in another city, and Lu Jingyu would replace the director in City F. Although this director had received this email, the company hadn't made the announcement yet, so no one else was aware of it. Something happened later, and the project which should have been manager Qian's work suddenly fell into Lu Zhengyu's hands. Besides, the director frequently contacted manager Qian and Zhu Yinin these days. Even though Gu Ning still didn't know the specific reason why the director did it, she had enough evidence to figure out the truth. It was obvious that the director had an agreement with manager Qian to cause Lu Zhengyu trouble at this time, so that Lu Zhengyu wouldn't be smoothly promoted. In that case, manager Qian could replace him. Without delay, Gu Ning called Lu Jingyu. Lu Jingyu couldn't sleep after knowing that it could be a scheme behind his back. Therefore, when Gu Ning called him, he picked it up right away. Hi, Miss Gu, have you found anything? He asked in a hurry. Yeah, and it turns out to be a scheme which isn't a surprise, Gu Ning said. Your director just received an email saying that he'll be transferred to another city, and you will replace him but the official announcement won't be made until a few days later, so the director is working with manager Qian to cause you trouble. They don't want you to become the director. What? Lu Jingyu was greatly surprised. He couldn't believe that the director refused to tell him this news and even worked with manager Qian against him behind his back. Give me your email account, and I'll send what I found out to you. If you still need my help in the following days, feel free to let me know. Gu Ning said. She was going to leave it to Lu Zhengyu, but she was still willing to help him if he needed her help. Since Lu Zhengyu could become the director of a very famous company at such a young age, he had the ability to handle a crisis well. 
Gu Ning had Kay's help, so she was able to find out the document before Lu Zhengyu. Gu Ning believed that Lu Zhengyu could handle it without her in the following days. Thank you so much, Miss Gu. Lu Zhengyu thanked Gu Ning with sincerity. My pleasure, Gu Ning said. She was willing to help Lu Zhengyu for the sake of Enqian. Lu Zhengyu understood it too. After hanging up the call with Lu Zhengyu, Gu Ning received his message and she sent what she had found to his email box. Although Gu Ning already told Lu Zhengyu what she had found out, Lu Zhengyu was still mad when he read the email. Since he was aware of their purpose right now, he absolutely wouldn't allow them to fulfill it. He wanted a promotion with a higher salary, but he had never thought to get it by dirty means. The official announcement hadn't been made yet, but he had to be well prepared in case they successfully trapped him. After that, Lu Zhengyu called in Qian. At this time, and Qian was in her apartment thinking about what was happening to Lu Zhengyu. She knew that Gu Ning could help Lu Zhengyu, but she was still worried about him. Her phone was in her hand all the time, so she was able to pick up Lu Zhengyu's call the second he called her. When she heard about the scheme, she was furious at those who schemed against Lu Zhengyu behind his back. Because the official announcement about his promotion hadn't been made yet, Lu Zhengyu didn't tell An Qian that he could be the new director in their company. The next day, Gu Ning got up early to go run. Even though Gu Ning was improving her martial arts, she still needed to keep exercising. Many kinds of monsters and ghosts had appeared in her life these days, and Gu Ning didn't know what she would encounter in the future. In that case, she had to better herself in order to protect herself from danger. After running in the morning, Gu Ning got back to her home and took a bath. She then put on her school uniform and left for her school. Gu Ning hadn't worn her school uniform for a long time, and she almost forgot that she was still a high school student. She was going to meet Tao Jai at 9 a.m., so she would leave for her school at 8 a.m. that morning. Gu Ning drove her car to her school, because she needed it later. Although many teachers had a car in their school, Gu Ning thought that it wasn't appropriate to often borrow a car from her teacher. Besides, nobody was willing to lend his or her car to another person, unless it was absolutely necessary. Gu Ning finished her breakfast on her way to the school. Their school didn't allow random cars to enter it, so students had to park their cars in the nearby parking lot if they drove themselves to school. Therefore, Gu Ning left her car in the nearby parking lot before she walked into her school. However, once she showed up, many students recognized her. Jesus, isn't that Gu Ning? Yes. She finally came to school. I'm so excited to see her. She's the famous goddess Gu. I'm a big fan of hers. Gu. <coughs> they kept complimenting Gu Ning and even took photos of her. Gu Ning, on the other hand, didn't pay much attention to them and walked ahead alone. Coincidentally, Qin Zheng wasn't far away from her and was with his friends Fu Mingliang and Zhang Yiming. He heard the noise and turned to look at Gu Ning. The moment Qin Zheng saw Gu Ning, he was struck dumb. He was afraid to meet Gu Ning's eyes, so he pulled Zhang Yiming and Fu Mingliang while walking away. Gu Ning actually noticed them but didn't think that it was a big deal. Gu Xiaoxiao had been severely punished but Qin Zheng hadn't, but she didn't care about it right now because she was too busy recently. Qin Zheng kept a distance away from her anyway, so she didn't bother to waste time on him. After they walked far away, Zhang Yiming said, Change is the only constant, and the wheel of fortune turns. She became a billionaire within just half a year. It's so unbelievable. Yeah, I hope she won't pay us back for bullying her before, Fu Mingliang said in fear. They had hated and bullied Gu Ning before, but it was undeniable that they were scared of her and admired her right now. I don't think she'll pay us back because she could have done it a long time ago if she really wanted to do so, Zhang Yiming said. Qin Zheng had mixed emotions of fear and regret right now. Qin Zheng regretted hurting Gu Ning so badly before, because Gu Ning became very successful now. If she wanted to get revenge, it couldn't be easier. If he hadn't hurt Gu Ning like that before, he probably could have become rich too. Although he didn't know whether Gu Ning would have abandoned him, However, nothing could be changed now. Besides, the old Gu Ning really wasn't attractive, so it was hard for him to stay with her. Therefore, Qin Zheng stopped thinking too much about it. The more he thought about it, the worse he felt. 
Gu Ning was surrounded by compliments and admiration along her way to her classroom. She was like a superstar in their school. In fact, although Gu Ning wasn't a star, she was even more popular than a star. She was an excellent student and had saved many people's lives. Moreover, she became a successful businesswoman at an early age and now owned many profitable companies. No matter what trouble she had encountered before, she was able to handle it well and step steadily towards success. When some students wanted to take photos with Gu Ning, a female voice interrupted them. No way, Gu Ning, you're too noticeable to be ignored. It was Chu Peihan's voice, and Gu Ning couldn't be more familiar with it. Other people didn't recognize Chu Peihan's voice, but they saw her and immediately moved away to let her pass. Chu Peihan hadn't caused trouble recently, but she was notorious for her bad temper, so nobody wanted to mess with her. Chu Peihan understood that Gu Ning didn't mean to attract much attention, but it was unavoidable. Gu Ning was too noticeable to be ignored right now, so she was always the focus of people's attention. Gu Ning smiled and said, I can't do anything about it. Hey, why did they all move away once you showed up? Gu Ning asked Chu Peihan. Come on, there isn't anyone who hasn't heard of my name in this school, Chu Peihan said looking proud. She didn't feel ashamed of it at all. Gu Ning was amused but said nothing. She knew that Chu Peihan wasn't actually a rude girl, nor a bully. And even though Chu Peihan often fought with other students, she had a strong sense of justice. When Gu Ning and Chu Peihan walked away, several students came and they were greatly surprised by the scene. Gu Ning is a legendary figure of our school now. Isn't she? The principal talks about her every day. Ah, ah. Ooh. The teachers also had a good impression of Gu Ning. Under people's attention, Gu Ning and Chu Peihan walked into the teaching building together. Because it wasn't time for the morning reading class yet. Many students were chatting with each other in the passage. When they heard noises under the building, they ran to see what was happening. The second they saw Gu Ning, they got excited. Look, it's Gu Ning. She's back. Oh my goddess, Gu is here. I'm a big fan of hers. Ooh. Our boss is too influential, Hao Ran said, shaking his head. It's because she's too unbelievable, Qin Zixuan said. I'm so proud of our boss, Zhang Tianping said. Me too. Me too. Hao Ran and Qin Zixuan agreed in an instant. Although they knew that Gu Ning had many friends and they probably weren't very important in her eyes, they were real friends. Gu Ning also treated them with sincerity, so they felt honored. It was true that Gu Ning regarded them as her real friends, and she wouldn't hesitate to help them if they needed her help. Even if they couldn't become as successful as her in the future, she was willing to support them and help them live a good life. It wasn't easy to find real friends in a person's entire life, so Gu Ning cherished them. Gu Ning and Chu Peihan separated on the third floor. Most of the students stood at the door of the classroom and stared at Gu Ning with excitement. Come on, let's go into the classroom now. Gu Ning smiled at them. Her classmates moved aside at once to let her walk inside. Then they followed her. Wu Qingya and Yang Yulu, however, turned their heads away because they didn't dare to meet Gu Ning's eyes. Without Xiao Feifei's support, neither Wu Qingya nor Yang Yulu dared to act against Gu Ning now. After the morning reading class, Zhang Chihua went back to her office. She picked up Tao Jai's injury report, and she was ready to go to Tao Jai's school. Gu Ning already had an agreement with Zhang Chihua, and she was going to help Zhang Chihua with it. The principal allowed them to leave halfway through class because of Gu Ning's influence. Gu Ning then said to you, Mixi, Mixi, I need to deal with something, and I won't come back for the afternoon classes, but I'll dine with you at noon. What? Why? Yu Mixi was surprised. Gu Ning just came for the morning reading class, and now she was leaving again. Anyway, since Gu Ning needed to deal with something in person, Yu Mixi knew that it had to be important. Afterwards, Gu Ning left with the other students staring at her back. Without delay, she went to Zhang Chihua's office. In the office, Wang Qingqi and Zhang Yuan were there too, and their eyes lit up when Gu Ning appeared. Good morning, Professor Wang and Professor Jiang. Gu Ning politely greeted them. Good morning, Gu Ning. Wang Qingqi and Jiang Yuan smiled at her. 
Zhang Chihua quickly packed her stuff up, and then they left together. Once Gu Ning and Zhang Chihua were gone, Wang Qingqi and Zhang Yuan began to talk about them. Both of them wished that Gu Ning was their student. When Zhang Chihua and Gu Ning walked out together, many students turned to look at them, but none of the students dared to greet them. However, although they didn't dare to greet Zhang Chihua and Gu Ning, they talked about them once they walked away. Hey, I just saw Gu Ning walking out with Professor Zhang. Does anyone know what they're going to do? Really? Where did they go? No idea. They must be leaving to deal with something together. Yeah, it must be something important. Do you know what they're going to deal with? No idea. <coughs> Yumixi didn't know that Gu Ning left with their head teacher until then, but she didn't know the reason either. However, no matter what happened, Yumixi believed that Gu Ning was able to handle it well. Zhang Chihua and Gu Ning went to the nearby parking lot, and they went straight to Tao Jai school. When Gu Ning and Zhang Chihua set off, it was already 8.05 a.m. About 20 minutes later, they finally arrived at the number 2 middle school. Gu Ning parked her car before she walked in with Zhang Chihua. It was time for class and outsiders weren't allowed to go inside. But Zhang Chihua was the parent of a student who studied there, so she was permitted to enter the school. Zhang Chihua called Tao Jai's head teacher, whose surname was Yen afterwards. Ms. Yen had told Zhang Chihua to call her once they arrived, so Zhang Chihua did it without hesitation. Ms. Yen then told them to meet her at the Office of Student Affairs. At 8.40 a.m., Gu Ning and Zhang Chihua arrived at the Office of Student Affairs. The dean, Ms. Yen, and a man around 30 years old were in the office. The man was Mr. Wang, who was the head teacher of the girl who had bullied Tao Jai. However, the girl's parents hadn't shown up yet. The dean was a slightly fat man in his early 50s who didn't look like a snobbish person. Before Gu Ning and Zhang Chihua came, Ms. Yen told the dean that Gu Ning had a good relationship with the director of the central hospital and that she believed that Gu Ning's family was very powerful. Accordingly, when Gu Ning and Zhang Chihua came, the dean had to be kind to them. Nice to see you, Professor Zhang and Miss Gu. Nice to see you too, Mr. Yang, Zhang Chihua said and sat down, followed by Gu Ning. Mr. Yang was the dean of this middle school. Ms. Yen poured two cups of tea for Gu Ning and Zhang Chihua when they seated themselves. Something which if they were ordinary people, Ms. Yen wouldn't bother to do. I've already learned what has happened, but we still need to wait for the girl's parents to deal with this problem, Mr. Yang said. Mr. Yang wasn't a bad person, nor was he a good man, because he would definitely side himself with power if he had the choice, but he would become fair when one was not more powerful than the other. It was understandable given that people were selfish. Nobody wanted to act against power. It was the cruel fact of this society that ordinary people had no advantage before powerful people. Sure. Zhang Chihua nodded. She knew that she needed to talk about this with the girl's parents. During this time, Mr. Yang kept glancing at Gu Ning with curiosity. He felt that Gu Ning looked familiar, but couldn't remember where he had seen her face before. In fact, Gu Ning was the most popular person in City F now, and many TV channels were broadcasting news about her, so it wasn't strange that Mr. Yang felt that she looked familiar. Gu Ning noticed Mr. Yang's movement but she said nothing. After observing for a while, Mr. Yang couldn't help but ask, Miss Gu, may I know your full name and what do you do now? No offense, I just feel that you look very familiar. Hearing that, Gu Ning understood why he always glanced at her. She smiled and said, My name's Gu Ning, and I'm a senior student in the number three high school. Professor Zhang is my head teacher. Gu Ning. Mr. Yang got excited in an instant. Were you the champion in the national math competition this year? It was a big piece of news when Gu Ning won the first prize in City F, and the whole city felt proud of her. When Mr. Yang went to have a meeting at the Education Bureau, his leader also talked about it. In addition, his leader talked about many other things concerning Gu Ning too. They all knew that Gu Ning was now a successful businesswoman. Gu Ning had attended the birthday party held by the Su family as well, and she was a friend of many important officials of City F. Most importantly, Gu Ning had saved Miss Su's life, so she was the Su family's lifesaver. 
because the head of the Education Bureau had shown up at the party too. He knew it very well. Although Mr. Yang hadn't heard much about Gu Ning, he had a deep impression of her. Ms. Yen and Mr. Wang were greatly surprised when they found out that Gu Ning was the girl who had won the first prize of the national math competition. However, Ms. Yen and Mr. Wang weren't aware of what else Gu Ning had achieved. Yeah, it's me, Gu Ning said. With Gu Ning's affirmative answer, Mr. Yang abruptly stood up. He walked towards Gu Ning and said, Miss Gu, I'm so sorry that I didn't recognize you just then. I've heard a lot about you. You're really unbelievable. Mr. Yang showed great respect because he understood that Gu Ning was an important figure. Ms. Yen and Mr. Wang, however, was shocked. It was obvious that Gu Ning wasn't an ordinary girl given Mr. Yang's attitude towards her. Nevertheless, even though they were curious, it wasn't a good time to ask about it. Gu Ning stood up too. Thank you so much for your compliment. Miss Gu, please have a seat. Mr. Yang told Gu Ning to seat herself when he saw her stand up. Gu Ning listened to him and sat down. After that, they chatted with each other for a while till 9 a.m. Although the appointed time was 9 a.m., the girl's father didn't show up until it was only two minutes away from 9 a.m. The girl's father wasn't late, but he looked very impolite and arrogant. He was a middle-aged man who was in his early 40s. When he walked inside, Mr. Yang stood up to greet him. Chairman Xiao, nice to see you again. Please have a seat. Mr. Yang was polite to Chairman Xiao, but his attitude towards him was still obviously different from that towards Gu Ning. In Ms. Yan's and Mr. Wang's eyes, it meant that Gu Ning was more important than Chairman Xiao. Chairman Zhao's full name was Xiao Mingshan. He was the chairman of a large company with over a hundred million yuan in assets. There weren't many people with a fortune in City F, and Xiao Mingshan's older uncle was a senior official in the government. Therefore, if Gu Ning was from an ordinary family, Mr. Yang would side with Xiao Mingshan without doubt. However, he didn't dare to do that right now after knowing about Gu Ning's influence. In addition, it was Xiao Mingshan's daughter's fault this time. Hi, nice to see you again. Xiao Mingshan greeted Mr. Yang, but he didn't sit down right away. Instead, he turned to look at Gu Ning and Zhang Qiuhua. Mr. Wang had called him yesterday, and he was curious to know who dared to seek justice for Tao Jai. Xiao Mingshan was an influential figure in City F, but there were still a lot of people who were more important than him, so he came in person in case he offended someone he shouldn't mess with that he was the same type of person as Mr. Yang, who yielded in front of those who were more powerful than him. If Gu Ning was more powerful than him, he would apologize and pay the compensation. However, if Tao Jai didn't have powerful support, he would simply send his secretary to deal with this problem. In fact, Xiao Mingshan was annoyed at his daughter's inappropriate behavior, and he also warned his daughter not to bully other students again. Surprisingly, when Xiao Mingshan's sight fell on Gu Ning, he looked shocked. And Miss Gu. It was obvious that he knew Gu Ning. Gu Ning stood up and stared at Xiao Mingshan. Hi, Chairman Xiao. It turned out that Gu Ning and Chairman Xiao had met each other before at the birthday party held by the Su family before. Miss Gu, what a surprise! Xiao Mingshan said. He was very polite towards Gu Ning because Gu Ning had much more powerful connections than him. Ms. Yen and Mr. Wang were amazed by Xiao Mingshan's attitude towards Gu Ning. They were even more curious to find out Gu Ning's family background now. I'm afraid it isn't a pleasant meeting this time, Gu Ning said. Hearing that, Xiao Mingshan felt embarrassed. He understood that Gu Ning came here to support Tao Jai today, while his daughter had bullied Tao Jai. Since Gu Ning came here in person, he had to apologize to them. I'm so sorry for what my daughter did to Tao Jai. Miss Gu and Tao Jai's mother, please accept my sincere apologies. We won't abdicate the responsibility, and I'll tell my daughter to apologize to Tao Jai face to face. Xiao Mingshan took it very seriously, and he promised that it wouldn't happen again. Mr. Yang wasn't surprised by Xiao Mingshan's attitude because he knew how influential Gu Ning was. Ms. Yen and Mr. Wang, however, were greatly surprised. Although they already had a feeling that Gu Ning wasn't an ordinary girl, they thought that Xiao Mingshan apologized too fast and without arguing at all. 
Even Zhang Xiuhua, who knew that Gu Ning could handle it well, was surprised. Xiao Mingshan's daughter was Xiao Bei Bei, and she was scared of her father. Even though she was unwilling to apologize to Tao Jai, she didn't dare to behave against her father. Zhang Chihua stood up at this time. Chairman Xiao, since you're willing to apologize and pay the compensation, I don't think we still need to argue about it, but I still hope that you can have a look at my daughter's injury report. I'm afraid that what your daughter has done to my daughter might leave a scar in my daughter's heart. Xiao Mingshan had heard of Tao Jai's injuries from Mr. Wang, but he still took the injury report out of politeness. He definitely did that for Gu Ning's sake. When Xiao Mingshan read the report, he was displeased again, because the injuries were all caused by his daughter. As for the medical fee, it was nothing in Xiao Mingshan's eyes. Mrs. Tao, can I visit your daughter someday? Xiao Mingshan asked Zhang Chihua. He thought that it would be better if he visited Tao Jai in person. Sure, my daughter is recovering at home now, Zhang Chihua said. In that case, this problem was perfectly solved without causing any more trouble or argument, so it wasn't necessary for Gu Ning to play the surveillance camera Kay gave her. They said goodbye to Mr. Yang later and left together. Once they were gone, Ms. Yen asked Mr. Yang with curiosity, Is the girl very influential? Why is Chairman Xiao afraid of her? Gu Ning is much more influential than you can imagine. Mr. Yang then told them what he knew about Gu Ning. Jesus, she's so unbelievable. I don't know what to say right now. Xiao Mingshan's car was parked outside the school, so they walked out together. They soon arrived at the parking lot and drove towards Zhang Chihua's home. On the way, Xiao Mingshan told Xiao Beibei to be polite and kind to Tao Jai when she apologized to her. Xiao Beibei pouted with annoyance, but she had to listen to her father. Gu Ning at the same time told Zhang Chihua to inform Tao Jai with a call. After taking the pill Gu Ning gave her, Tao Jai was much better now, but she still needed to pretend to be injured and lie in her bed when Xiao Beibei and Xiao Mingshan came. It was because of Gu Ning's magical pills that Tao Jai could recover now, so it was understandable that Gu Ning told her to act a little right now. If Xiao Mingshan saw Tao Jai well and fine after only a day, he would think that they were lying to him. Tao Jai's father was on a business trip yesterday, but he came back today and stayed home with Tao Jai. Therefore, Tao Jai told her father that they would have several guests that Ji Yuning and Xiao Mingshan stop their cars under the building where Zhang Chihua's family lived. When Xiao Mingshan got out of his car, he opened the trunk and took out many boxes of expensive gifts. Mr. Wang had told him that Tao Jai had powerful support behind her, so he had prepared many gifts to show his sincerity. Proved that he did the right thing. Xiao Mingshan wasn't dumb, and he knew what he should do to get himself an advantage. Chairman Xiao, you didn't need to do that. Zhang Chihua was surprised the second she saw the gifts in Xiao Mingshan's hands. She didn't know when Xiao Mingshan had prepared so many gifts in his car, but soon figured it out. It must have been Mr. Wang who had told him to be well prepared. Xiao Mingshan was a successful businessman after all. Mrs. Tao, it's nothing, Xiao Mingshan said with a smile. Zhang Chihua then said nothing. After that, she guided Gu Ning, Xiao Mingshan, and Xiao Beibei to her home. Tao Jai's father welcomed them once they showed up. Zhang Chihua already told her husband that Xiao Mingshan was very kind and polite, so her husband didn't seem mad. Although Xiao Mingshan behaved politely because of Gu Ning, Zhang Chihua was still satisfied with his attitude. After they were all seated, Xiao Mingshan apologized to Tao Jai's father again. Without delay, he brought Xiao Beibei to apologize to Tao Jai in Tao Jai's room. Because Xiao Beibei had bullied Tao Jai, Tao Jai looked scared when she saw Xiao Beibei. However, Xiao Beibei didn't dare to bully her again from now on. At the beginning, Xiao Beibei hesitated to apologize to Tao Jai, but Xiao Mingshan gave her a warning look, which scared her. I'm sorry, Tao Ji A. I shouldn't have bullied you, and it's my fault. Could you please forgive me this time? She said. Xiao Mingshan taught Xiao Beibei to say that in case Xiao Beibei didn't know how to apologize. Although Xiao Beibei sounded reluctant, nobody paid much attention to it. Sure, Tao Jai said. Afterwards, Xiao Mingshan took out an envelope and gave it to Tao Jai's father. 
Mr. Tao, there is 30,000 yuan inside, which is Jai's medical fee and mental damage compensation. I also put my name card in it. If you need my help, please feel free to contact me. 30,000 yuan was a lot, and it was more than enough to pay Tao Jai's medical fee. Tao Jai had a slight concussion, but it wasn't a serious problem. As for the mental damage compensation, 10,000 yuan was actually enough. Xiao Mingshan gave them 30,000 yuan for the sake of Gu Ning. Nevertheless, nobody was aware that Gu Ning's magical pills were much more expensive. A single magical pill cost at least a million yuan. Gu Ning gave Tao Jai a magical pill for free, because she knew that Tao Jai's family couldn't afford it. Thanks. Tao Jai's father took the envelope because his family needed it. Xiao Mingshan was a busy businessman, so he didn't stay in Tao Jai's home for long. After paying the fee, he left with Xiao Beibei. Gu Ning and Zhang Chihua also went back to their school. Before Gu Ning left, Tao Jai's father repeatedly thanked her. If it hadn't been for Gu Ning, this problem wouldn't have been solved so smoothly. Because it went smoothly, it didn't take Gu Ning and Zhang Chihua very long. When they got back to their school, all the students were in the middle of the third class. Gu Ning was unwilling to interrupt her teacher and classmates, so she went to have a rest in Zhang Chihua's office. Only Gu Ning dared to do that, because other students all stayed far away from their head teachers. Gu Ning went back to the classroom once the third class was over. The moment Gu Ning showed up in the classroom, her classmates turned to ask her with concern. Hey Gu Ning, we saw you walking out with our head teacher. What did you leave to do? Why did you leave together with our head teacher? Gu Ning understood that they cared about her so she explained. We left to deal with something together, but it's already done. She didn't bother to tell them details, and the other students didn't ask further either. No matter what it was, it was done now. Even though Gu Ning didn't want to talk about her relationship with their head teacher, her classmates refused to leave, and they surrounded Gu Ning to compliment her. As Gu Ning's deskmate, Yu Mixi almost went crazy. Gu Ning also felt a little annoyed, but she knew that her classmates were kind people, so she said nothing about it. Luckily, the next class soon began and they left at once. Ning Ning, my eardrums almost broke. Yu Mixi complained. Gu Ning felt embarrassed and touched her nose. Sorry, I'll tell them not to do that again. She couldn't tolerate it either. The National College entrance examination was around the corner now, so they all focused on their studies once the class began. Although Gu Ning was the top one student in her grade, she hadn't had classes for a long time, so she also needed to review for the exam. Gu Ning had an unbelievable memory, but it would only give her a big advantage after she read her textbooks. Zhang Chihua knew that Gu Ning was an excellent student, but she was worried about Gu Ning's studies too, given that Gu Ning had been absent from classes for such a long time. Accordingly, she kept asking Gu Ning to answer her questions during the class. To her surprise, Gu Ning could always give her perfect answers. Gu Ning's classmates were impressed too. Even though Gu Ning was as outstanding as usual, none of her classmates was jealous of her. Instead, they all admired her. After the class, Gu Ning and Yu Mixi left the classroom and went to meet Mu Ku and Chu Pei Han. They gathered together with their friends and left for the canteen. When other students saw them along the way, they were envious of their close relationship with Gu Ning. Oh, Ning Ning, my family is going to move into a new apartment after the National College entrance examination. So my mother told me to invite you all to share a meal together at my new home, Yu Mixi said to Gu Ning. Apartments in Jehua Garden were available on the market now, but it took time for the decoration and furnishing. Although Nguang Guangyao had finished the furnishing and decoration for Yu Mixi's family, it still needed another three months to air the apartment. Therefore, they couldn't move in until June. Sure. Gu Ning said. How about your relatives? Have they caused your family more trouble these days? Gu Ning asked Yu Mixi. Nope, they're very quiet, Yu Mixi said. Glad to know that. Gu Ning smiled. Yu Mixi's relatives were a heavy burden on her family. Don't worry. If they dare to cause your family trouble again, we can help you and teach them an unforgettable lesson, Muka said. Exactly. Hao Ran and the others agreed. On their way to the canteen, Gu Ning and her friends heard many students talking about her. 
Isn't she Gu Ning? I've heard a lot about her, but I can't believe it. I don't think she's able to be so successful at such an early age without playing some dirty tricks. It was a girl who was bad-mouthing Gu Ning. She was impressed by Gu Ning in some aspects, but she refused to believe the other things achieved by Gu Ning. It was not only Gu Ning who heard it, but also Chu Pei Han and the others, and they were mad at once. They were very familiar with Gu Ning's personality, and they knew that Gu Ning was an independent and strong girl. The girl was scared by Chu Pei Han's angry look and closed her mouth, but she still believed what she chose to believe. It's fine. Gu Ning stopped her friends from arguing with the girl. Is she an idiot or something? Qin Zixuan said in anger. Actually, Gu Ning indeed had something other people didn't have to help her succeed. It was the telepathic eye space, which was Gu Ning's secret. However, the girl obviously attacked Gu Ning because she thought that Gu Ning had sold her body for money or fame. How could someone be so dumb in today's society? If anyone doesn't know how to behave themselves, we can teach them if they need a lesson. Muka said loudly so that everyone around them was able to hear him. He meant to let other students know that Gu Ning had their support and that Gu Ning wasn't weak at all now. Other students around them agreed with him. No matter what Gu Ning had done to gain her success today, she had become successful as she wanted. The girl who had badmouthed Gu Ning behind Gu Ning's back felt frightened and quickly walked away. She probably wasn't clear about Gu Ning's family background, but Gu Ning's friends couldn't be clearer about it now. Gu Ning was Master Tang's biological granddaughter, and her boyfriend was the famous Lord Lung in the capital. Nobody in this country wanted to mess with her. A few minutes later, Gu Ning and her friends arrived at the canteen. At the same time in City B, Zhang Zhe planned to see Zhao Fulin personally, but he thought that Zhao Fulin wouldn't be willing to see him, and he didn't want Zhang Yani to know about it. Therefore, Zhang Zhe made an excuse and refused to dine with Zhang Yani that afternoon before he asked one of his acquaintances to call Zhao Fulin to go out and meet in the woods. The acquaintance didn't know what had happened between Zhao Fulin and Zhang Zhe, so he agreed. Since he called Zhao Fulin to talk about something with her, Zhao Fulin didn't think further and agreed to see him. However, when she walked to the appointed place and saw Jiang Ze, she realized what was happening and turned around to leave without hesitation. Jiang Ze ran to stop her at once. Move! Zhao Fulin sounded very cold. Fulin, could you please listen to me? Jiang Ze said in a hurry. Why? I already told you that there is nothing to talk about between us. Please stay away from me. Zhang Yani coldly said. When she wanted to walk away from Zhang Ze, Zhang Ze stopped her again. Fulin, you're my real love, but Zhang Yani kept badmouthing you behind your back. I believed her words back then, so I had a bad impression of you. I later found out that she was lying to me on purpose. You're totally not the kind of person she described. Can you give me another chance? Zhang Ze said that to Zhao Fulin because he wasn't afraid that Zhao Fulin might tell Zhang Yani. If Zhao Fulin believed him and accepted him again, it wouldn't matter even if Zhang Yani found out. If Zhao Fulin still refused to accept him, he would deny what he had said to her. Zhang Ze was really a selfish man. Zhao Fulin was surprised when Zhang Ze told her that. She knew that there was a secret relationship between Zhang Yani and Zhang Ze, but she didn't know why Zhang Yani had betrayed her. To her astonishment, Zhang Yani had criticized her like that in front of Jiang Ze. However, given what Jiang Ze had done to her before, she wasn't sure whether she should trust him right now. No matter what, it was meaningless in her eyes because she already gave them up. Jiang Ze, I don't care whether it's true or not, because it's meaningless in my eyes now. I won't tell Zhang Yani anything about our conversation. You didn't seize the chance to be my boyfriend and so be it. Zhang Yani said and continued to walk ahead. Fulin, do you have to be so cold-blooded? Zhang Ze seemed hurt and stopped Zhao Fulin once more. He felt sad, not because Zhao Fulin refused to accept him, but because he might lose a lot if Zhao Fulin didn't give him another chance. In his eyes, Zhao Fulin's family wealth could be his one day if he could marry Zhao Fulin. Unfortunately, he lost this great chance to become rich and successful because of Zhang Yani. Even though he blamed Zhang Yani for everything, he didn't dare to argue with her right now. Zhang Ze was simply a freeloader. I'm cold-blooded? How could you say that? 
We're merely schoolmates from the beginning to the end, Zhao Fulin said. Zhang Zhe, if you keep insulting me, I'll call the police. Hearing that, Zhang Zhe was scared and let Zhao Fulin walk away without stopping her again. Zhao Fulin rolled her eyes at him and left at once. Zhang Zhe was reluctant to give up, but he could do nothing about it right now. In City F, Gu Ning and her friends walked together to the woods after lunch to cool themselves down because of the hot weather. During these days, Gu Ning went to school like every other student and she sometimes talked with Lung Shouting on the phone. Lung Shouting was very busy recently, so he didn't have much time to contact Gu Ning. The National College entrance examination was about four days later. All of a sudden, Gu Ning received Li Maosong's call on her way to the canteen. E. Uncle Li. Guam Ning Said. Ms. Gu, help, help. Li Maosong sounded terrified on the phone. What happened? Gu Ning got anxious. I'm in Shaoli Village, a small village in County X, City G right now, and there is a large cave. We encountered a python in it and Guo Yang was bitten by it. Zhang Quan and I have successfully escaped, but Guo Yang and Sun Chao are still missing. I don't know whether they're still alive, so I have to turn to you for help. Saying that, Li Maosong almost cried. It seemed to be an emergency. Guo Yang and Sun Chao were his close brothers, and he was worried about their safety. Gu Ning was able to kill a zombie, so it couldn't be difficult for her to deal with a python. So Li Maosong called Gu Ning as soon as possible. I'll be right there, but I'm in City F now. I can't take a plane because it's too slow, so I'll drive myself. I think I can arrive at City G in about two hours, Gu Ning said. She was willing to help them out. Li Maosong and the other men had risked their lives with her before, so she couldn't abandon them when they were in danger. Even though the National College entrance examination was only a few days away, she believed that she could handle it well. It only took an hour to get to City G from City F by plane, but she wasn't sure whether she could get the earliest plane ticket right away. Even if she could, she had to spend at least half an hour on the way to the airport, and she would probably have to spend more time waiting for the earliest flight. Anyway, she would rather drive a car on her own. Normally, it took about two to three hours to get to City G from City F by a car, but Gu Ning would speed up and get there within two hours. Thanks. Li Maosong felt quite relieved when he heard that Gu Ning was coming. If you come from City F, you don't need to enter City G, but stop at County X. There is a small road outside County X, and you can arrive at Xiaoli Village by walking down it about five kilometers to the right. No problem, I'm on my way. Gu Ning said and hung up the call. Boss, what happened? Gu Ning's friends asked her once she finished the call. They heard that Gu Ning was going to City G right away but didn't know why, so they were worried about her. There's an emergency so I must go to City G right now, Gu Ning said and left them behind without explaining it further. Chu Pei Han and the others couldn't stop her, so they watched her leaving. I hope it won't affect the National College entrance examination, Hao Ran said. Yeah. Other people agreed. The National College entrance examination was a very important exam in their life, so they had to take it seriously. While Gu Ning walked out of the school quickly, she called the principal. The principal didn't think that it was a good idea if Gu Ning left right before the National College entrance examination, but Gu Ning told him that it was an emergency, so the principal agreed in the end. After that, Gu Ning called her head teacher Zhang Chihua. Since the principal already allowed her to leave, Zhang Chihua said nothing. Gu Ning drove to her school every day recently so her car was parked right outside. The second she got in it, she drove towards City G as fast as she could. Along the way, she was caught by many traffic cameras. Gu Ning understood that she broke the speed limit and that her driving license might be revoked, but she had to do it in order to save her friends' lives. After she got on the freeway, there was less traffic and Gu Ning accelerated without hesitation. She was simply having a drag race. Many people were amazed by her driving skills, but a lot of people were swearing at her too. Some thought that it was very cool, but others thought that it was very dangerous and they were scared when Gu Ning's car overtook theirs. It was indeed quite frightening to be overtaken by a fast-moving car on short notice. When Gu Ning almost reached the freeway of County X, a Lamborghini was driving fast on the road, 
but Gu Ning easily overtook it and left it far behind, which shocked its driver. What the F asterisk CK? A young man was greatly surprised and couldn't believe his eyes. He sped up at once trying to chase Gu Ning. He was driving a sports car which was supposed to run faster than a Land Rover, but he still failed to catch up to Gu Ning. SH asterisk T. How can a Land Rover be better than a sports car? The young man was annoyed. Gu Ning obviously saw the sports car behind her, but she didn't care about it, nor pay much attention to it. After one and a half an hour, Gu Ning arrived at the entrance of the freeway of County X. However, the sports car wouldn't leave Gu Ning. When Gu Ning left the freeway, it followed her without delay. Gu Ning didn't think that it was a coincidence, and the young man must be mad at her behavior so he followed her. She had to stop at a narrow road outside County X to see what the young man wanted because she didn't want him to continue to follow her. Once Gu Ning stopped her car, the young man stopped his in front of Gu Ning's. Then he got out of it and walked to Gu Ning. He was a handsome young man about 20 years old who looked to be a college student. Gu Ning also left her car and asked him, Why are you following me? The young man was stunned the moment he saw Gu Ning. To his astonishment, Gu Ning was a gorgeous girl who looked even younger than him. Tell me why did you follow me? Gu Ning asked again with impatience. The young man explained in a hurry. Please don't misunderstand me. I don't want to offend you, but I'm curious to know how you can drive a Land Rover faster than my sports car. Gu Ning said. It's not a big deal in my eyes. Can you stop following me? Well, my name's Lin Fei and I live in City G. Can we make friends? The young man was unwilling to miss this great chance to make friends with someone who was far better than him. Some people might be jealous of those who were more outstanding than them, because they couldn't accept the fact that they weren't the best. Nevertheless, some people thought that it wasn't a bad thing to be friends with those who were better than them. Lin Fei was obviously the latter kind of person. Gu Ning saw that he was a very nice person, so she gave him her name card. I'm sorry, but I need to deal with an emergency right now and I can't waste a second. Could you please stop following me? You can contact me tomorrow, all right? Sure. Lin Fei nodded. He had no intention to bother Gu Ning. After that, Gu Ning got back in her car and drove away. Lin Fei didn't follow her this time. After Gu Ning drove away, Lin Fei stayed at the same place, staring at Gu Ning's name car de Yu Ning. He somehow felt that this name was very familiar and he must have heard of it somewhere before. However, Lin Fei couldn't remember it right now so he stopped thinking about it. He got in his car and drove back home. Gu Ning still drove as fast as she could to get to Xiaoli village. Li Maosong was already waiting for her at the entrance. He looked anxious because Gu Ning hadn't shown up for a long time. Gu Ning parked her car and walked to Li Maosong without hesitation. E? Mi Guam. Li Maosong's eyes lit up the second he saw Gu Ning. Gu Ning got there much faster than he thought she would. They didn't chat with each other before Li Maosong guided Gu Ning to the cave. On the way, Gu Ning didn't ask anything about it, but Li Maosong explained it to her of his own accord. My family lived in this small village in the past, but we moved away a long time ago to the county and we seldom came back here, especially after my parents passed away. I only come back here on the anniversary of my parents' death. Yesterday was the anniversary of my father's death, so my close brothers came back here along with me. We heard from villagers that many people come to the cave for an adventure, so we were curious to find out what's in it. We went there this morning together, but unexpectedly encountered a large python and the accident happened. Nobody knew why outside people came here to have an adventure before the truth came out. They could only hope that Guo Yang and Sun Chao were still fine. As long as they could survive, Gu Ning would be able to save their lives. Gu Ning and Li Maosong walked fast, but the cave was far away, so it took them dozens of minutes to get there. The cave was halfway up the mountainside, so the road was rocky and steep. This cave isn't accessible. Some kids often came here to have fun when we were young, but they were always injured or killed by falling into the cave, so not many people dared to come here afterwards, Li Maosong said. Zhao Jiangquan waited outside the cave, and he was excited to see Gu Ning too. They believed that Gu Ning could handle everything. 
Guo Yang was bitten by the python, and they hoped that the python wasn't poisonous so that Gu Ning would have enough time to rescue Guo Yang. Miss Gu, Zhao Jiangquan greeted her when Gu Ning walked towards him. Hi, nice to see you again, Gu Ning said. How far did you get into the cave when you had the accident? It's very deep, and we had walked for about an hour when we had the accident. There is a cavern about 20 square meters large and a small pond. The python came out of the pond, Zhao Jiangquan said. The structure of the cave is super complicated with many forks. Great, you can wait outside, I'll go inside alone, Gu Ning said before she got into it. Although Li Maosong and Zhao Jiangquan were slightly worried about Gu Ning's safety, they understood that they shouldn't burden her. Once Gu Ning walked inside, she took out her night luminescent pearl to light the cave up and used her jade eyes to lead the way. Because the cave was very dark, it was hard for Gu Ning to light a long way ahead with a night luminescent pearl. Besides, the python and Guo Yang were far away from her right now, so she could see nothing at this moment. Gu Ning didn't walk slowly, but instead ran. She needed to save as much time as possible in order to rescue Guo Yang. Before long, she reached the cavern and pond, but there were three branch roads around them, including the one she came from. Along the way, Gu Ning didn't see Guo Yang, nor the python. She thought that Guo Yang might have been dragged into the pond by the python. Thinking of that, Gu Ning used her jade eyes to see the bottom of the pond. Even though the pond didn't seem large, it was very deep and its bottom reached very far. Gu Ning failed to find the python under the water, so she thought that the python probably swam to somewhere else, so she had to keep on looking for it. Luckily, there were traces left by the python on one of the three branch roads, so Gu Ning decided to chase it. However, right when Gu Ning was about to do that, she heard noises from the cave. She used her jade eyes at once and saw a large long creature moving fast towards her direction. Since the python, she needed to deal with it first. Within seconds, the python showed up in the cavern with its mouth wide open. It attacked Gu Ning without delay and its eyes were full of greed. Gu Ning understood that it did that because of her night luminescent pearl. When the python appeared, Gu Ning had a close look at it and she noticed that there was no blood in its mouth, which meant that Guo Yang and Sun Chao couldn't be in its belly now. It was the best result she could expect. Anyway, Guo Yang was seriously injured, and she had to find him as soon as possible. Therefore, Gu Ning let the Jiao out to fight against the python. Although the python was large, it looked much smaller than the Jiao. When the python saw the Jiao, it was scared and withdrew in fear. Zhao, kill it now, I need to find my friend, Gu Ning said. Sure, master, Zhao said and Gu Ning left without delay. Once Gu Ning left, the cavern was full of darkness again. But it wasn't a problem for the python and the Zhao. The python wanted to escape, but it was impossible in front of the Zhao. The Zhao wrapped it up with its tail so it failed to run away. The python was very threatening before an ordinary person or even a soldier, but it was too weak compared with the Zhao. Before long, the python was swallowed by the Jiao. Gu Ning, at the same time, finally found Sun Chao and Guoyang after searching for them for five minutes. There was a small stream ten meters away from Gu Ning, and a waterfall stood ahead of it. Inside the waterfall there was a space that could accommodate three or four people, and Guoyang and Sun Chao were hiding in it. The water flowed violently, so it was hard to see the space with a pair of ordinary eyes. Although Gu Ning found them, she couldn't see their conditions clearly. She only saw Sun Chao's body moving, which meant that he was fine, but she wasn't sure whether Guo Yang was still alive. Gu Ning didn't have much time to think about it. The second she saw them, she ran to rescue them. Hey, Uncle Sun, it's Gu Ning. I know you're behind the waterfall. How's the Yang now? Gu Ning shouted to Sun Chao. Miss Gu. Sun Chao had heard the noise from outside but he thought it was the python, so he didn't dare to show his face. Therefore, when he heard Gu Ning's voice, he was thrilled. If Gu Ning came, it meant that Guo Yang's life could be saved. Sun Chao had that idea because Guo Yang was still alive. Guo Yang survived, but he was seriously injured. Luckily, the python wasn't poisonous, so Guo Yang remained alive till now. Without hesitation, Sun Chao carried Guo Yang in his arms and walked out. Gu Ning stepped over to help him at once, 
Because Sun Chao had already seen Gu Ning's night luminescent pearl before, he wasn't surprised this time. Yang is still alive, but he's dying. Miss Gu, can you rescue him? Sun Chao asked. Probably. Gu Ning didn't give him an affirmative answer, because she wasn't sure whether she could do it. Sun Chao also understood that Guo Yang was in a very dangerous situation now. No matter what happened to Guo Yang, Sun Chao had to accept the result. The moment Gu Ning's hand touched Guo Yang, she secretly put her magical power into his body. She seized Guo Yang's hand in hers the entire time to help him recover. Sun Chao stayed aside and let Gu Ning do whatever she needed to do. Gu Ning held the night luminescent pearl with another hand. Afterwards, she put it down and took out a box from her backpack. Uncle Sun, please open it for me. There are two bottles of medicine inside. The white one is solid and you should take a pill first before you help Yang take one. The blue one is liquid. You can apply it to Yang's wounds after I deal with them. In addition to two bottles of medicine, there was a pack of cotton swabs, a pair of scissors, a roll of gauze, and a small towel in the box. Gu Ning had prepared all of them well in advance. The python had bitten Guo Yang's lap, so it was more appropriate for Sun Chao to cut his pants apart. No problem. Sun Chao took the box right away. He poured a magical pill out first, but he didn't take it. Instead, he helped Guo Yang take it. It showed their friendship. After helping Guo Yang take a magical pill, Sun Chao also took one himself. Once he took a magical pill, he felt an obvious change in his body. He soon calmed down and got his energy back. The next second, Sun Chao hurriedly applied the liquid medicine to Guo Yang's wounds. He cut Guo Yang's pants open where the python had bitten him, and a large area of bloody skin was bare in the air. It clearly hadn't been easy for Guo Yang to stay alive till now. Sun Chao cleaned Guo Yang's wound with the towel before he applied the magical liquid medicine to it. The wound wasn't big, but it was very deep. As time went by, Guo Yang's face gradually went back to normal with the help of Gu Ning's magical power. The wound also healed rapidly. Although Sun Chao already knew that Gu Ning had a very effective medicine, he was still amazed by its effect when he witnessed it. However, he didn't ask Gu Ning any questions because he knew what he should ask and what he shouldn't. After that, Sun Chao began to dress Guo Yang's wound. A few minutes later, Guo Yang got his consciousness back. His eyelids moved a little and he slowly opened his eyes. Yang? Yang. Sun Chao was excited when Guo Yang gradually opened his eyes. Gu Ning also moved her hand away and stopped putting her magical power into his body. Although Gu Ning had adequate magical power, it cost her a lot of energy to save Guo Yang, and her face turned a little pale. After a short while, Guo Yang was finally able to talk. And Miss Gu, Yang, you're finally awake. Sun Chao almost burst into tears in excitement. What's going on here? Guo Yang couldn't remember what had happened to him. Did you forget everything? We just went into the cave and you were bitten by a large python, Sun Chao said. Oh, right. Guo Yang remembered it and felt scared. We hid ourselves in the cave for nearly two hours and you were about to die when Miss Gu found us. She saved your life. Sun Chao continued. If it hadn't been for Gu Ning, Guo Yang would have been killed. They subconsciously took Gu Ning as a straw to clutch at. Only Gu Ning could save them right now. Luckily, Gu Ning really came and she was willing to help them. Guo Yang also struggled to stay alive till the moment Gu Ning arrived. Both Guo Yang and Sun Chao felt very lucky that they were able to be Gu Ning's friends. Miss Gu, thank you so much. I don't know what to say now, Gu Yang said and felt touched. After that, he put on a serious face. Miss Gu, you've saved my life twice and I owe you a lot. Whatever you need me to do for you in the future, I won't spare any effort to help you. Gu Ning had saved his life twice, and he couldn't feel more grateful to her. If it hadn't been for Gu Ning, he could have been killed by the zombie in the ancient grave last time. And Gu Ning saved his life again from the python this time. Even though he knew that Gu Ning wouldn't ask him to die for her, he was still willing to do that if she really wanted him to do that. Sure. Gu Ning noted. In fact, they had never forgotten her whenever they found valuable antiques, although they did that because they needed her protection. 
A real selfish person wouldn't share his fortune with other people, even if he had to risk his life. They, on the contrary, were willing to let Gu Ning take most of the valuable objects. Gu Ning had no intention to test their loyalty to her, because it wouldn't do her any good. She thought that they now had pure trust in each other, and she wanted to help them live a better life. They couldn't be gravediggers forever, because it was very dangerous and illegal. Once they were caught by the police, they would have to spend the rest of their life in jail. Moreover, they already had a lot of money now, and Gu Ning hoped that they could stop doing it. If they were willing to work for her, it would be better. Gu Ning didn't believe that they were useless except for grave digging. They were smart and could learn how to do business. Gu Ning didn't lack skilled people, but she did lack people she could trust. Stand up now. Let's see whether you can walk, Gu Ning said. Guo Yang listened to her and stood up. He only felt a little uncomfortable because his pants were wet, but the wound wasn't painful at all. I feel full of energy again. Guo Yang was surprised. He knew that Gu Ning's medicine was super effective, but he was still amazed by its effect. Actually, Gu Ning's magical power was more effective than the magical pill. Really? Sun Chao was also astonished. He couldn't believe his ears. I mean it, Guo Yang said with a broad smile. Jesus, it's so unbelievable, Sun Chao exclaimed. All right, since we're all fine now, we should go out right away. Uncle Li is still waiting for us, Gu Ning said. Hearing that, Guo Yang and Sun Chao looked guilty. Right, he must be very worried about us. After that, they went back together. Oh, Miss Gu, how's the python now? Sun Chao suddenly asked. It's already been killed, Gu Ning replied. Guo Yang and Sun Chao nodded. Since Gu Ning was able to get rid of a zombie, it couldn't be difficult for her to deal with a python. There was no signal in the cave so they couldn't call Li Maosong and Zhao Jiangquan right now. So in order to not worry Li Maosong, they walked fast. You can go ahead of me, I need to block the pond in case another dangerous creature comes out of it, Gu Ning said to Guo Yang and Sun Chao. She needed to put the Jiao back into the telepathic eye space, and she didn't want them to see the Jiao. Sure. Guo Yang and Sun Chao listened to Gu Ning without asking anything. Once Sun Chao and Guo Yang were gone, Gu Ning walked to the side of the pond. Come out now. The Jiao heard Gu Ning's voice and it came out without delay. Master, the little thing has already been swallowed by me. The python indeed was merely a little thing compared with the Jiao. Get those rock columns down to cover this pond. Gu Ning pointed at several nearby large rock columns. Sure, master. The Jiao wrapped a rock column with its tail and easily pulled it down. A single rock column definitely wasn't enough to fully cover the pond, so it went to move more rock columns. Although the python was already dead, the pond was very strange, and nobody knew whether there would be another monster. Even if several rock columns couldn't stop a powerful monster, it was a sign that this way didn't lead to the outside world. Within several minutes, Gu Ning caught up to Sun Chao and Gu Yang. They walked fast, but Gu Ning was faster than them. About half an hour later, they finally reached the entrance of the cave. Li Maosong and Zhao Jiangquan were both restless and they kept glancing into the cave. It was torture to wait for those who they cared about. Anyway, Gu Ning solved the problem much more efficiently than they thought possible and she only stayed inside for an hour. They didn't know that Gu Ning had the Jiao's help, and she also had a pair of jade eyes. Nothing could make them feel happier than seeing Guo Yang coming out safely. The second Li Maosong and Zhao Jiangquan saw Guo Yang, they burst into tears. Uncle Li Jiangquan, I'm so sorry that I worried you. Guo Yang also cried and apologized to Li Maosong and Zhao Jiangquan. We're glad that you're fine. Li Maosong and Zhao Jiangquan wiped their eyes. After that, they thanked Gu Ning again. All right, let's go to have dinner. I'm hungry, Gu Ning said. Oh right, let's go back right now. Li Maosong urged them to leave. They then climbed down the mountain together. Miss Gu, this is a small village and there is no good restaurant. The town is also far away. Do you mind dining in my place? Li Maosong asked. Of course not, Gu Ning said. A dozen minutes later, they went back to Li Maosong's home, and Li Maosong cooked for them. Li Maosong's parents passed away at an early age, 
so he learned to cook and take good care of himself. He had cleaned his home when he came back, and there were many vegetables and meat in the fridge. Although they dressed themselves like ordinary people, they were actually very rich. They were successful gravediggers after all, and each of them had over a hundred million yuan. They didn't care much about clothing brands, but they were willing to spend money on food. Therefore, they had many kinds of quality food ingredients. Zhao Jiangquan helped Li Maosong cook, while Sun Chao and Guo Yang rested on the side because they had just been through a very dangerous situation. Gu Ning went to the living room and waited for dinner. When Sun Chao and Guo Yang went back to the living room, they began to chat with Gu Ning. About 40 minutes later, dinner was ready and they started to enjoy it. After dinner, Gu Ning asked them, Do you plan to continue to be grave diggers? Have you ever considered changing your profession? Grave digging is illegal after all and it's very dangerous. You could be killed at any time. I can't go with you every time either, so you won't be lucky forever. Hearing that, they were struck dumb for a second. They indeed had the idea to find another way of making a living, but they didn't have a good idea yet. If Gu Ning wasn't with them, they might lose their lives in the future. Although they already had enough money, they were reluctant to live a boring life. However, they honestly had no idea what else they could do. Well, we did have the idea to work in another industry. Like you just said, grave digging is illegal and dangerous. We might lose our lives next time without your help, but we don't know what else we can do. We don't know how to run a business, nor do we have other skills. We're not interested in ordinary work either, so we have no idea what to do now, Li Maosong said. Li Maosong was the leader of their team, so the others all agreed with him. Well, to be honest with you, I asked you about this for a reason. If you want to continue to be grave diggers, I won't say anything about it, but I'm willing to hire you if you want to live a different life. There are countless skilled people outside nowadays, but not many of them are reliable. I trust you and you trust me. I think we can work well together. Of course you have the absolute right of choice, and it's totally up to you. Gu Ning said. Hearing that, Li Maosong and the others were greatly surprised and excited. Actually, they already had the idea to work for Gu Ning because they knew how unbelievable Gu Ning was. As long as they could work for Gu Ning, they were willing to do anything. They only worried that Gu Ning might not be willing to hire them, so they had never mentioned it. To their surprise, Gu Ning brought it up herself, which made them super excited. Miss Gu, do you mean it? Guo Yang asked. Yeah. Gu Ning nodded. I'm in, Guo Yang said without hesitation. After Gu Ning had saved Guo Yang's life again, Guo Yang had a strong desire to return her favor. Miss Gu, we're willing to work for you too. Li Maosong and other people agreed at once. They didn't want to miss this great chance. Li Maosong said, We actually always had the idea to work for you, but we were worried that you might not need us. I'm happy to know that you're willing to work for me but it doesn't mean that you can't do grave digging again in the future. We can do it sometimes and I'll go with you, Gu Ning said. Although she had many antiques in the telepathic eye space, she also owned two Shangyun antique stores, so it was impossible for her to stop digging up ancient graves. It was illegal, but Gu Ning didn't care about it. She wouldn't kill innocent people anyway. Even if they couldn't do grave digging anymore, Li Maosong and the others didn't think it was a big deal. Since you're willing to work for me, I'll arrange work for you. I know you're diligent people, which is your advantage. If you become lazy in the future, I'll abandon you, Gu Ning said. Gu Ning said that in a serious tone, so Li Maosong along with his close brothers had to take it seriously. Gu Ning indeed needed them, but the condition was that they weren't useless. Miss Gu, we won't let you down, Li Maosong said, making a serious promise. Miss Gu, you have our loyalty. The other three also look serious. Great, my business is based in the capital, so I'll leave for the capital after the National College entrance examination. I'll live in the capital afterwards, so you have to follow me there. I can provide apartments for you. If you don't want an apartment, you can buy a house and I'll pay 10% for you, Gu Ning said. Actually, it was very easy for them to buy a house in the capital around the headquarters of the Shengning organization. Miss Gu, we're all single and we don't have a family. We're willing to go to the capital with you. Since we're going to live there, 
we'll buy a house on our own. We don't need your money because we can afford it ourselves, Li Maosong said. Each of us can easily buy a beautiful house in the capital. Miss Gu, we've made a lot of money with your help, so we can't ask you for more money. You can directly tell me where to buy a house, Zhao Jiangquan said. They weren't familiar with the capital, so they needed Gu Ning's advice. Right. Sun Chao and Guo Yang agreed. Since they didn't need her money, Gu Ning didn't insist. They had helped each other a lot, so there was no need for them to split hairs. Moreover, all of them could benefit from what they were doing together. Even though Gu Ning wouldn't pay some money for their houses, she would do something else to help them in the future. After that, Gu Ning told them the location of the Shengning organization, and it was decided that they would go to the capital with her after the National College entrance examination. Li Maosong and the others agreed. They understood that they were important in Gu Ning eyes since Gu Ning wanted to bring them there in person. Later, Gu Ning left alone to prevent attracting unnecessary attention. It was late when she got back to City F, so she didn't go back to her school. She called her head teacher and principal after she arrived at home to tell them that she was safe. In City G, Lin Fei went to have a drink with his friends in a bar, and he talked about what he had been through on the freeway today, which surprised his friends. Because they were all lovers of drag racing, they admired those who were able to drive a Land Rover faster than a sports car especially when the driver was a gorgeous young girl. They knew that Lin Fei had a very high standard of beauty. If Gu Ning's beauty had impressed him, it meant that Gu Ning must be very outstanding. Therefore, in their eyes, Gu Ning must be as beautiful as a goddess. Lin Fei also told them that he got Gu Ning's phone number, and Gu Ning already agreed to be his friend. Knowing that, Lin Fei's friends were all envious of him, and they asked him to call Gu Ning out one day. Lin Fei said, I can't make the decision because it's up to her. Come on, you're the famous Lord Lin, and there is no girl who will reject you, Lin Fei's friend, Frende said. If Lin Fei had to ask for the girl's permission to hang out together, they would feel disappointed. The man said that in order to please Lin Fei, Lin Fei's family was the richest family in City G, and he was very influential in this city. Although Lin Fei's friends were from rich families as well, their families were barely comparable to Lin Fei's, so they were used to flattering Lin Fei. They thought that Lin Fei liked it because he never told them to change the way they talked to him, but Lin Fei couldn't tolerate it this time. There are plenty of people who are far better than me, and no one can do whatever he wants in this world. I'm not a stupid and arrogant person. Lin Fei was slightly annoyed. In fact, Lin Fei wasn't a bully who would take advantage of other people because of his powerful family background. Friend A understood that Lin Fei wasn't pleased, so he closed his mouth. Even though they hung out often, they weren't close, and they were all college students, so they needed to attend classes and didn't have much time to stay with each other for a long time. Well, I somehow feel that her name sounds very familiar, but I can't remember where I've heard of it before, Lin Fei said all of a sudden. What's her name? Friend B asked. Kuning, Lin Fei said. Kuning. Where does she come from? Friend C was surprised. Her number plate is from City F, so I think she comes from City F, Lin Fei said. City F, Kuning? I feel this name sounds familiar too. Friend C said. No way, is she a star or something? Friend A was shocked. Probably. We should search for her information, Friend B said. Why not? Friend C did it right away. When Friend C found the news about Gu Ning on the internet, he realized that he had indeed heard Gu Ning's name before. Without hesitation, he began to read more news about Gu Ning. Lord Lin, come here and have a look. Is she the girl you met today? Friend C said to Lin Fei. No way, is she really a star? The others were surprised. Yes, it's her. Lin Fei's eyes lit up at once. There was a photo of Gu Ning on the screen of Friend C's phone. Except for that, there were many pieces of news about Gu Ning's achievements. No wonder I thought her name sounds so familiar. Isn't she the champion of this year's national math competition? Lin Fei exclaimed. He had heard a lot of news about the competition not too long ago, and the media kept acclaiming her. It was the only thing that Lin Fei knew about Gu Ning. Therefore, he was astonished after reading the news about her business empire. 
Jesus, she owns so many companies. She's even younger than me. Lin Fei said. Jade Beauty Jewelry? I've heard of it before and it's a very popular jewelry brand. It has over a billion yuan in assets, Friend B said. He heard of it from his mother because his mother loved jewelry. What? Over a billion yuan? No way. Ooh. Lin Fei's friends couldn't remain calm now, and they were becoming increasingly shocked by the following information. Lord Lin, are you sure this Gu Ning is the girl you met today? Friend B asked because it was too unbelievable. Yes and yes. Lin Fei was super excited now. They became Gu Ning's fans when they saw the videos of Gu Ning rescuing people. Ordinary people couldn't be so excellent at martial arts. Lin Fei almost wanted Gu Ning to be his kung fu master now. If Gu Ning was with them, Lin Fei would really do that, but unfortunately she wasn't. Lin Fei wanted to send Gu Ning a message to ask her for the answer. Although he was very sure that Gu Ning was the famous goddess Gu on the internet, he still wanted to hear the answer from Gu Ning's mouth. However, he gave the idea up upon thinking that Gu Ning must be busy preparing for the National College entrance examination. He decided to text her after it. Gu Ning called Gao Yi when she got home and told him to handle the traffic problem from when she had exceeded the speed limit today. Because the car was under Gao Yi's name, the traffic police would directly contact Gao Yi. The next morning, Gu Ning received a message from Gao Yi, who told her that she received 12 points along with a 20,000 yen fine. Since she had gotten 12 points, she had to apply for a driver's license again. Gao Yi said that Chao Yi could do it for her given that the National College entrance examination was coming. Gu Ning agreed because it was very easy for Chao Yi to get a driving license. Therefore, Gao Yi and Chao Yi came to Gu Ning's school to pick up the car. Even though Gu Ning could use her connections to solve this problem, she disliked doing that when it wasn't necessary. The day before the National College entrance examination, each of the students got an admission ticket. Gu Ning, Chu Peihan, and Mu Ku would write the exam at the number one high school. Yu Mixian and Yi were arranged in the number two high school while Hao Ran, Qin Zixuan, and Zhang Tianping stayed in their own school. There was no connection between their scores and the places where they would have the exam, but most of the excellent students were put in the number one high school. Although Hao Ran and his close brothers were terrible at studying, they were affected by Gu Ning in this semester and had begun to study hard before the exam. After receiving their admission tickets, they went to the number one high school to check the classrooms where Gu Ning, and the others would write the exam before they went to the number two high school for an E and U Mixi. Both Gu Ning and Hao Ran had a car, so it was very convenient. In City F, many people were familiar with Gu Ning's face, especially those high school students, because the result of the national math competition caused a sensation. As for Gu Ning's relationship with Jade Beauty Jewelry, not many people were aware of it. Even though not many people knew a lot about Gu Ning's achievements, they were still impressed by what she had done. Because of this many students recognized Gu Ning so Gu Ning and her friends attracted a lot of attention once they showed up at the number one high school. Oh, isn't that girl Gu Ning? Is she the one who won the national math competition for high school students? Yes. She's so beautiful. I'm so envious of her. <coughs> they kept talking about Gu Ning with admiration. Some of them were also jealous of Gu Ning but nobody dared to say it aloud. After checking the classrooms, it was already 11 a.m., and it was time for lunch. At this time, Gu Ning suddenly received Gu Man's call. Ning Ning, where are you now? Gu Man asked. I'm in the number two high school with my friends now, and we're about to go eat, Gu Ning said. Come to the Huangding Hotel. It's located in the city center on XX Road. Your father and grandfather are also here. We came to encourage you, Gu Man said. The Huangdang Hotel had just opened a branch in City F not long ago, but Gu Ning didn't pay much attention to it, so she didn't know that. Tang Yunfan and Tang Haifeng came to City F along with Gu Man to encourage Gu Ning, because the National College entrance examination was tomorrow. It was the most important exam for high school students, and its result could decide the direction of a young teenager's future. Although there were countless college students now, a college diploma was still very useful in today's society. Therefore, all of the high school students' families cared a lot about it too. 
Gu Man didn't tell Gu Ning that they would come to visit her. So Gu Ning was surprised when Gu Man told her the news. In Gu Ning's eyes, the National College entrance examination was a very simple exam, and she wasn't worried about it at all. Gu Man also understood that Gu Ning was an excellent student in her school, and that the National College entrance examination wasn't a problem for her, but they would feel guilty if they didn't come to keep her company. Sure, we're on our way. Gu Ning agreed with happiness. After that, Gu Ning invited her friends to go to the Huangdang Hotel and dine with her family. When her friends heard that Gu Ning's parents and grandfather came, they got nervous in an instant. The Tang family was a well-known powerful family after all, so it was very normal that they were nervous. They were a bunch of teenagers after all. In fact, their social statuses weren't comparable to Gu Ning, but they had become close friends before Gu Ning became a successful businesswoman and joined the Tang family. If they met Gu Ning right now, they probably would be very nervous in front of her too. Although Mu Ku and the others felt quite nervous, they were excited to see Gu Ning's parents and grandfather. Therefore, they didn't turn Gu Ning down. Gu Ning saw that they were nervous, and she told some jokes to help them relax, but it didn't work. About 10 minutes later, they arrived at the Huangdang Hotel. A waitress guided them directly to the private room where Gu Man was. When the waitress heard the number of the private room that Gu Ning was going to, she couldn't believe her ears and asked Gu Ning for the number again. Obviously, she knew how important the guests in the private room were. As a result, she had doubts when a bunch of high school students told her that they were going to the same private room. The waitress couldn't believe it, but she still remained polite, and Gu Ning gave her an affirmative answer once more. Since Gu Ning was very sure about it, the waitress had to lead the way. For bodyguards were standing outside the private room, and they called Gu Ning Lady Ning with great respect the second they came close. At this moment, the waitress realized that Gu Ning wasn't an ordinary girl. She left once Gu Ning reached the private room. A bodyguard opened the door for Gu Ning, who walked inside followed by her friends. It was the most luxurious private room in the hotel, so it was very large and beautifully decorated. There was a round table in the middle, big enough for 20 people to dine together. Tang Haifeng, Tang Yunfan, and Gu Man were waiting for them. E. Ni Ning. Tang Haifeng's eyes lit up at once when Gu Ning walked to him. He hadn't seen Gu Ning for days, and he missed his granddaughter. Hi, Grandpa, Dad, and Mom. Gu Ning greeted them with a broad smile. Chu Pei Han and the others politely greeted them as well. Nice to meet you, Master Tang, Mr. Tang, and Mrs. Tang. Tang Haifeng and Tang Yunfan gave them a kind smile as their response. All right, have a seat now. Gu Man told them to seat themselves. We've already ordered some dishes, but you can order some you like now, Gu Man said, and a waiter handed over the menu at once. Thanks, Mrs. Tang, but we're not picky. We can enjoy what we have right now, Muka said politely. He actually felt too nervous to order dishes he liked. Yeah, we're not picky, the others agreed. All of them wanted to pretend to be relaxed, but they all failed. Well, let me do it. Gu Ning took the menu and ordered some dishes for her friends. A while later, Gu Qing's family came. During this meal, Gu Ning received many messages from her friends. Although it wasn't polite to play on her phone during the meal, she was curious to read those messages. Her friends all wished her the best for the National College entrance examination. Gu Ning smiled and planned to reply to them after lunch. When they finished the meal, they walked out together and ran into Yuan Jisong. Five men came with Yuan Jisong, and three of them were about 40, while two of them were around 30. Gu Ning had met the three men who were about 40 at the birthday party held by the Su family before. One of them was a senior manager of a famous company, and he walked to them the second he saw Tang Yunfan. Yuan Jisong also noticed them and walked towards Gu Ning as well. It's my honor to meet you today, Master Tang, Chairman Tang, and Mrs. Tang. The senior manager greeted Tang Yunfan. Hearing that, Yuan Jisong was greatly surprised. Chairman Tang? The chairman of Tang Huang? Quan Mingkai had called him in person when the car accident happened and Yuan Jisong had thought that Tang Yunfan might be an important figure from Tang Huang. Now he was sure that Tang Yunfan was in a very important position in Tang Huang. He also saw Gu Ning's mother, Gu Man, 
and he was shocked that Gu Man became Mrs. Tang. Since Gu Ning's mother became Mrs. Tang, Tang Yunfan must be Gu Ning's stepfather now. That was Yuan Jisong's thought. Although he was astonished by the fact that Gu Ning's mother married Tang Yunfan, he didn't think that it was very strange. Oh, hi, Manager Mu, nice to see you, Tang Yunfan said with a smile. Chairman Tang, nice to see you. I'm the secretary of the Municipal Party Committee in City F, Yuan Jisong. Yuan Jisong introduced himself to Tang Yunfan. No matter what position Tang Yunfan held in Tang Huang, he must be very important, so Yuan Jisong needed to be polite. Nice to see you, Secretary Yuan. I've heard about you from my secretary and I need to thank you for your help when I was caught in the car accident last time. Tang Yunfan said to Yuan Jisong and they shook hands with each other. You're welcome. Actually, I did nothing, and the credit should go to Miss Gu, Yuan Jisong said. You're being too modest. Although it's Ningning who saved my life, your help was also very essential. Tang Yunfan thanked Yuan Jisong again. Without Yuan Jisong's timely help, he might not be saved. Even if Tang Yunfan didn't prepare a gift for Yuan Jisong, it was necessary for him to thank Yuan Jisong face to face. Uncle Yuan, you don't need to be so modest. It's true that you've helped us a lot, Gu Ning said. Well, Yuan Jisong didn't know what to say. They chatted with one another for a short while before they left. After walking out of the hotel, Chu Pei Han and the others separated from Gu Ning. Because Gu Ning's family was here, there was no need for them to stay. Gu Ning proposed to drive Chu Pei Han and her other friends back, but they declined. They said that they could just take taxis. Gu Ning didn't insist and went back to Fenghua Luxury Mansion with her family. Jiang Su was busy, so he didn't go home with them. Gu Qing, however, hadn't seen Gu Man for a long time, so she wanted to spend more time with Gu Man. Once Gu Ning and her family were gone, Yuan Jisong asked Manager Mu, Manager Mu, may I know who Chairman Tang is? Hearing that, Manager Mu was surprised. Secretary Yuan, you don't know Chairman Tang's background? I don't know much about him. Yuan Jisong felt a little embarrassed. Chairman Tang is the chairman of Tang Huang, the most famous business group in City B, and his full name is Tang Yunfan. The old man is his father and the woman who just stood by his side is his wife. Miss Gu is their daughter, Manager Mu said. What? Gu Ning's Tang Yunfan's biological daughter? Yuan Jisong couldn't believe it. He had thought that Gu Ning was Tang Yunfan's stepdaughter. Gu Ning was indeed a girl who was full of surprises. Yuan Jisong had a deeper impression of Gu Ning now. Gu Ning didn't have time to reply to her friend's messages until she was home. She then thanked them for their care. There were three rooms in the apartment, which were enough for them to stay in. Gu Man and Tang Yunfan were a couple, so they could stay in one room. Gu Ning stayed in her own bedroom and Tang Haifeng would stay in the guest bedroom. As for their bodyguards, they stayed in a hotel. Tang Haifeng was an old man, and he needed to take a nap at noon. Therefore, he left to have a rest when they got home. Gu Ning went back to her bedroom later. She soon received Lung Shouting's call, and Lung Shouting told her that he was in City F now. He came to encourage her for the National College Entrance Examination. Gu Ning was thrilled to see Lung Shouting. At the same time, she felt touched that her family and her boyfriend cared so much about her. It was only 2.30 p.m., and they normally had dinner at 6 p.m., so Gu Ning left earlier to meet Lung Shouting. Because it was Tang Haifeng's first time in City F, Gu Ning didn't have much time to be with Lung Shouting because her family was there, so she decided to spend as much time with her boyfriend as she could now that she was free. When Gu Ning left, she told Gu Man that Lung Shouting came, and that he would be having dinner with them. Because the Tang family already accepted Lung Shouting, they took Lung Shouting as one of their members. Gu Ning drove her car to the gate of Fenghua Luxury Mansion to wait for Lung Shouting, and Lung Shouting arrived about five minutes later in a taxi. He recognized Gu Ning's car at first glance, so he got out of the taxi right away. He was wearing all black, and looked more mysterious and attractive than ever. Gu Ning sat in the front passenger seat and stared at Lung Shouting's sexy body when he moved towards her. She couldn't help but think of his naked body. 
Ling Xiaoting noticed her expression and smiled at her. Gu Ning felt embarrassed and said, Um, why don't you drive the car? My pleasure, Ling Xiaoting agreed. Afterwards he got in the car but didn't start it. Ning Ning, what were you thinking just then? He asked Gu Ning all of a sudden. Ling Xiaoting asked that question on purpose because he knew that Gu Ning was distracted by his body. Nothing special. Gu Ning argued at once. Really? Ling Xiaoting was unwilling to give it up. Well? Gu Ning didn't know what to say now and she flushed a little. Ling Xiaoting was amused by her reaction. Come on, we're so familiar with each other now, you don't need to be shy. I know you were thinking about me, Ling Xiaoting said. I didn't. Gu Ning denied it. All right, all right. Ling Xiaoting gave up in case Gu Ning was annoyed. Gu Ning pouted and changed the topic. My parents and grandpa are here today, so you can come have dinner with us. Sure. Ling Xiaoting nodded. He was more than willing to meet Gu Ning's family because his relationship with Gu Ning needed her family's support. Only if he got along well with Gu Ning's family could he marry Gu Ning in the future. However, he was still a little disappointed that he couldn't spend the whole night alone with Gu Ning. The National College entrance examination would begin tomorrow anyway, so he could wait another two days. Where should we go now? Lung Shouting started the car and asked Gu Ning. Let's have a casual ride. I don't want to go back home right now, Gu Ning said. No problem. Ling Shouting drove the car away. Um, why don't we go to a park? Gu Ning thought for a while and proposed. Great. Ling Shouting listened to Gu Ning without hesitation. Oh, where will you stay tonight? Gu Ning asked. I'll live in Jinchen's place, Ling Shouting said. Although he could stay in a hotel, Su Jinchen's house was much closer to Gu Ning's home. On the way to the park, they drove by Jiehua Garden which was developed by Shanghua Real Estate. Gu Ning had been here once before but it was a long time ago. Since many apartments were well built right now, Gu Ning decided to have a look. The second Gu Ning and Ling Shouting walked into the hall of the sales office. A saleswoman came to welcome them, and she was amazed by their outstanding appearances. A few seconds later, the saleswoman got her mind back and greeted them politely. Welcome to the sales office of Jiehua Garden. Thanks, but you don't need to serve us. We just come here to look around, Gu Ning said with a smile. She purposely said that to test the saleswoman's attitude. The saleswoman was struck dumb for a moment. She knew not everyone who walked in here would definitely buy an apartment. An apartment cost a lot of money after all. Nevertheless, the saleswoman was surprised that Gu Ning would say it aloud. It wasn't inappropriate but was a little strange. Normally, most people who came here had the idea to buy an apartment. Even though they might not do it at the end, nobody would directly say that they didn't need service at all. Sometimes, they would change their mind once they found a suitable apartment with a good price. The saleswoman understood that Gu Ning didn't want to be bothered, but she couldn't leave them alone because it was her job to serve the clients. It's fine. You're our guest, so I won't bother you if you don't want me to do so. If you need my help, please feel free to tell me, the saleswoman said with a kind smile. Gu Ning nodded and was satisfied with her attitude. Unfortunately, not everyone had a nice attitude towards Gu Ning's behavior. Another two saleswomen who stood not far away from them began to talk about Gu Ning. I hate this kind of person the most. If they have no intention to buy an apartment, they shouldn't walk inside. Saleswoman B said. Right, they're merely wasting our time, Saleswoman C said with obvious disdain on her face. Gu Ning heard their discussion and she was displeased. Saleswoman A felt embarrassed, but she didn't know what to say now. It was not only them. Several other people in the hall also felt uncomfortable. Mind your attitude. It's not an easy decision to make to buy an apartment. Your terrible attitude just ruined my good mood. Gu Ning walked straight towards the two saleswomen and coldly asked, Do you think people who currently have no intention to buy an apartment shouldn't walk in here? If you aren't buying an apartment, why did you come in here? Saleswoman B said, and she looked at Gu Ning with jealousy. She was jealous of Gu Ning because Gu Ning was very stunning, and there was an unusually handsome man standing beside her. This saleswoman wasn't smart. 
nor did she have the correct opinion about herself. If she was outstanding, she could have an excellent man as her boyfriend too. I didn't say that I won't buy an apartment. Kuningarkuet. I just said that we want to look around by ourselves. Maybe I'll buy one if I find a suitable one. Can you really afford an apartment? Do it to show us your ability. Saleswoman C said in a provocative tone. Don't be so aggressive. They're our potential clients, and we should be polite to them. Saleswoman A was annoyed, but she wasn't their leader, and her words didn't work. It's exactly because you don't know who can really afford an apartment that you can't sell a single apartment, saleswoman B said with disdain. Great, I'll buy an apartment to show you whether she can sell an apartment, Guning sneered. She was mad and she decided to teach the two stupid saleswomen a lesson. Hearing that, saleswoman B and saleswoman C were both surprised. However, they didn't think that it was a big deal. So what? It has nothing to do with us. Saleswoman B said, If I can afford an apartment here, you two should quit your job right away. You aren't qualified to work in Shanghua real estate, Gu Ning said. Right, they're rude and unprofessional. We don't want to look at the apartments anymore if they still work here. Several other people in the hall supported Gu Ning. Saleswoman B and Saleswoman C were displeased, but they thought it was just a joke. Who do you think you are? Why should we quit our job just because you can afford an apartment? Saying that, they turned to the other people who just supported Gu Ning and said, If you don't want to look at the apartments, you should leave now. We won't force you to stay. You! Many people in the hall were furious and they wanted to walk out, but Gu Ning stopped them. Please stay here. They should leave instead of you. Ridiculous! Saleswoman B and Saleswoman C snorted with disdain. Gu Ning put on a cold smile. Do you want to know who I am? You'll know very soon. After that, Gu Ning said to saleswoman A, I need two houses, a 05 and a 06. These two houses had the best locations, and in Guangyao kept them for Gu Ning. Saleswoman A nevertheless apologized to Gu Ning. Miss, I'm sorry, both A05 and A06 are reserved for another client. Would you please look at other houses? It's fine. You can tell your manager to meet me and see whether he'll sell them to me, Gu Ning said with confidence. Although saleswoman A didn't believe it, however, she couldn't handle this on her own, so she left to report it to her manager. Saleswoman B and saleswoman C, on the contrary, still had no idea that they were in big trouble now. Miss, even if your family is rich, I don't think that you can buy these two houses because our boss kept them for a special client. They were talking about Nguangyao without doubt. However, Nguangyao kept the two houses exactly for Gu Ning. You'll know later and you're going to lose your job today, Gu Ning said. The two saleswomen now felt a little scared. Gu Ning looked too confident so they started to think that Gu Ning might really have the ability to make them lose their job. Before long their manager came. The sales manager didn't know that Gu Ning was actually the real boss of Shanghua Real Estate but he was aware that both a 05 and a 06 were reserved for her. Nice to see you, Miss Gu. The sales manager politely greeted Gu Ning, and Guangyao had told him to treat Gu Ning as best as he could, which meant Gu Ning was a very important figure. He had heard a lot about Gu Ning before, and he also knew that Gu Ning was the founder of Jade Beauty Jewelry. Hi, I come here to see a 05 and a 06, Gu Ning said. No problem, you can have a look at them first. If you're satisfied, we can go fill out the forms, the sales manager said. Hearing that, all the saleswomen were shocked. They finally realized that both A05 and A06 were reserved for Gu Ning. Saleswoman B and saleswoman C were frightened now. We don't need to rush, Gu Ning said, then pointed at saleswoman B and saleswoman C. I don't think they're qualified to work here because they're very rude to potential clients. The sales manager understood Gu Ning's intention, so he said to saleswoman B and saleswoman C without delay, You two are fired. 